That's the home screen. Is that supposed to do that? Yeah. Uh oh. That's different. Can they hear me? Well, you know, that might not be a half bad place to be just for that moment. It's coming up. Fascinating. Can you guys hear me? Are you out there? You can't see me. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Whatever it may be, wherever you may be. I am actually early. I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe not according to that post. If I wouldn't have put that out there, I could have been early. Hello, Dante. Hello. How are you doing, Dragonheart? I don't get to see much of you. Hello, Baguette. How are you? Actually, hello, Dick. How are you? Let's see what we got going on here now. See if we can get this all dialed in for you. Push it out a little. Center it up. And I think we're good. Let me just cockeye that a little bit. Hello, Agu. Long time no see. How's it going? It's It's been a minute. I, uh, I thought I'd come here a little early because I had some stuff that I wanted to do, actually, and thought that maybe, you know, uh, it would give people time to show up and perhaps some of it you guys might want to participate with, uh, one of which includes opening the Fuller Monty on the cephalopod paints. So rather than just opening all those when you weren't around, I thought, well, I wanted to play with those paints before um, we are now officially headed towards Super Chibi Weekend and the contest. Um, I'm going to need actually a link to that geek. Um, I can't copy paste on my side. So is it possible uh, yeah. just to have you regularly drop it in there? Um, the, the contest is live. And uh, we've been having some people signing up, but you guys don't be discouraged. Um, maybe what I should have done, like, you know, I mean, these are things that you learn as you go along, is maybe not isolate it to those, those just those, but then open it to all of the chibis that they have. Uh, with the exception maybe of the, um, Mex, you know, all the human, humanoid chibis that they have, you know, exclude the robots. But um, we were actually trying to simplify things by just sort of isolating it into a couple. And I think maybe it may have been a little bit discouraging for some people. I don't know, maybe they didn't have that one or they didn't have time to order. I don't know. But um, yeah, so that's happening and we actually the deadline for that is a month away if you guys want to get involved in the contest is a month away and there is some really nice prizes coming out for that we have over a thousand dollars in prizes and sponsors that have got on board to help us like to put goodies in the uh, box are you you should be getting it. i got mine like in three days so you should be getting it in. oh wait are you waiting for your like you ordered you ordered one or you're waiting for your like your monthly box Hello, Dio. How are you doing? Oh my God. That post you put out with that lady had me. I was laughing so hard on this side. You have no idea. I was like, oh my God. Really? You guys have to forgive my hair. Okay. This is what happens. Like it takes all the color out of it and it won't do a thing after I've been in my dad's pool. It's like, fuck you. I am, I am, I am free. I am Tarzan hair. Oh, you're okay. You, oh, you haven't received it yet. I haven't received mine either. So if I'm not mistaken, Dragonheart, we should be getting them like at the very, the very beginning of, of, uh, uh, next week. Um, if I don't receive mine, I'm just going to start painting something that I have, you know, grabs, I'm going to uh, prep something randomly over here. I was actually thinking about working on Captain Seti today. So, uh. You know, I have a really good base coat on it. Hello, noob. How you doing? How you doing? It's nice to see everybody here. 
So yeah, I had and um, I have some things. So definitely, like uh, a lot of things to share with you guys. I know, me too, Dragon Heart. Um, but worst case scenario, we can paint the older things, and uh, you know, because it starts on Friday. Maybe we'll get our box on Friday, and we'll just have to run with that. It is, is it now? Well, I don't even know what that is. Mm, let me see. I was going to guess Megatron. I was going to guess that. How are you doing? Did you guys did you guys get to see my uh demo that I did on the very magnetic, very magnetic Grim Grip? Oh, the end, you guys, the bloopers. I broke uh, three minis <laughs> while, while doing that. Um, and really, it was just because I was just real, being really rough with them. Ah, uh, it is what we call soccer. Okay. Okay. So rugby is what you mean. What? No? We call soccer. Huh. European football. I thought European football was rugby. Really? Oh, that's Australian football. Okay. Well, then you guys, okay, I get it, I get it. The Americans call rugby football. Okay, yes, yes, we do. Yo, he's feeling much better. He finally listened to the captain, and then it made him feel much better. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I had some medicine that I could help him with the problem, but when he, he is very much like a hibernating bear. When, when, when Geek gets sick, you treat him like a hibernating bear. Don't poke it. For those of us who lived in Alaska for a while, we get that message. Yeah, he is. It's really weird. He just, all, all he does is just sort of, um, like, I'll refill a bottle beside the, uh, the recliner or the bed, depending on how bad it is, just refill a water bottle and just don't even... Pretty much just don't interact. Just let him go through the process. Yeah, he just, and he just sort of checks out and uh, and you just kind of don't poke him. He doesn't really like to have a conversation or he's just, but in this particular instance, I had some medication that would help, um, some medicine that would help and he just wasn't down for it. But that's how he gets though. He gets really introverted. And so um, I was like, okay, well, at some point he's going to feel miserable enough. I, I will mention it and then I will leave him alone. And then at some point he would get miserable enough to say, hey, about that. Or miserable enough where he's really, really down. Like it was pretty bad, you guys. He got pretty sick. I got to admit, I was, I was concerned there. I was like, yeah, that's not looking good. But he's, he's a very hearty, hearty geek. So, oh yeah, yeah, right? And for the life of me, Dragonheart. So the one thing I have learned from Geek is when you start feeling better and you have a little bit of energy, don't waste it. Just save it and just keep recuperating. I learned that from him because I'd be like, oh yeah, I feel a little better. And then I'd burn all that energy and then I'd get sick and I'd stay sick longer. So I learned from him just to take that little bit of energy and do something like watch a movie or make a light meal or something like that. But don't get excited and start just, you know, fixing the world. And and so now I don't stay ill for hardly any length of time at all. I, nice, nice coffee? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. And yes, please. Oh, mm. Yeah, well, so um, the night before last, I asked him, I said, okay, listen, you're in a pretty bad way, and I, I have a solution because, you know, I've been there, and I have something that I can give you that I promise you is going to make you feel better. Would you like to consider that at this point? And it was like just before bed, not last night, but the night before, and he said, fine, I'll take it. So he did, and when he, he actually went to sleep that night, he slept... Um, you can tell the difference in how in how he snores, whether he's sleeping or not. And then when he got up in the morning, he felt 100% better. And he was like, okay. And then so he was, he took some in the morning and then he started feeling much better after that.
Wait, you won something on a Kickstarter? How do you win? I am telling you what, guys. Oh my God. Hold on. It is like hotter than hell down here. Hang on. I do not know what it is. I'm going to check the vents. I'm going to check the vents. Hang on. I just want to make sure all the vents are open. It's wide open. That was wide open. Nope. All the vents are open. So, oh, that's really nice. I'm, I'm actually waiting for the, uh, oh God, this hair. I'm uh, actually waiting for uh, that Bones 5 to clear. Uh, that's gonna be amazing. I'm so excited about that. So, like, I've been gone for a minute. Any any news? Anything I missed? Did anybody get married? Anybody have any kids? Everybody's okay out there? There's a number of you out there. Yeah, what, sometimes when, they're, when people are really, like, that cognito type, when you're just, like, clocking out when you're sick, it's hard sometimes to get it through to somebody that some medications will help. Not all will, but some will. Which reminds me, am I on the portal upstairs, Geek? I think I am on the portal upstairs. Hi, Blade Mark. Hello, Valandar. 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 Okay, I'm serious now. I've been dinking around in the community and a little bit, um, on, well, and, 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 in, and in a couple of other areas. Hang on just a minute, I gotta, I gotta size that correctly. And I, seriously, I need to talk to you. Like, I'm really serious. I, I need to talk to you. I need you to reach out to me on Discord and let's have a conversation. Geek, uh, I do need Renatadine, something fierce. And I don't find, I, I looked in the upper and lower uh, slidey drawers, I can't find it. And I don't wanna take the, uh, whatever that other thing is that's in, it doesn't even work. It just, it's, it doesn't even work. It's, it's, it's like that, it's like that. Thank you. I appreciate it. So how are you doing? And what have you been up to, Valandar? Mind you, I'm hitting you up now because all of the D&D &D characters for your group are done. Oh. I have, um... Hammy has one of the boxes that she's going to be opening. Oh, what are we going to do with that? We're going to have to make it a spot? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Where was that? Uh, I took it all with us. No, no. I meant the phone. Oh. Right in time. Because now Dave can't say, where's your phone? I'll be like, oh, Dave, I got my phone. Oh, I think I do. Hold on. My plug is somewhere. There it is. Can you do it the other way where that leg sticks the opposite direction? Yeah. There you go, cutie. Oh. She's like, I don't want to be covered. It's so hot down here. Hang on. I know, I know, I know. But you're still getting in the bed. Hold on. Let's take that out of the picture. Okay. All right. There you go. Come on. Now you, you get in there. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. It'll get cool down here in a minute and you'll want that. Believe me. So we know what Valandar is doing. He's clearing up his painting backlog because Bones is arriving. 
When is it arriving? So are you, what, what um, excuse me, what, what level of mail out are you on, Valandar? I, I think at the tail end, because we were doing all of that traveling at the tail end. Remember, uh, that was actually when we got called out of town, that, that tail end part, I think like we finalized it, what, in November? was the, when you could last put something in. And I wasn't sure about a couple of um, groups of miniatures that I, I sort of wanted to be involved with on that on that Kickstarter. How many people out there got that? Has anybody actually received their box that we have in the crowd today? Anybody actually, actually got theirs? I don't have mine yet. I will be at the very, very end of things, so. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's delayed. Oh, delayed because of... Mm. Now, what is that? Is that a monster? Can you, can you make a link? Hammy. Ham? I hear you. Um... <gasps> That's get back get no hey, 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 hey. get back in the seat get in the seat get in your seat in the seat very good I mean it if you want to open a box you have to be good. Ah, okay. And they didn't arrive till Saturday. You know, I had a package, which I actually have here for when Wavy shows up to open. I got a, a gift from Wavy, and it was in Chicago for like, well, he would tell you more because he was keeping track of it before me, but I think like three weeks, you guys. It sat there, maybe two weeks. It was a, it was a while. It just sat in Chicago. I was like, why is it just sitting there? Let's see. Uh, one of the containers for the shipment for the bones was held up in California. Right, okay. Supposedly it didn't arrive until Saturday. That's interesting. I tell you what, it's like the, the are you actually working? No, you, you can't be working because that time's not right. One, two, three, August. Am I wearing my watch upside down? No, I'm not. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Wow. Hello, Dextrose. How are you? Hi, Paint Monkey. How you doing? How you doing? We're burning up down here for some reason. Basement's the coolest place in our house and it's hotter than hell down here. No, that's two. Why is it a 10? Oh, I see, because it's seconds. These diving watches of my dad's were always a little confusing to me. I wonder if the date is right on it. This is a solar-powered one. He's very into... Oh, that date is totally wrong. He's very into solar-powered. Um, the last two watches that he bought are not specific for diving. He bought them specifically because they were solar powered and he found a love for some of the new citizen styles um, towards the end there. Oh, you did? Okay. Well, hello, 40K Tank. How are you? How's my tank man doing? Oh, your birthday is next month, huh? Your birthday is next month. Oh, you guys, I am so sorry. Like my allergies, the heat, it's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, let's see. I think I've got enough room on my desk to do some colors. Let's see. Let's get rid of this little guy over here. That way we don't break anybody. Oh, I thought you said August. Oh, my God. I marked you. Okay, when I asked you, because I, I, I swear I thought, I know you told me, but I thought you said August, and I marked my calendar on August 1st that your birthday was in August. I really, I thought you said August. I was like, oh, I don't have to worry. That's a long way away. 
I, that's what I thought. That's what I originally I thought April, and then I thought, oh, I don't know why I thought April. It must be August. So, well, that just sucks. Okay, but I'll make it up to you. I shall make it up to you. I apologize. I got completely confused on that one. My bad. Totally my bad. All right, let's see. What have we got here? All right, we've got our little friend here. Oh, oh, there we go. And I've got, so what I've laid out for a wet palette here today was, uh, I, I'm not sure um, whether the cephalopods are going to like a wet palette, a drier palette. So I made an in-between one. Oh, you're, oh, you know, are those the chibis? Wait, are those chibis 40K? Wait, you don't, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't, I thought you didn't do commissions. You're not. Okay, well, that would be geek. He is, uh. Oh, there you are. Oh, hi. Okay, oh, so you, so they work, okay. So I just kind of put a medium, a uh, medium, um, wet palette out. Oh my goodness, you've had those for a minute then. You guys, uh, just to see, I want to see what the response is. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do with mine, you guys, after we put some out on the palette, make some decisions, right, is I am going to put the lid on my wet palette so that when we come back to it, we can see what we've got. Because if you remember correctly, that's how we discovered with the Pro Krills, let us not... Uh, put them on the wet palette and put the lid on overnight. Remember what happened? They turned to soup and, and all separated and everybody was not happy about that. So we had to, we kind of learned from that. So we're going to try again because you guys, of course, will need to know that um, if we put the lid on. Now, one of the things I've learned about some of the paints that um, are uh, depending on the carrier, okay, which uh, since you are here... Mr. or Mrs. Cephalopod Studio, um, you can let me know. I would very much like to know because now I am actually getting into the science of paint. Um, I am actually really interested in talking to you because I actually have a line of um, technical paints that I would like to create myself. And I actually had been looking into this for years. Um, I settled on a company uh, they went down the drink. Two companies did, actually, the brush company and the paint producer during COVID. And then Golden was going to pick up the ticket and be our production uh, company. And then they said that because of COVID, they were not able to introduce any new responsibility to their company until maybe 2023 was the outcome of that. So the other thing that I'm doing is breaking down the carriers so that when recommending people to paint, I can send them to the best product for the application that they are doing. I am a firm believer that your studio has enough room in it, okay, for you guys to enjoy many walks of paint, many types of um, uh, uh, inks, stains, uh, heavy body, medium body, glazing, all of it. Your studio has room, technical paints. There's room to add all of these to your life. And when you come upon a project or a subject, I would like to be able to recommend scientifically, not necessarily what I can make work, because believe me when I tell you, I can make any of it work. It just has to, I just love paint. I've been playing with paint my whole life. So I've had to use some pretty bad products and I've gotten to use the best there is. So, uh, scientifically speaking, I am curious, Cephalopod, is the carrier medium for your paint a gel-based? Um, is it a standard acrylic-based? Is there anything about it? I know that it pl I have heard it plays well with other paints, but anything about it that um, when it comes to the medium uh, might be interesting to know because I am very curious. So we've got a nice group of people here. Uh, if we get, if we get our 
a designer. We have a designer on board for some of our artistic uh, projects that are going on, such as we are actually having a new logo for the company made, and we also have a uh, Through the Looking Glass Captain. So it's basically, I have a idea about Captain Mad Love stepping through portals into alternate alternate realities and these will produce alternate versions of our captain it is acrylic based liquid pigments designed for transparency and blending okay so it's more uh, it is acrylic based so it's more along the lines of an acrylic ink uh would that be would, would that be on par hello trash panda how are you doing Let us see here. Now that is going to be what Hammy wants to open. I know I'm I'm saving that box for you for when a few people get here. We are going to open the cephalopod box here. Well, of course not. I'm actually just getting to the point. It has not. I've only been here 30 minutes. Uh, the stream's been running for an hour, though. You are you are correct about that. I've taken everything important off of it so that you guys can't see. Although Cephalopod probably wouldn't care if you knew where the studio was. I am curious. Are you in the United States? I actually didn't even read the, um, the address. Are you in the United States or are you on the other side of the water? Yeah, see, I know. But I was, I was not here. Oh, so some donations went to rhinoceroses for this. Let's see. Um, that happens. I I I get a lot. I get a lot of that, Valandar. Illinois. Oh, you are in the United States. You have such a rich accent. I actually thought you were from across the pond. Let's see. Next month you have three. Oh, that would be that would be. Oh, look, look what I got. Mmm, delicious delicious yeah so actually geek was responsible for ordering these for me i actually love this style of handle this is one of the styles we are looking at uh cephalopod for the brushes in the final the final we haven't even discussed handles yet i'll get it i'll get it dragon heart actually it's the lighting it is focused honey the lighting is just bad. Oh my god, did you send me octopi? Did I get an octopi? Oh, what is it? What is it? Hold on. The, oh, the, oh, is the face cam doing that? Okay, hold on. Let me get my magic brush. Is that better? I, I'm a mess. I'm blurry today anyway. I'm a wreck. My dad's pool played havoc on me here. Let me see what I got. Is it octopus? Oh, it's an octopi. Oh, 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 let's see what we got. I love octopi. Oh, uh, they are my friends. They are my friends. Oh, oh, this little guy, hold on. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, he wants to be a palette cam friend. Look out, here he goes. He's going to go over here on the palette cam. Ooh. He's like, yes, I like it over here. I can play in the paint now. I should be the palette cam, buddy. Oh, they're going to fight. They're going to fight this guy right there. Uh-huh. This guy? He's very possessive. So don't be surprised if you see problems online. Thank you. Thank you for the little inky. Him is so cute. I actually just got um, my, uh, so I, uh, I am, yeah, exactly, exactly. He's territorial. 
But right now he's having a, a love affair with my desk um, instead of the palette. So maybe he won't notice um, inky for a moment. We actually are going to have a, a octopus an octopi design for our studio cephalopod. Perhaps when we get ours designed, um, I will send you one of ours. I need one for the boat. And here we have, all right, so the first thing that we're opening, I'm guessing these are the fluorescents. Check out these bright ass colors. You guys know how I feel about the yellow, right? I use a lot of neon yellow, like, uh, yeah, I've been through three bottles of neon yellow in the last two years. I'm on my fourth one, I think, right now. Um, I get them from, from everywhere. So, yeah, pleasing me with neon yellow. That's going to be something. So we got some neon colors here. And we're going to give them a run for their money. We'll have to see what... Actually, it will kind of work out good for... Um, not on cap on the captain, but I'm sure I've got a chibi that will definitely be able to apply to that. Let me see. Let me make a little spot over here on the desk where we can put all of these as we go through them. I'm going to put them behind me in the tray. Yes, look at them, Zellius. These are, we are opening. Hello, Dee Dee. We are opening the Fuller Monty from cephalopod studios right now and then we are going to play in their paint so i i just opened uh, inky inky their little mascot he's over here on the um the palette cam that's inky um so uh dragon boy dragon baby has been playing on the desk lately uh he's decided he has more room on the desk so he moved out of the uh wet palette. So hopefully he won't notice Inky too soon. He's a little territorial and I hate for people to start peeing on my desk. I mean, you know, that would just be so rude. Hey, Bobcat, how are you doing? How's pickles? Oh my gosh, I have some pickles. I have to get the container out of the fridge. I should send you a picture. I think they're called, um, hold on, hold on. Kick-ass pickles? Oh shoot. I should've took a picture of the container. It is the Fuller Monty. I don't know. Maybe it's when two people get naked. Okay, don't start now, Pammy. Don't start. When Geek, when, when Geek gets back downstairs, you can open your box. Okay, you have to wait. And we'll get in your seat. Good job. And you wait. Your turn. She knows she's getting to open that box. So I think that Monument Hobbies might have pets in their studio because Hammy insisted that box was for her. All right, let's see, what do we got in here? Oh yes, uh, so I heard some good things about this. Wait, let me get my googly eyes. Oh, did, I know, sometimes isn't, sometimes when you go to a delicatessen, they've got some amazing, amazing pickles. I think this is the medium, you guys. Yes. Okay. So, uh, this lid is not on. What is going on here? What, what, what's going on? Wait, hold on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's got a nice little beaker. A tiny, a, it's got a very small, hold on. Look, look at this. Look, you'll be able to put out very small amounts of this. It is a very tiny little spout on it. Okay. So you're going to be able to put out really small amounts and Actually, a, a little paper, one of the smaller paper clips will fit inside this perfectly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Good evening, Wavy. Good evening. Okay, so Wavy got me. Wavy got me. Yes, and right here, um, yes, please, uh, uh, Cephalopod, put your link in the chat and share. So uh, this is going to be something we're testing, uh, is this medium, you guys, because uh, one of the things for a lot of people that's been a little bit of a challenge that we've run across is that um, mixing their own medium, because, you know, I just do it, uh, I do have uh, one recipe 
but now we're gonna ask this we're gonna ask uh, cephalopod while we've got you out there excuse me cephalopod first of all i'd like you guys to know uh very very reasonably priced okay for real like uh, i got sent to another company to try uh, oh recently um someone sent me a link and wanted me to try uh da -da 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 -da, war colors whoa price of admission people i was like damn are you serious but you know sometimes it's worth it like i would pay that much for a camara paint because there's very very little um medium in it i'm gonna put the big box on the floor so we can open one little box at a time all right now we will pull out the colors we're going to use for our project there you go thank you cephalopod so on the subject of the medium what i wanted to ask cephalopod because i actually have a mixture that i put in my water now your medium is acrylic based yes or no and um or does it say already and i'm just not reading it Oh, it is. It is a, it is a non-toxic, waterborne acrylic paint. Okay, so this is the carrier minus the color, minus the pigment. Did I get it right? And then I just wanted to know, is there any um, retarder in the base at all, uh, which would give it a little more working time? Bingo. Okay. Um, is there a little, is there a, a balance of retarder in your medium, giving it a little more blending time? Perfect. Okay, because I, I make my own in a little in a little cup, right? Uh, but I mix it with water to thin. Uh, this way, uh, I don't uh, break the viscosity too much of the paint, the, the holding power, you know, the part that keeps it together. I don't like the particles to be broken to where you're just smearing particles everywhere. Hello, Borgami. Welcome back. You cannot stay too long. I No, I, I didn't want to open it until you got here. Okay, so you guys, we're just going to take a really quick pause. We're going to put a pin before we get into the, the cephalopod boxes, okay? And we're going to open a gift from Wavy while he's here because he actually is six hours ahead of us, so it will be time for him to have to go really soon. Okay? Let me grab your box, Wavy. Geek has very nicely, Hammy still snuck off. She snuck off. Geek has very nicely removed all addresses. I did, I did see, I did see that they had, that they had dice. So we did get a little bit of um, crunching on the box, wavy, hopefully that didn't do any damage to what's on the inside. And then we'll come right back to those cephalopod paints. So it looks like, you guys, this is one of the things that might be cool about this, right? Medium, I'm really interested in this because this is gonna help you guys. So if we can put this in the water like I do the, um, now I'm not, there's some systems, of course I won't change, but if we can put this in a little bit of water like we do the, um, the retarder, then we may have another option okay, to thinning the paints. Remember, I don't, I, I'm not a big believer in using just plain water to thin the paints. I, I like a little something to be in it. I, I like to, and a little additive, uh, a cephalopod, I like to put some form of additive depending on what I'm using, but mostly I have found across the board that a small amount of clear retarder and distilled water, uh, it is, it is a, uh, one milliliter of the retarder to, I would say it's a, do we decide it was five teaspoons? Now I for, just now had a brain fart and forgot the measurement. I think it's five teaspoons cephalopod. It's five teaspoons of distilled water and one milliliter of um, this particular retarder. I've been through a lot. I was gonna test um, Liquitex and Golden because those are really good products. All right, let's see, what have we got here? Oh my gosh. Did, for real? This is really for Hammy? Oh my God, she didn't lie. 
she wasn't lying. He said there was something for her in the box. And I was like, but she thinks there's something for her in every box. She really does. <laughs> oh, he's not down here yet. Then, oh, oh no, really? Okay, so he sent, we'll open this one first. This is a little something for my desk. We're gonna open this first because just now, uh, Wavy, we were just talking about, let me get it, let me get it uh, there. We were just talking about Dragon Boy. Um, he gets pissy because he's a little territorial about the desk and he has recently moved out of the pallet and onto the desk. So let's see what's in here for the desk. Hopefully it won't make Dragon Boy jealous. And Hammy wasn't lying. There really was something in that box for her. Let's see. There should be. Nine or ten in stock on the shelf when I left this morning. That will be the medium. We can... You can see my belly button. What? Are you serious? How, how are you doing that? Are you teasing me? My, my, my belly button is actually kind of high. Is it doing it again? Okay, wait, hold on. Oh, oh my God, you guys. Okay, hold on. Okay. Anyway, they told me that's actually not against TOS. Did you know that? Oh, what is it? <gasps> oh my God. Anki's got some competition, Zephlapod. Oh, hold on. Oh, my God. Holy shit. It's beautiful. Oh. My God. Wow, Wavy, you're a really fucking good painter. Holy shit, man. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's so intricate. Oh my God. Oh. Oh, Weeby, he's so beautiful. Look at those colors, you guys. It is, oh my God, it's like, I, you, when you see people's painting in person, it's so different than what you see online. Hold on. Let me get up close for you guys. Look at this. Look at the little, look at the, look at all the little suction cups on his tentacles. Oh my God. He's a perfect wavy. He is perfect. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's so pretty. Oh, I would want him to maybe I maybe I can get a little something that keeps him up out of the wait wet here, hold on. I do. I actually have some. Hold on. I've got a couple of um here we go. That one? That one maybe? Hang on. Because he deserves to be seen. Wavy, I love you too. Oh, no, there's no ugly crying. There's no ugly crying. It's been, oh my God. I've done so much ugly crying in the last few days, Wavy. I'm surprised mine. Okay, Inky, you have to share for today. I know you got there first, but be nice. There's no fighting boys. Okay, there we go. You can get to know each other. There's got to be something you have in common. Just figure it out. Oh, that is so... Wow, Wavy. Damn. Really nice job. Damn, you guys, like, seriously, his lines are on point. Okay, let's see. So, Geek, we're waiting on Geek. Oh. Oh, where is Hammy? Hammy! Are you still down here? Wavy sent you something. 
Would you like to open a present? I have a present for you. Do you want to open a present? Where are you? Come here. Come here. Are you going to be lazy? Hey, can you hear me? Hang on, guys. She might go upstairs. Yeah, the gate's not closed. Hang on. Where are you? Wait, he sent you something. Come on. Yeah, you want to come open it? Yeah? Can you show everybody how you open a gift? Sure you do, you yeah? know? Cute. Wavy sent you this. Yeah, that's yours. You want to open it? You got present. Yeah, open your present. Yeah, get it. Good girl. Now unwrap it. Yeah. That's pretty tough wrapping. I know it's thicker than Christmas paper, huh? Can you get it? Oh, wait. Bring it over here. You gotta open it. Hey. Over here. You gotta open it in front of the camera. You gotta open it in front of the camera. Is the tape really hard? Can you do it? You can do it. Go. There you go. You got it. Oh, what? What? Oh. Oh. You gotta open it in front of the camera. You gotta open it right there. Oh, that's good girls. Everybody can see you know how to do this. Yeah. Good girl. What is it? What is it? Oh, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. What'd you get? What'd you get? You got paper. Yes, I see that. Oh, what is that? What is that? Let me see. Let me see what you got. Let me see what you got. Let me see. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Oh, oh boy. It's up. Hold on. We gotta show everybody. We gotta show everybody. Look what she got, guys. It's a pirate duck. And he's gonna be missing his hook soon. His hook. Is this yours? Is that yours? Are you sure that's yours? What do you say? Oh, it's been chatter. It's really good, Wavy. Oh, look at that chatter. Here, Joke Joke. Is that your baby? Did you get a new baby? You did? You like it? Oh, it's good. Yay, babies. Oh, she loves it. It made her chatter. It made her chatter. Chattering means it's amazing. So, Geek, there's something in here for you. Um. Wait, go ahead and open it. But it's for you. I know, but they can't see me opening it. Do you, do you want to have my seat and open it? What's this? It's a he. He he just got done being sick, you guys, and he's very fuzzy. Oh, wavy, thank you. So, Geek wants me to open his for him. So we're gonna open Geeks. It says for the Geek. Yeah, I know who the fuck sends him stuff. He's just letting you know he's the man because he sent you something. Hello, Paul John. We're opening a gift from Wavy right now. Tammy has hers, and I, I, I'm willing to bet you she's over there chewing the hook off of it. She's going to rip the hook off of it. Then when she's done ripping the hook off, she'll bring it back and ask me to throw it. What have we got here? Being the very careful. Wavy, this is so nice of you. Thank you so much. You know, this is my birthday month, too. This is, this is the month I usually do little birthday things. I just haven't got around to it because everything's been so strange. Thank you, Dragonheart. Thank you. What has he sent he? Bubble wrap.
Okay, that is some very good shit right there. Oh, now I've got two of them. Yeah. Oh, he is beautiful, Wavy. I love these very heavy contrasting. Oh my gosh, it's good. It's really good. It's and it matches. Yeah, it and it matches. Hold on, let me let me. It matches his army. Beautifully. Wow, Wavy. Really nice. I love the stuff you added to the base. Really, really nice. Oh my gosh. Look at look at his look at his non-metallic metal. You, right? Yes, it's great. And the, the the mud on the bottom wavy. Oh, oh, he just wants you to know that he fucking painted fine cast just for you. Oh yes, I like uh, yeah, and 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 the, this curvature, that's that's fine cast, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, it does feel actually a little heavier though. It does actually feel a little bit heavier, but it's it's wonder. Oh my gosh, it is wonderful. He is going to, Geek's gonna love putting this out on the table. The other one I spent so you know I I I mean this was one of my favorites to paint. It's really nice, wavy. I love the little additives and I I love the, the mud at the bottom of the cloak. And that green glow, geek. Geekimus. Oh, uh, Wavy, he's sealed. He's sealed, right? Varnished. Yeah. Okay, okay. Excellent. I just wanted to make sure, because sometimes, uh, sometimes folks will send them and to let me do that. And I just want to make sure so that, you know, when they get at the game store, they don't pay a lot of attention to the handling, right? Okay, let's make sure. Are we, are we nice and in focus? This says, this, sh this is the ship's bosun. You <laughs> oh, I must open it on stream. Well, I've been pretty sensitive lately. It's been a, it's been a, a rough, a, a rough, rough couple of weeks, you guys. Hello, Draco, how are you doing? We are opening a gift right now from Wavy, and then we are gonna go back to what uh, we were doing with playing with some paints. I got some new paints, but uh, Wavy sent me a gift and I've been waiting for a few days to open it because I wanted him to be here and he wanted to be here. to see the way people paint online as good oh. <laughs> oh it's ugly cry oh, hang on oh. 
my god, it's so funny. <laughs> I don't know how you knew how to paint in blue. Blue. I don't, I just, I don't know how you knew it was blue. <laughs> you so totally beat me to the shark. <laughs> he has the most beautiful and graceful my my he would have loved I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just did that. For everybody not in the know, Captain oh. uh, recently passed, uh, and he was a longtime scuba diver, uh, and he dove with the sharks long before it was cool. And uh, his nickname was Shark. So um, there's a reason the captain is ugly crying right now. It's because. Uh, uh, her dad was a very big influence on her life and one of her heroes. Uh, and uh, that's a hell of an amazing testament. Thank you, Wavy. Thank you, Wavy. He's uh, he's you get a passport and fly out here so we can he's, slap you appropriately. He's really, really nice. And I think one of the best things about it is he's wearing this old belt. So, it's old belt, <laughs> and um, this is my dad's shirt. So we just went to his memorial, <laughs> and his wife took a bunch of stuff out of the closet, the main closet, to put it in a storage closet to see if I wanted it. I don't, I told her, please don't throw anything away until I've had a chance to, I'm sorry, to go through everything and I found his belt. <sighs> Thank you, Wavy. I think I just find that just smeared everything everywhere. Um, and, and anyway, I found his belt. Like, it's so ugly, it's so old. It's all got all that kind of rough edges and everything and she goes that's the one you want and I said yep that's the one and a few of his shirts that were some of his favorites but she took me to the hall and she said this is this is what I most especially saved for you no one's touched it since he left and I know he would have wanted you to look at them and she opened the closet at the end of the hall my father was a god, he was a jock. And he was a motorcycle racer. As well as he left his Harley to me. He also had a cruiser. And in the closet were all of his motorcycle jackets. So I brought home his ugly one from the 70s. <laughs> this is terrible. And um, his favorite which was his motorcycle racing jacket. I'm going to get that downsized for me. It's pretty fine. And then a couple of ugly ones that were vest like with his name Sharky that he rode when he was riding Harleys. And um so the old ugly belt is on this guy too. Okay, wait. I'm really sniffling now. Okay, hang on just a second you guys. I have to I have to go blow my nose. I'm going to take a really quick bite, okay? <laughs> Thank you, baby. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. Give me a little drop of 
So that's what's left of the hook. Are you talking to me? Working on it. Okie dokies. Uh, no, maybe it was actually uh, probably one of the coolest breaks. Um, that we've had on the on the channel so uh, thank you very much for the not just the items you know so you have the you took the time to find the things that were interesting to just not just me but to hammy and to uh, captain um, and then you took even more time to paint them so epically and then um, and then took the time to mail it out and then I mean and this is these are more than just items they are a uh, expression of understanding and family so uh, I appreciate you I know we give each other a lot of a lot of crap um, but this is a expression of affection and family and love so uh, thank you very much I know very without a doubt the captain is uh, thrilled at the the shark he is absolutely fucking uh, he's absolutely fucking badass and it perfectly fitting for uh, her dad so uh, yeah that's really what the community is about well should be about is uh, being able to know each other well enough to be able to do things like this so uh, you are an epic human being. Um, you are an epic father, husband, and friend. So uh, let's get some hype in the channel for Wavy because, uh, well, Wavy's a badass. And now back to the regularly uh, scheduled beating up of Wavy because we can't be too nice to each other. All right, we're going to do... Uh, Everything just went black. Uh, hang on. I got to get the stream raiders up. We're going to launch one of those. And then we'll launch a race cars. Capture specific window. The window is stream raiders. There we go. Uh, transform. Get the screen. There we go. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Those don't work on this screen. Although I probably should put the alerts on there. Let's see. Scenes. Uh, nope, that's not going to work. Wrong one. Ah, well, you know, that's not bad. You can go with that. Okay. Uh, let's start a Stream Raiders. Baby D. What up, Baby D? We're going to put a boop right there. All right. Battle is up. Exclamation point. Battle will get you into the uh, Stream Raiders. And then while we're doing that, we're going to do some racers. First, I've got to uh, uh, start game. All right, exclamation point race. Unfortunately, it's only YouTube. Uh, they haven't fixed it for, uh, I'm sorry, only Twitch. 
Uh, it doesn't work for YouTube yet. So do we have any uh, folks out there who play Raid Shadow Legends? I finally broke down and made my own guild in Raid Shadow Legends. So if you're guildless and want a no-pressure guild to just be a part of to get those uh, achievements, let me know. All right, we've got Blademark, Baby D, Dragonheart, Restream Bot, Wavy DL, and DD Builds. Yeah, that's one of the things I, I like about YouTube is that it does uh, transcoding for everybody, whereas Twitch will only transcode if you're a, uh, a, uh, a partner uh, or if you're an affiliate and they have uh, bandwidth for you, which is absolutely asinine. I mean, knowing what I know, I mean, if YouTube can do it, for fuck's sake, uh, Amazon Web Services. They, Amazon has the most web uh, or most data centers, like period. So I know that I know for a fact they can do transcoding. Uh, they just don't. So um, I'm trying to figure out how to get the commands to copy over, but I'd have to build my own my own bot, and I just don't have time to do any programming. <clears throat> All right, Rhymer, Mechaform, and Draco have joined. If you have not heard your name, you are in the wrong place. Kick Restream Bot, nobody wants his ass. Yep. Honestly, I'm thinking about trying to get it all... Now that we've got the, the website launched, try to get it all on the website, and then just try to put everybody driving onto the website, just stream from the website, and... Uh, Tell Twitch and, and YouTube everybody to, to pack sand. But I don't I don't know if it's uh, worth it yet. Hey, there's the rat. Oh crap! There's the rat. Now that the rat's in, I suppose we can start. All righty then. As always, it's a beautiful day in Golf Ball City Sky. We have a whole row of taxis per use. Paul John's life up front, followed by the Rat, then Wavy DL. Wavy DL in third place. Draco, Blade Mark, and Baby D deciding she's already going to start the stunts because you can't keep a good unicorn down. Or a bad unicorn, or a Baby D unicorn. Oh, Zealous Hunter bobbing and weaving in front of Wavy D. Oh, overcorrecting. Uh, what? Uh, I don't see a duck on screen. I see a Wavy, a Paul John's, a Life, a Blade Mark, and a DD Bills. I don't know what DD builds, but DD builds. Whee! Yep, the, du the dragon heart is cheating again. You know, I wish it would let you just start from where you like, like closest to the track, but nope, it shoots you all the way back. Because I think you should be able to cheat. I honestly think you should be able to click cut halfway across because it's all random anyway so if you can like time it and boost right i mean with all the lag and look at that i mean dd bills just slipped on literally nothing paul john's life is taking the lead now we're going to slow motion dukes of hazard over way over way over but nice landing that's full rubber down man and then you run smack dab into a tree i mean you had it all the way there and then smack dab into, into a tree. Blade Mark going around the tree and picking up speed. Let's see if Blade Mark can take out Paul John's life. I see somebody else flying. There's Baby D. I'm questioning if you're a unicorn or a Pegasus. Maybe you're a Pega unicorn. I don't know. Blade Mark 
Okay, so trying to catch Paul John's life and Dragonheart in third place. It's a slow roll through the what looks like magnets. Oh, you almost avoid it. Well, you did avoid all the tires, uh, but Blademark avoided them better and took first place. And there goes Dragonheart. And here goes Paul John's life. Anybody making it through? Everybody going over. We're going for the distance. Paul John's life so far in the lead. Mechaform taking the land route to the longest distance. He's like, fuck it. I'm going back to the beginning. I don't know if that counts as victory. Holy Rhymer. Oh, look, you sliced it. Or did you hook it? I don't know. Never learned that. You were looking for squirrels? You mean you were looking for nuts? Baby D, all that flipping and jumping and hoo ya. And, oh, you just wanted to make it be the only one to make it through the uprights. I see how it is. Always got to be different. That's because you're back at the beginning. You're over here going the wrong direction. Bobcat, go home. You're drunk. You right. And Bobcat decided to do it again for time. I like 10 seconds. I don't I don't think you're going to make it, Broski. You were in fourth. Now you're an ass last. That's how this works. Yeah, they're, they're coming down. Yep. I have to call the Tectum people Monday and see what the deal with that is. The game cheated. The game isn't smart enough to cheat, Bobcat. Just like it's not really your fault you lost. Because it's all RM Jesus. Is double sided. Okay. And the cat pushed away. Team cake. Oh. Uh, fuck, it wasn't in. That's the right Ah, oh, okay. Smart, you guys. I can't take it anymore. Hello, make a bobcat. Bobcat, make a form. Make a form, bobcat. You, you, you want to start over? I actually, I wanted the two-sided tape so that I could put it on the bottom of the shark and put the shark on the magnet holder. But instead, I'm going to take him and I'm going to put him in even a safer place than that. Oh, I'm looking forward to trying those. Okay. I think um I, I think I got I, I think I got myself in, in order. I'm gonna send that to Slay. Uh while you're packaging up today, a geek, could you package this up for Slay? It can just go in a a, a bubble wrap and an envelope. He needs to cut that up to uh work on a project he's working on over there and everybody in the world is out uh no it's okay wavy it's totally okay you you know what project achieved right you said the feels i was i just wasn't i was not this is not what i was expecting like honestly i kind of thought it was going to be the hippo with the splashy water like i i did i mean he i just that hippo is is a character and i for some reason i thought okay you know what i bet it's that hippo for some reason no so hello bronze how are you doing oh bronze archer <gasps> so bronze archer with everything that's been going on over there on your side i think you can 
Uh, were you here when I when I opened it already and then I just missed you? I uh, don't want anything on my hands. Hold on just a minute. I gotta. I, there, there's supposed to be some uh, of these special. wipes at the desk that are um a little they have a little bit of alcohol in them that i got oh you just popped in okay let me show you just want to make sure in case i touch my face or everything i don't want getting oil all over it ah oh, so yeah we had a moment here so um wavy sent me his character for the boat that represent that you, because we're building that diorama, right? And Wavy's been with us well over a year. And um, this is what he sent me. And remember my father, so my father's nickname is Sharky. And um, let me get a nice clear shot for you guys. There you go. He's got Sharky tattooed on his arm. He's also happens to be painted in my dad's favorite colors. But what's really killed me is my dad used to wear these uh, beach shirts that were long and white. And then these colors that are on his pants. I have his favorite Aloha shirt upstairs in my suitcase. It is these exact colors. And anyway, if he's going to go do something, see, notice this one. This is that, 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 that there were his two favorites. And um, even like the, the medallion, just the whole thing is very, very depictive of things my dad would choose. Isn't he beautiful? And then the purple underneath the hair really adds some. I know, right? It just really is absolutely stupendous. Like, anyway, definitely, definitely took my breath away to say the least. And uh, yeah, yeah, and he sent uh, a. Nightbringer for Geek and a, and a duck, which Hammy did chew the hook off of it and um, then has her duck over there. But she's not sharing her duck with me. And then she's got it over there by her bed and she's taking a little nap. So, and then we were opening the cephalopod paints, but uh, Wavy has to usually has to leave earlier than everybody else. So I thought it would be nice to go ahead and um, and open his first. And this guy is a monster wavy compared to everybody else. Oh my God, he is massive. I guess as a shark though, he would be a lot bigger than the people. Whew. And he also sent over here, I'll just show you in the camera because I know how much you appreciate the art. Look, you know how much I love the octopi. And look at this little guy. This is for my desk. Isn't he beautiful, Bronze? I think when you make the octopi um, sticker that we're, yeah, that we're gonna use these colors, I think. We'll go with these. And he can be like the octopi sticker with the really, those colors. I really, really appreciate them. He's over here, learn he's, he's over here socializing with Inky. They're trying to work things out in the wet palette area. I'm okay. Oh, all right, you guys, let's get back to paints. Oh my God, I gotta breathe. I gotta, I gotta breathe here. Gotta breathe. Now what I can't figure out, cause I have to take, uh, Oh, I, I, wavy like isn't even the word. That was just like, I really, and it, it it's so cool to get pieces that people paint. I gotta tell you guys, if you see someone's paint job online and it is not doctored, please forgive me, you guys. It's really actually quite warm down here. Um, if you see someone's paint job online and they have not Photoshopped it and you know that, Whatever work you are seeing, if you saw it in person, I'm going to say the work is probably 10 times better than what you see. It's crazy. Yes, 
Well, I, I'm hoping they're going to get along, um, Bronze. As you can see over here, um, I've kind of got him. Here he is, right there. So Dragon Boy is very suspicious and quite territorial. Now, he's decided he wanted to play on the desk, and he moved out of the wet palette. Okay? Right about the time, believe it or not, that Inky showed up. Okay? And he's very territorial. I was telling everybody I just don't want to see him start peeing all over my desk because he's jealous of the other characters joining us. And right now, we yes, okay, I see. Yep, he's suspicious. That's why he looks in the camera with that ugly little look on his face. Now what we are going to do... Oh, i got to breathe. i got to find um, out what I decided was the good thing to do. Keep... Um, you know the medicine that I take in the afternoon? Yeah. I need a uh, dose of that, but at the same time, the secondary one I brought downstairs just to make sure I didn't forget it because it was time and I actually... Oh, there it is. Okay. But I really should pay more attention to that because I don't want the dog to get it. Oh my God, we were... My stepmom takes Ambien and... um. We were at uh, oh, where were we at our house? Where were we? No, we were the hotel. Yeah, oh, we were the, we were staying in a ho at a hotel together. She dropped one on the bathroom floor and didn't know it was her medication. And I was like, oh no! Well, actually, once they once they looked it up and f Geek looks all, looks all the medications up to find out what they are. But I mean, I was just I, at one time I used to take that medication. I'm not uh, every now and then I still take it, but very very rarely. Um, the, uh, uh, the doses they gave me make me get up in the night and eat. <laughs> I hated it. I hated it. <sighs> okay, so we are now opening, and let's just take a look at this. Okay, we got it. We got. We got to take a look at packaging. Okay, let's take a look at packaging here. Let's back up, but not drop down my shirt. Well, apparently, a minute ago we were having cleavage cam central. There we go. So really nice hard cardboard boxes that's really you know you don't want your paint squished all of the let's see what size bottles do we have okay this is 97 colors you guys but i'm searching for the colors that we're working with of course white got to work with white Let's put that over here there is like oh my gosh there's so many now when i find one that i'm super super fond of and we always gotta have black I will let you guys know. So the packing is really good. We've got, uh, so I know a little bit about packing too. So we've got like two layers in between the bottles. The bottles are all lined up nicely so that nobody's caps are going to get squished, which is really important. Now I'm going to take and put them in a box. Well, they won't. I should have got a freaking Tupperware to put them all in. Uh, we are going to need... Probably a little bit of this green. Oh, looks like they might have a really good purple. Now here's, uh, generally speaking, um, so this is showing a really a workable medium, just to let you know. So when, when colors separate in shorter periods of time, I find they also have mixer balls in them. You guys are gonna wanna know that, right? Right, I know, Bronze, did you see it? She, you saw it sneak by, didn't you, Silly? I should, I should, okay, right? But also we have, hold on, let me, let me, let me give a little mix here. Let me give a little mix. Let's, let's do a little mix on that. Yep, look at that teal. And I don't think on my current project that I'm working on, which I was aiming for Captain Seti. Let's grab uh, Captain Seti out. Is she even in here? Because I really wanted to work on a chibi. We've got Super Chibi Weekend coming, you guys. Like, seriously, it's just around the corner. And... I wanted to work on a chibi today. Let me see if she's, uh, let's see, what do I see up there? I see Mother Love and Paint Party, Dun and Needs Basing, Stompin' Susie, Diomedes Elf, Captain's Hat and Shirt, another elf, lots of squigs. And I see a chibi made for me by Big J. She's not in there. So I actually do not know where Little Miss Captain said it went, but we were supposed to pick up where we left off with Captain Seti like a little while ago, and we never did. I wanted to do that for uh, General Gumdrop. And 
and I did a really good organizing like all I put all the little squigs in a place and all of these guys in a place let me see maybe just maybe she's in here and there's no Captain Seti which means I will have to get a little guy out and start from scratch with you guys because I don't see her let me just take a look in this. Nope, that's the extra. That's interesting. Yes, the and these are. This is just the beginning. This is just the, the just this, this is just the beginning. It looks like I got a a good teal though. That's a really nice. It's it, actually you know I don't have this color on my desk. Interestingly enough, I've had to mix it. Um, it's similar to Jade by Pro Prill. Thank you. It's similar to Jade by Procrill. He's also, so the bottles they're using also, just to let you guys know, um, let me get a better focus. The bottles that are being used, absolutely love. Look at, look at the, we were talking like logos, bronze. Look at the cute little logo, the little, little octopi. And that was another thing too. I didn't want to be like theirs. So these bottles, let's just open the white so I can show you guys. These bottles are the ones that I purchase and buy. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to know about these bottles, so I highly recommend clipping the bottom off. This little base, taking it, oh, it'll just come off. Okay, and the reason is so that the beakers are kind of short, okay? And you want to screw the lid down so that you can get it like all the way down on the little dropper, okay? And this helps the top from filling with too much paint and it getting too goopy in there if you do that. Okay, so you just take that, the, the part that seals it originally and just take that little guy off, okay? And then something that Dave taught me is when you are first getting your paints out and using them is that as you do to take and make a little paint drop on the top like that, uh, Dave's Mini Art that started me doing that. And then that way that's going to dry. And then when all your paints are sitting all around, crammed up like mine get, uh, you can see your colors. So it kind of, well, I mean, you can't see white, but at least you'll know. I kind of want to see what we got for purple because you know how we're always talking. We're also going to do the, uh, we're going to do the red and blue test, you guys. Okay. We got to do that. And see if it is possible that I may be surprised, even you guys may be surprised. So basically I unscrew the lid, I will take the ring off, and then I will put the lids back on and give them a little crank. And then that way I don't end up with uh, the whole lid. It'll end up like all inside of there and all around the edges and it gets, it gets, it gets really messy. Oh yeah, I can see the glazing medium. Now it's not mixed. Okay, so you gotta give it a really good mix. I am gonna recommend turning them upside down on your mixer and then right side up, but definitely when you have paints that um, are designed, uh, he said that they are already pretty close to the consistency that you want them uh, for painting. You don't need to do a whole lot of thinning for glazing, which was really intriguing to me. Um, so everybody's, you know, always recommending me paints to see, you know, what I may like and what I may not like. Okay, so then we get the little drops on the top like that, then we can see. Now, I am looking at this purple, and we're going to take a look at the teal, too, because bronze is here. Yep. It's a pretty quick mix if you don't have a mixer, even. Let's take a look at this color. That is looking sweet bronze. Yeah, you'll like it. Let's see over here on the palette cam. Let's take a look at that teal. We'll put a little bit out for bronze. There you go. A little bit on the lid. Yeah, so it's uh it's it's a really good, a really good solid aqua bronze. Um, I'm gonna say leaning you guys a tad towards the blue side. Now the purple actually feels a wee bit thicker. This is Warlock Purple.
Um, Warlock Purple has quite a bit of pigment in it. Um, specifically, make yourself a note. You may want to shake that Warlock Purple a little longer. Let's see. We... Bright yellow is looking really good. So is that neon yellow? I'm definitely going to have to give that neon yellow a, a whirl. And this particular container, let's see, we've got a sacrificial red, but you can see by looking at this, it is not the red. Remember how if the red looks slightly orange, don't mix it with blue. Here looks like a pretty solid cobalt blue, but maybe leaning a little bit towards the opaque side. Remember that the, the clearer the blue looks to you, probably the better product. And check out this purple over here. Uh, very similar to Vallejo's Royal Purple. A uh, little less red, a little less red in it, you guys. So let's keep that on um, purple out over there. And then uh, we've also got some others like a violet that's actually kind of a deep, in the area of being a deep mauve. This right here would make some really good squid, squid tentacles mixed with a little bit of ivory. Mm, that's a delicious coat. Yeah, I like that one. It's called Femme Fatale Violet. Sorry. Whoop, whoop, where, where are you focused at? Down here? Okay, there we go. Femme Fatale Violet. I'm gonna leave the blue out to see what we do. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I find a metallic. Third place bronze. Okay, let's keep the metallic out because we're gonna see, will the metallic rub? Let's let's find that out. Let's find that out. All right, let's see. What else have we got? All right, here looks as another one with a red. There's one called Kevin. I like that because, um, oh, look, monkey. There's a monkey ball, monkey ball pink. And this is interesting, uh, Purple Princess, because one of uh, my daughter's nicknames is Purple Princess. That's what I called her when she was little, my Purple Princess. All right, let's see. We're going to get in here and check out this red, see if it's the one we're looking for for our experiment on purple. We're going to find out whether or not we are able to do that. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, this is really good. The liquid yam, it's called. Okay. Oh, yes. I do love me some it's it's close to Indian yellow. I do love um, Indian yellow. It's one of my favorites. Uh, really nice bright orange. That you, that's a that's a good thing to have. Not just you know those dull oranges. Let's see what else. Here's Kevin. Kevin is a is a brown. I, I'm not sure why it got the name Kevin, but I'm sure we can find that out. Goblin skin is a beautiful oblet oblet. it out the back. Up 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 up. Goblin skin, beautiful olive green. I'm liking that. A really good slate gray, okay, otherwise called uh, erythial, ethereal gray. Ethereal, that, thank you, thank you. Ethereal gray. Um, it's a good slate gray. It's a happy medium gray, uh, leaning a little into, hold on. Let me, let me check something really quick. Not mixed enough, but I really want to warm, warm gray. Yeah, uh, ethereal gray is is a really good solid warm gray. Okay, this is amazing. I think we're gonna leave that out to take a look at it. It's called OD Green, bomb diggity right there, you guys. So you know how I love those olive greens, right? The Goblin Skin is like is, is a really good bright. Olive green, it's looking like, a little and olive. And man, this lullaby lavender, you know how I have a, a thing for deep, deep purples. Let us take a look at that. That looks pretty delicious. The green called Lush Valley, you guys, a perfect example of our Crayola when we were a kid. And we always want that Christmas tree Crayola green. Oh yeah, this is delicious. This, um, it's a little, a little bit towards the, uh, that golden yellow in the olive green. So you're getting a really good variety, um, on the olive greens, right? There's only two 
But you know, I'm gonna separate the greens so we can take a look at our green family when we're all done because greens is one of the places. Remember, lean on green, okay? Green is always a color that you can depend on. It's, I mean, if you really, really question what color you're gonna paint something, quite honestly, I say paint it green. I kid you not. All right, let's see what else we have in here. Here's the bright red. Here's another green, looks like. No, that's aged bone, I'm sorry. Oh, it's got a little, it does, has a slight green hue to it, really nice. I like it, I like it, that's a, that's a good idea. Hello, TC, we are opening a lot of paints today. Here's a really good solid blue. Let's set that out for our purple project. Purple Princess is a lavender, looking good. Here's another teal. This is called Will-O-Wisp, oh, it's like a, it's like a mint green bronze, only leaning a wee bit into the bright, that's really good, that's really good. This is a, a happy accident. This is actually a really solid base orange. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking a look at what we have going on here um, with them to see where, um, where we can go with them. Let me make sure this is, this, that is gray, that is gray. Um, I'm, I'm pulling the teals out from a girl bronze. Uh, this red is pretty solid, but again, coming back to the idea of, um, I have to see out of the bottle. Um, if this looks a little warm, this looks a little cool. Chances are we're probably gonna get a mess, but we do wanna keep those out. Um, liquid yam is just gonna be one of my favorites there, I think. So let's check out this Lullaby Lavender for a minute. We have another yellow. So sunflower yellow and bright yellow. Remember when I tell you, pick a golden yellow, pick your lightest yellow and your lightest yellow there, right? This is what I refer to as white yellow. This is more of a golden yellow. So you get the two options, right? Uh, the the white yellows being really, really good to mix with green for very vibrant highlights on green. Tiny, tiny bits of a super light green. Now, what I'd like to check out here really quick, because I'm seriously intrigued, because I do love me some dark purples and greens. Like, I mean, I mean dark purples and, and, and blues for painting with. Oh, this is, hold on. Maybe not mixed quite enough. There we go. We've got to get a little bit more. Oh yeah, okay, so I this actually might be something that makes purple. See how cool it is and it's nice and dark. This is this is gonna be a color I'm probably gonna use a lot. Uh, just like I do the, um, that one by um, Reaper, the Midnight. I think it's a, a nightshade, nightshade purple. Okay, what is this? A monkey ball pink. Uh, looking a little bit, let's see, let's put it up next to breast cancer pink. You know, we're always comparing all the pinks because I rarely am finding a pink that... I wish there was a way to put this on the mixer and then just leave it. Hello, turtle! Oh, I'm sorry. These are these are the cephalopod. Cephalopod. All right. So um, the pink. Let's let's discuss the pink for a minute. This pink. This pink. This is specifically monkey ball. Monkey ball pink. Okay. So monkey ball pink. Leaning. Leaning towards rose. Okay. Not baby pink. Not. Um, obnoxious neon pink. It's more of a rose pink. It has a very cool, that is a cool feel to it. Um, I'm gonna say it matches, it could lean a little towards warm. It would be very complimentary to a warm palette. Also, it would make great slanesh skin. Um, yeah, yeah, a little bone in there, uh, maybe tiny bit of 
purple. It's good. It's good. It kind of, it's like kind of right in the middle. I think that that actually might be. It's not. Um, so we have. I have some breast cancer pink here. Is more of a baby pink. Um, sort of a sort of a deal. Monkey balls. No, not monkey. Did I say monkey balls? Monkey ball. I did. It's monkey ball. Oh, well, this is when I wish I didn't lose Mr. Pokey Guy. Oh, Les, so Kevin is one of your guys there, and he's colorblind. Oh, my gosh. You guys, did you hear that? Okay, that's really cool. So they have a guy there. His name is Kevin, and um, he is uh, colorblind. And that particular brown, the one that's called Kevin, is made so that he can see it. Hold on, let me find Kevin again. Kevin, where'd you go? Dang it, where did Kevin go? Where did Kevin go? Here we go. This brown is made for a fellow that works for the company who's colorblind and can actually see this. That's a really cool concept, cephalopod. I like it. Let's see. Um, so this one um by reaper is definitely closer to a bubblegum pink uh kind of an you know uh strong i guess what you might call if you were painting it that barbie pink not magenta not barbie magenta but that soft barbie little girl pink whereas this one okay has it has more of a you don't think classy a lot of times when you are looking at pink Pink has a way of, if you're not careful, it makes things look cheap. I'm sorry, it just does. And you have to pick and choose your pink accordingly. This has that velvet feel to it. So kind of like a um, monkey ball. You know, kind of, but you guys, I really think it leans a little bit more towards being a little friendlier than the Pepto, but yeah, kind of. I think it depends on what company, because some of the companies, the Pepto is a little bit more um warm i think that this would be a really good compliment though to a cool palette like i think it'll look really it will it'll 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 be popping also i just i really do think this is going to be a great additive for slanesh skin i'm gonna have to make some of that and see where it takes me that's the um reaper now this one i want to take a look at from a girl bronze out there see what we got here okay bronze this is delicious over here on the palette we're gonna can you see that oh yeah you can um it is uh, it definitely, definitely like mint green, but it has a little more blue to the, to the, uh, to the color. Like it, it's, it's definitely an aqua. Nope. And it can't really be a sea green. I guess, I guess it could sort of be referred to as a sea green, but it's definitely what would be a pastel teal for sure. It's very, 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 they... Is it seafoam green? No, 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 not seafoam green. No, no, it's it's definitely like a pastel teal. It's a really good color. Similar to some of the colors we were playing with uh, yesterday, Close actually. So when I say seafoam green, I'm talking about the paint we paint the inside of the submarine. Yeah, no, the inside of a submarine is more like, yeah, it's got a, a funky green to it. Poor boy denim. That's going to be a fun color to play with. So that's like a, oh, a gray blue. A light gray blue and let's see uh, this is the platinum so this is another metallic but I'm only gonna just pull out one metallic and give it a test run all right let's see now mind you this is all of them okay all of them but specific I do I'm really interested like you know in the olive greens uh, very interested in uh, the purples, you know how I'm always searching for good purples. A lot of people, it's becoming more popular. You remember when I first started painting, everybody was like, why do you paint so much in purple? I love to paint with purple. Let's see what colors we got in here. Okay, so in here, we've got a lot of browns. Okay, so the good news, good news. We've got a lot of good earth tones, a, a lot of good earth tones. Let's take this blue out. Uh, dragon's eye blue. We're gonna take all the blues that might. No, that's too light. We'll never. It's not gonna. It's not gonna do what I want it to do when we do that test. Here's one called rosy flesh. Uh, it's similar to the Vallejo uh, 
in when you're looking at it, the the base color of what they refer to as flesh. You know me, I um. <sighs> yes, I know, right? So that is a dragon's eye blue. Dragon heart. Uh, the, the 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 flesh that falls that they refer to in the medium. You know me, I always like to call them like you know, peach and tan and bone because um, but at the same time. If we could get some that were like this color that said, let me see. I stepped in brown, soft serve brown, and shipwreck, and shipwreck brown. If I could get one of these uh, nice brown colors that said, you know, dark flesh on it, I, 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 would be, I would be happy. So these are a bunch of browns. Look, we've got like, look, you've got a brown that's got like a, a, a hint of green, a nice red brown. Um, a more muddy brown, and then a milk, wait, that's a, hold on, I think that that's a, that's bronze. Shipwreck bronze, not brown, sorry. We can leave that out, because bronze is my favorite to experiment with. Okay, oh, here is your white yellow. They literally have, oh, it's called, <laughs> check out the name, check out, ship, shipwreck is a metallic, yeah, I left it out, it's a bronze. Um, so here's a, a whiter, or lighter yellow, right? Um, this is called a uh, tainted snow. So that would be the one I speak of that you add to a, a lighter green to get that really nice volume highlight on the tip or the edge of something. Another orange, which we need, this one's called clawfish orange. Kind of a little lighter than the others. Um, Similar, but they are shaded. Once mixed, these are like a shade or two apart. Um, so that's good for you to know in case you don't want to mix. Some people just don't like to mix. Oh, here's one. Here's a green. Oh, this is good. Gak green. That's good. That's a good one. You guys that are painting Nurgles like that, you want, yeah, you want that. If you're painting Nurgles, Gak green. Good night, Wavy. Thank you so much. I think it's a little bit more um, mucusy than guacamole bronze archer. <laughs> I think there's a little bit more um, actual green to it. Good night, Wavy. Thank you so much, Wavy. Truly, thank you so much. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so we got some colors for the browns, like. Pine, pine, here's pine box flesh. This is a little, so the other one's a little bit more, it says rosy flesh, a little bit more pink, a little bit more peach, kind of like a sunset glow on the skin. Let's see, um, the 51st shade, I'm gonna guess it's a white. This looks interesting. Yeah, we wanna take a look at that. Oh, you know what that might be? Hold on. Is that a warm, is that a warm white? Hmm, hang on. I think this is a warm white. Hang on. Oh, it's grayish. Okay, hold on. I gotta, I gotta open it. Sometimes it's hard to see through the, the bottles, kind of skew the color a little bit. Let's put this white over here. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, I'm gonna put these side by side. and let, Now, my camera's gonna... Oh, so, you guys, it is... Um, it's neutral. It's a neutral white. Um, my camera's gonna bleach it out. You guys won't be able to see it. But when I look at it, so it's a neutral white. Uh, it could go with a cold or a warm. Um, when you put it up next to White Knight, White Knight is definitely cool white. Very Arctic white. Does not have any blue in it. This is similar to the base white by, as far as like, when you're looking on your desk, uh, what you might be used to using. Um, it's in the family of the base white, maybe, by Vallejo. Uh, titanium white by... Thank you for that follow. Oh, my God, TV. So, um, yeah. It is cooler. Hold on. Because this is as white as I can think white. Yeah, it's actually, okay. It's cooler then Titanium White by Camara, if you're familiar with Camara. 
it's a little a little bit cooler. Uh, titanium white by Camara is like literally titanium white. So it is, uh, it's like, it's white. It, it doesn't lean any direction. This one is a little bit cooler. So I think would make a really good cool white for you guys. And if you wanted a little bit warmer white, uh, 51st Shade is a, and I do just mean a little bit, you guys. My lights are going to wa wash it out a little, but it's just a little tiny bit. You know, if I had to explain it as a mixture, ever so slight gray and ever so slight bone, both, put into a white when you're looking at it. But I mean, it's very, very slight. Well, hello, Iffy. Oh, you're doing the lawn mowing? Yeah, it's, um, you guys, it's, it's, so it's not antique white, you know, where it has that warm uh, kind of vanilla feel to it. Uh, it's a, it is a little bit more towards like a gray white, but not enough for you to look at it and not feel white when you put it on something. Really good idea on these colors is to bring them to a shade, like add a little bit of tan or a little bit of blue or yellow, like I do when I'm painting white, because if you, if you bring this color down a little bit, really you're able to take like a super bright white like this and use it as a highlight. Uh, it's very complimentary also, like when you do that. Let's see, what else have we got? All right, we've got some Ice Dragon Blue Dragon Heart. It looks like another kind of blue-gray. Um, yep. Yeah, so I got like blue, wait a minute. Hold on, is that a metallic? Is that a metallic? Can't see through the, uh, through the, no. Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah, that's a, that's, oh, there's a color that make really good shadow on some white armor, you guys. That is a nice color, damn, I like that. I don't even think I have anything quite like that. Ice Dragon Blue. Hi, Baby D. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Uh, let's, let's, now we're gonna, a few of them here are drying. I'm, I'm checking, are they drying true to color? That's another test. I like the Ice Dragon Blue is, is special. Battlefield Crimson. Uh, looks like a brownish red. Maybe the color we mix with red to create the dry blood. Could be. I'm gonna have to do some experimenting. See what else have we got here? Dusk sky. It's a nice, a, a grayish baby blue, tiniest bit of gray. I could, and I will, I will, I will get in there and, and we'll verify like the perfection of these colors as we roll through. Ooh, this looks delicious. We're gonna try that. Fairy skin. So kind of a rosy peach. I'm going to give it that. I'm, now I'm looking through the bottom of the bottle, right at the pigment portion. Let's give this elven gray a mix because you know the greens, right? Always looking for the greens. Got the two blues I want to test ground on there. The dragon's eye blue is going to be too light to do what I want to do with the red. So far, the reddest red I have found is chromat. Cro Comrade, I'm sorry, Comrade Red. I'm sorry, you guys. Pronunciations, right? Let's see. We got a couple of metallics we're gonna test. I don't know where my metallic, oh yeah, I do. I know where my metallic warrior is. What everybody was teasing me about uh, him being, was it Colossus? Is Colossus a metallic man? Yes. That's yeah, awesome. everybody was teasing me that he was Colossus. Hang on just a second. I'm going to look at a couple things. So, Colossus should be over here. In the weird stack of stuff. Colossus, are you in there? No. He's going to be in here. Hmm. Oh, I found Captain Steady. 
So that's good. Let's see. Colossus should be in here. He was our test model. No, nope, Colossus is missing. Well, damn it. Colossus is missing. So, if Colossus is missing, I haven't seen Colossus in a minute. I can't believe that that bucket of ducks has stayed. Oh, here we go. We've got some. Where are the Hold on, guys. Am I grabbing a necron? Oh, the necron's, necron's got to put away. They, they, they got put away? Yeah. It's supposed to be over here. We have a, a, a shelf that's open just for necrons. In progress or painted there? Uh, necrons that are bland, uh, that are not, uh, that are not in, in progress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm, looking yeah, for I'm gonna paint on. I'm gonna paint on. Come on, I cannot paint. Oh, actually, I have your croissant. I'm gonna do that because oh. What? I'd love to play an idea outside. Have you checked the outer exterior? It's not that hot outside. It's been raining all day and it's not the muggy here. Where is the croissant? Did you take it back? No, here it is. Okay, excellent. We have a croissant. We can do some piddle derping on the croissant. Look at that. Yeah. But I have Captain Seti. I just can't do uh, metallic on Captain Seti, so. Oh, it's delicious. I love it. Okay, wait. Wait till you see this. This is... Okay, I got the, the reds and the blues over here. Let's move the croissant for a moment. So, oh, I have those test pieces that he made me, too. Honest little... Oh, this might... Uh, this one's on... So, the Super Chibi Weekend is coming up, you guys. This eye tutorial is up on YouTube. And also, has any has everybody been out to check? Has everybody been to check the Kickstarter for the new handle for the Grim Grip? Have you been there? If you have not been there, you want to go check that out. Can I get a link for that, please, Geek? All right, this is really so. Just recently, and oh my God, it's so good. Okay, you guys. So I am a fan. Now this is a little bit, this is a little bit like the color Geek was talking about, but grayer. Oh, this is really a good color, you guys. So I don't know exactly what your use for this would be, but we are over here. It is called Elven Gray. Now it is, so, oh, is that the link to it? Wow, mine is so much longer. How'd you get that little short link to it? Because I know how to do things interesting okay so yeah you guys go check that out you want to see that it's live right now um it's we're taking backers we uh we're just just about a third of the way there to be successful and you guys it is so amazing so we uh have completely revised the prototype just to let you guys know Where, where's my baby there she is and i have a new one on the way so it's been revised, but if you guys have not seen this demonstration, you, you gotta you you gotta see it. It's it's it is it is necessary. Let us take a moment. Very quickly. <laughs> and let us go here. And let us go to, hold on just a minute. Challenge, challenge, challenge. I shall take you guys on a little ride. Be patient. Um, ideas, there we go. And I shall. Hi, 814 Punk. Oh, it really plays it. This is the new prototype. 
Oh, they can't read it. Damn it. I'll have to reduce the size of that. Let me see. I uh, do not know how to size that. Um, that's very loud. Interesting. Okay. Is that really loud for you guys? Oh, it's gonna be it's 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 gonna be good. So let me see. Uh, let me try turning the volume down a little bit there, so you guys aren't blared out. Okay, and we'll try it again. This one gives you static photos, so and it, and it should no see they all show up too big. I'm gonna have to work on that. I can't show you guys a proper video if they're not sized right. Well, that is a bummer. Hmm. <laughs> Give me a couple seconds, seconds and I can... Okay. Well, I didn't want to... Yeah, oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, so I have, I have both videos with static on them for you guys, and, you know, that explains it, and then I also have other ones that um, are, are lots of fun. But basically what we're looking at is this, and what I really want to show you guys that I didn't get a chance to show you... For those of you that use the airbrush, I really want to show you this idea. Okay, so there's a lot of concepts about what to put over this when you go into your airbrush booth. Let me show you what I do. So I don't want to get the handle covered in paint. When you get the paint on your glove, the paint on your glove, right? When you get all that paint on your glove, for those of you that have worked with the miniatures, you know if you touch the miniature, it's got the paint, and then the paint comes off your glove and onto your miniature, right? So what I do is I remove the ball. This is super cheap sandwich baggie right I stick it inside the sandwich baggie I put the ball back on and I stick my hand with my glove on it up inside the sandwich baggie so not only does it protect the handle so I'm not getting sticky from that but it also protects my glove when I'm holding and meanwhile the mini is on the magnet while you're doing the airbrushing and then when I'm all done I just take a paper towel with a little bit of alcohol on it right and I grab the ball off the top wipe the ball off put it back on well, actually, I wipe the ball off, and then I take this. And like you do your gloves, right, I turn it inside out because it's covered in paint. I throw its butt away and then clean off the ball and put my guy back together. So that works out quite well, just to let you know. Also, what works really good if you want to protect it is when you get, a, like, a hole in one of the fingers of your glove or something like that, you can literally use your old glove to put over the handle. If you don't mind getting your glove with the um, primer or the, the paint on it, if you don't mind that. But I found that to be like the least expensive way other than recycling the rubber glove. So you can take the rubber glove, right? Once the rubber glove has a hole in one of the fingers, okay? And you can take your ball off and put it, or insert it up inside your old rubber glove, okay? And then take and put your ball back on. And then basically you're just reusing an old rubber glove and then do your, if you don't mind it getting on this glove. And even then you, you it's a little tight to put, to, you know, to double glove it. <laughs> but so you're recycling your own rubber gloves that you would normally throw away anyway. And then when you're all done, take the ball off, clean it with paper towel, take this guy, turn it inside out, throw it away. So I, I've come up with all different ways to protect it from getting paint on it so but I, I think that of all of them I really like the sandwich bag one because of the fact that um, I get it protects my glove and protects the handle so that was my favorite uh, the reason now you can put a cloth you can put a paper towel you can put what whatever you want you can put um, you can literally cut a circle out of something I mean I found out yeah, right. That would have been. That would have been. Uh, you can you can just like cut a circle out of something and you can put it on there and it still kind of protects from spraying on your glove and protects it. But it just depends on how much protection you want for it. But something that you guys might want to take into consideration um, in reference to your Grim Grip.
Definitely want you guys to go take a look at it though. So anybody who's, I really appreciate the backing, by the way. Paul John, thank you so much for backing our project. That really, really makes us pleased. Seriously, you guys, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. Now, back to these cephalopod paints. So many subjects going on. Oh, you know what? It is guacamole green. It's called guac green. You were right. I'm so dyslexic. I am sorry, bronze. It's called guac green, but it is a little more yellow. I'm just saying it's just a little bit more yellow, but it depends on whose guacamole it is, too. It really does. I knew a lady that used to dye hers green. It's beautiful, though. It's like... So it's right, it's got, we've got some really good, like the green family. Look at this green family. We've got the Christmas tree green. We've got the goblin skin that's kind of olive. We've got the guac green that's just a little bit more yellow. This is the one that's just, I'm loving. It's called um, OD green. So look at, so far, we're, we're collecting a really good little forest of green here. I'll leave those greens out for you guys so we can see, because you know, lean on green, right? You're always going to need greens. This elven gray is stunning. This is a beautiful color. Um, I don't think I have a color like it. I'm very, very fond of it. The teals, uh, you will love. You will love the teals bronze. They're both beautiful. That is um, Cyrene green um, bronze and um, Will-O-Wisp blue. Willow with blue leaning a little bit towards mint, but a really nice um, highlight to the um, siren. And this elven gray, oh man, see, like you see them all lined up here. They're a nice little family. I feel like those would make a really good try color situation. All right, so we have to open another box because we have not quite found the blue and the red. Oh, I see, I see one called Crew Daddy Red. We might have a promising one. Now, the minute I find a good red, then we're off onto the purple idea. Remember the purple idea? I'm, I'm always trying to see whether or not, and we're, and, we're, and we're using the same company here, so we're gonna go with the paints by the same company. It's not common. Like the only one so far that does it is the um, Camara. But, like I said, it doesn't matter. When they make a good purple, it really doesn't matter, does it? Okay, let's see what we've got here. Get all that off the desk. The minis. There we go. All right. So, delicious. Look at this orange. Okay, so we're going... These are, that's the sequins in the orange. So we're getting deeper. This is, this is called fireball orange. That right there, you, like that right there, if you were ordering, you know, you wanted a base orange, I would go with that one because you could mix a little yellow in that and you can get lighter. But for people who just do not like to do that, look, it's delicious, right? I'm gonna eat them all when you're not looking. Most specifically, these three are a nice little trio of beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And the fall harvest, oh, this, you know how I, I love uh, the, the, that um, oxide, red oxide? This is not red oxide, but I love the colors that have that red oxide feel to them. This is a really good one. This is called fall harvest. I'm liking that too. Let's see, oh, we've got another pink, bubblegum pink. Oh, somebody said something about bubblegum pink. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, I, uh, now I see what they were saying. Okay. So bubblegum pink being the one that is similar to breast cancer pink. Um, I actually think, though, you guys, I feel like bubblegum pink is more um, true to the little girl pink. The reason is because now that I'm looking at them side by... Yeah, now that I'm looking at them side by side... Uh, I wouldn't have realized this just looking at a bottle by itself, like either, either. This is more baby pink, but with more pigment. Okay. So it's, 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 it's bull a little, there's, there's more depth. That's the word I'm looking for. Baby girl pink. Yes. Now breast cancer pink, actually, when you put them side by side, this is interesting. So, um, you see how much more rosy 
mauve and how much more you know light pink okay so this so that you know the breast cancer pink kind of falls in the middle so for those of you seeking the breast cancer pink when say it's not in season i feel like you could almost mix these two colors and get that color uh, now that i look at breast cancer pink i realize that it does actually have a small amount of blue in it it does it it, it falls into technically like like when we're we're, we're just talking paints as a color when we're looking at them um it actually has a slight bit of a mauve feel to it that like this this one's uh yeah that one right there is this this would go really good with purple i'm just saying oh yeah look at that look put it over here on the palette for you guys there's the purple it's just it's a little bit calmer that's a really good color monkey ball pink is a really good color cephalopod like seriously pinks are kind of not a very friendly color this is a really good color this and that elven oh and the elven skin oh okay that i'm saving those aside because that's hot that's hot and this is yeah this is good let me um i didn't quite get it mixed i want to make sure my top is reflecting the right color that's that's really good too okay let's see what we got here okay now we're getting into some oh this looks like a really good blue. It's called Gunpowder Gin Blue. Ooh. Gin, gin, sorry. We're going to test all the blues and we're going to find out like what's the bluest blue, right? Okay, here's another one. It's called Castaway Green. Love that name. Waste Management. I love that name. Castaway Green. Uh, falling, oh, nice, nice. Falling into that olive family. Really good. Oop, I see some teal bronze. I see some teal. Oh, this is going to be one of my favorites, you guys. So, you know how I have that one called, what is it, Arctic White by Vallejo that I'm using on stuff all the time. I'm going to love this color cephalopod oh my god look at this oh yeah baby oh yeah 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 you guys oh this is delicious too so much delicious i can hardly stand it oh my gosh make me hungry i'm gonna start eating paint here in a minute okay waste management let's take a look at that over here oh it's periwinkle hi lustness it is the most oh my gosh bronze are you still out there write that one down waste management it is the most beautiful color of periwinkle, you guys. Okay, so if you're not familiar with periwinkle, it's not baby blue, and it's not lavender, and it's not mauve, and it's kind of like they all got together and just had this baby. So my lights bleach it out a little bit, but our, I know, and I, I see another kind of sea green. I'm, I'm looking here, but this color you need because it is a color that this color and then a really good rich eggplant are purple's friend. I mean, our, our, our teal's friend. Yeah, this is, this is going to be, I'm going to use, I'm going to need to order another bottle of this. Um, cuttlefish, I mean, I mean, um, uh, cephalopod, I'm going to need to order, uh, we need to talk, I'm going to need to order a few paints that I'd like to give away. Um, because certain colors I like to give away because generally speaking, you can pretty much ask anybody that's received a, a paint gift where I pick the color. Um, I, I, I tend towards colors on, in my studio that other people don't have. Periwinkles are, it's, it's, it's beautiful bronze. It really, um, it has that cool feel but it didn't go to blue. It actually has a very good peri. If you look at it next to the purple, right? Let me let me get closer for you guys. Let's get closer. There you go. Let's get a little bit. Come on, get down here. Okay, there. So, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it refocus, you guys. There, right there. Let us. Oh, Lustness, um, Geek got me the Fuller Monty, all of the cuttlefish paint. 
and someone that's a friend of mine recommended them to me uh, because I loved glaze. So I was raised uh, getting an education in oils and I love to glaze. And so the first paints that were recommended to me were the Camara, and they resolved so many of my problems painting. And then um, these were recommended to me so that I could get my glaze on. Oh, you a periwinkle? Oh, I think you'll be happy. I think you'll be happy. I can mix it all day long, bronze, but I think you'll be happy. Here, let's take a look over here. Um, let me see if I can just hang on. I'm going to try to get this. Sorry about the, the. There we go. Okay, let's just go over here for a minute. There we go. Okay, and then and then let's let it focus again. Hang on. There we go. And so, like I'm looking right here. And if you if you see, like maybe you want to get a little more lavender with it. How it'll make a nice transition. Oh, they, they mix very well, you guys, there. But I feel like we could get a good blue. I'm going to actually say on the periwinkle, you got to be really careful with your blue um, when you're mixing for periwinkle. Uh, when you are mixing your blue, your periwinkle, a little more towards blue. Yeah, right? I know you love them. I know, I know, because, oh my God, you guys, you, you got it, you got it, my relationship with bronze. So once upon a play day, we had a play day in here, remember mixing all the paints, I sent bronze um, photographs of my palette. It was all messy, we were just mixing all the paints together. And I sent her all the pictures of my palette so that she could match them on her um, digital art pad. Yeah, uh, so uh, can we uh, get it, can we get a link? in the chat geek for lustness. Um, I think that maybe, um, um, uh. the studio, uh. oh no, I, I meant, I meant the paints. I think oh, that, um, oh, okay. Thank you, Dragonheart. Thank you. Yeah, so these are the, these are the cephalopod paints. And I'm uh, actually, I have certain colors I'm really fond of that are hard to find. So out of 97 colors, um, I'm looking at a few. I think you're gonna love, uh, seriously. Like if you just ordered one to play with, yeah, this is a, a really good periwinkle. It's ever so slightly um, gray bronze, but that's a positive because the color that it is, you can shift it a little to blue or a little to purple. The nice part you're gonna like about it is, unlike many companies that create periwinkle there is not a huge amount of um, white opacity to it and uh, it has no brown in it the, now I, now when I speak about this you guys I'm not speaking about the scientific composition of this paint I am speaking about to the human eye one thing that I actually have I can pat myself on the back for and I can commend myself because I know this about me is that when I look at colors I see the colors in it I can do that with food I can taste food and I kind of know what spices are in it and, and that sort of a thing. Hello, Fair the Reaper. <sighs> yes, yes. So I'm going to tell you right now, Dragonheart, that it's 100% it's affordable. It's, 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 it's pretty amazing. I, I was shocked that I got 97 colors for that price. So I'm going to set this aside. That's waste management bronze. Um, and on your on the Oni project, I'm also going to recommend Monkey Ball Pink. So Monkey Ball Pink is if mauve were more pink, you know Dusty Rose, you know the color Dusty Rose. It is Dusty Rose, but not so um, dusty. <laughs> not so dusty. Yeah. So yeah. So lessness. I have like um, yeah. I have now the Reapers. I. I pick and choose, but all of the um, Pro Krill and all of the Camara and the next that's coming into the studio and then all of the um, all of the Cuttlefish and the next coming into the studio is the tubes, the tubes made by Scale 75. Yeah, I, I, I'm just looking at these thinking like, looky there, like, let me, let me focus in for you. Now this one's gonna be a little bleached out girl, but you see, right? And that, that pink, though, what you were, sh I, honestly, 
I think if you get this pink, you're going to be loving that. Because um, the other pink that I think might also is breast cancer pink, uh, but but you can only get this certain seasons uh, from Reaper. Yeah, the tubes though, the tubes lessness, the tubes. Let's see. Okay, so we have a couple more greens. Let's take a look at that. Ooh, oh, you guys want to see this? Everybody who paints Necrons and Nurgles, you want to see this one? Let's give it a good shake. This is also, I'm gonna need to order a second one of these for my desk. This will be one of my giveaways. You know, maybe I can work out something. If, if I really like them, I'll contact the guy that made them, uh, the, the, the cephalopod gentleman, and um, we will see about ordering like, you know, bulks to be able to give a little paint away here and there. This is absolutely, absolutely a sensational lime green. It's delicious. Okay, wait. So my favorite lime green, hold on. Let me give you just a minute. I have a couple of favorites. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, we're on to something here. Oh, this, this is great, you guys. It's great. Okay, so we're gonna find their, they have, a, they have a neon yellow. There's the neon yellow. All right, let's, let's, let's take a moment. Let's take a moment and play. I'm gonna put a couple more greens in our green family. Okay, I've got a few more browns in here. Look, look at the variety. We got some good mm, caramel skin right there. Look at that, baby. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. We got to get our shadow. We're not going to use that shadow. Okay. Ooh, that's looking delicious. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, oh, I like this one. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right here. And let me see. Wait, I've got to know. I've got. A, I've got to have a real strong olive. Back to that OD. Okay, right there, baby. Look at that. Oh, we are making some skin. Yes. Mmm. Right there. It's delicious. Everything is delicious today. These are such delicious paints. Later, you'll. I'll make a picture with me. Like mwah. sucking the brushes. Okay, don't suck your brush. I'm just kidding. Right here. Beautiful scar caramel skin. Oh, and, and wait, it, that's not all. Hold on, hold on, what, what, what did I find? I found not the happy accident. What was that color? Not the happy yam. That's what, not happy yam. Is that happy yam? Hold on, it's not a happy yam, you guys. It's liquid yam. Happy yam. Um, no, it's, it's liquid yam. Okay, hold on. We have, um, where did it go? Is this it? No, it was more. Oh, that's that's good. So it's a, it was a golden yellow. It'll pop back up. Uh, you know, for the sun tones and the caramel. Yeah, right? Caramel skin. Mm. Oh, now oils. Um, oils, bronze are in my YouTube. Hold on, sweetheart. Hold on. If you guys are going to do an oil thing, let me just get off track. If you want to test oils, so I did a lot of... Uh, market research so and I, I have a lot of oils okay but um if you guys are going to go out and you're going to start painting with oils right and then it costs so much to get all the tubes and then people tend what they do is they tend to buy the cheaper brand so here's the bet oils last a long time okay a little bit goes a long way so if you're gonna start oils this is what you want to do Okay, and the reason is because this one box is gonna last you so long, okay? And it has all the colors you need to start. These are all your base colors, like you can make skin, flowers, trees, blah, 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 blah. okay? Lime green, all of it, okay? Um, so I recommend a higher quality, okay, and less paint you don't need a lot of oil paint so this is the right now this is the company I'm still researching I was very satisfied with the quality of this product and this will save you money oh there you are I'm loving your paint I'm gonna start eating it any moment um, so yeah, if you're gonna do the oil thing, even if you guys wanna do like oil washes and that sort of a thing, either A, buy one small tube of a very quality paint, okay? You don't need a lot. 
and, and don't look at it as being a small amount. It's not. Just trust me when I tell you that one of these tubes is going to last you a long time. If you bought one of these to do, say you're doing some grim dark and you wanted to do some like brown black washes, right? Uh, that is the one color though that I was missing, by the way, out of the, out of the set. I'm just letting you know, black's not in there. Like it doesn't come with black. So uh, I think I mentioned that in my video. Yes, these are excellent. Okay, so I want to save you time and money. <gasps> you know, I actually don't know. Um, uh, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I'm kind of gonna be talking to him after I use the paints and everything, Dragon, and see where this relationship leads. If it's as good a thing as the Camara, then you know me. I'm all over it. Oils, small box separate brushes go to my youtube geek can you give him a link go to the youtube and watch the video i that video i'm dead serious you guys i know my oils i know that um uh wapelius he knows a lot about oils and i i find i i feel if you ask wapelius hey is that a good brand hey what do you think about getting separate brushes for my oil everything i have to say on there and that man, all just like me, he that's the thing that he does. He I did before this, and he still does it. I'm working on that though, you guys. There you go. So if you go to the YouTube there and just save that video, then you can if you want to get started in oils, you just don't don't break your pocketbook getting all ex you might not like it. You might not be happy. So you can reduce the cost by doing it this way. And the efficiency, so just like with any paint, we don't use craft paint on our miniatures, but I use them on terrain, okay? So we were, this is the page we were on. Hold on, we're over here. Now we've got some teals for um, bronze over there, but we're gonna go over here and we're gonna intrigue our necrons here for a moment. Okay, first of all, the neon shakes. Okay, that's a good sign. All right, um, a lot of neons are very sticky. Okay, um, I'm not a huge fan. Now, if indeed they put the same, I'm guessing the same carrier is in here. Uh, uh, in the neons, I recommend to people to put a little bit of retarder. You may not need to, you may not need to. So let's just go over here and see, but oh, look at this yellow. Look at this. Let's get right in the face of that. That is beautiful. Okay. Okay. Then. Afterlife green. Hey, Scooter, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a minute. Okay, this afterlife green. Now, afterlife green feels... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Cephalopod, and if um, he's not out there, let's be sure to ask again. So, um, I have a strange little quirk about shaking. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it, it comes from a very, very bad place in my childhood. You guys wouldn't even, you'd be amazed if you knew this story. Trust me when I tell you I, I know consistencies in containers when shaking them. Like, cans bottle it's really weird it's, it's 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 a weird little thing so uh this is a little thinner okay so it's not and it's not it's it is not that the sediment is stuck on the bottom it is that this is physically thinner now i'm gonna double check with him to make sure that that is the way this is supposed to be and that this is not um an off bottle just so you guys know but i'm gonna tell you right now mine is thinner so we're gonna be really careful with that and we're gonna put that out there. Yeah, it is. It's, it's uh, it is abnormally thin. I think maybe this might be. It might be an off bottle. But we'll we'll ask him. Now we're gonna take that and literally um, create. Oh my goodness! Yes. So this was my favorite lime green. Let me get that. But I always mix yellow in it. Um, this yellow mixed into that. <laughs> because, you know, Necrons, right? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're we're getting there. We're getting some good stuff. Oh, really? Pro krill, bright yellow green, and they're neon yellow. Okay, so they're neon yellow. Yeah, I give I give the um the neon paints a yes, you guys. Okay, they are not um sticky. Let me see. Um, Reapers is not. Is this is this? Let me make sure I, I've got the neon yellow here. Yeah, Reapers is not bad, but it's sticky. Okay, a little sticky. Uh, but let's just I just want to I just want to show you side by side. I want to show you the I want the, the color neon yellow. I am hoping that you're going to be able to see the difference here. This is the cuttlefish. That one. That is the reaper. So what I want you to notice is this was one of the brighter neon yellows that I was able to get my hands on before the cuttlefish. So neon color, I'm feeling pretty good about it. It also is not as sticky. It seems to mix in really good. We're gonna set this aside to talk to him about when he gets back. Um, let me see if I can find my, uh, no, now I have another neon color. Hang on. This one has a learning curve to it, and this is what we're gonna put out on the palette. Oh, you're here. Okay, well, right now I'm talking about how neon your neon yellow is, how it is not sticky, how it mixes well with other paints. We are working with yours over here, okay? Um, I, and uh, this, this other one, is actually Neon Yellow by Reaper, which is one of the brighter neons I was able to get in uh, game paints, okay? And we're, we're doing a little bit of comparison. I'm not knocking anybody's paint. I like my Neon Yellow, uh, you guys, by Reaper very well. It's just neon colors tend to be a little sticky. And um, what I did wanna know uh, about your Neon Yellow, about your neons is, um, are, there's a little bit of, uh, in the medium, we have, is there a little also retarder in your neons to slow, you know, I'm sure you know this, that neons and metallics tend to dry a lot faster. So um, it feels very smooth. It doesn't feel sticky. I like it and it is playing well. So if we got a little bit of retarder in this, we're talking science here. Uh, it mixes nicely with the ball. I don't have to really fight it too much. Now. I do not particularly like the neon colors at all by Vallejo. They are too sticky. I don't like them. I think they're too sticky. Okay, absolutely. Okay, the neon colors can be tricky and you found, yes, yes. So I, I tend to mix into the neons that I use, retarder as well as a bit of a change in the bind, yes. Okay, so I am feeling that you guys, I can, I can feel a cephalopod the difference like I I use it I use a lot of paint so let me show you what my go-to neon is okay so that you know right uh, and and this is so the reason I use this is um, because uh, first of all um, uh, airbrush is uh, one of the things I do but I do have to use neons a lot with the um, Necrons, the Necrons. It's a way I build these glows, right? But here's what I like to show you guys, because I know everybody's always like, oh, where did you get that neon? I'm about to show you something trippy. Now, I like this and I feel like, that's the Spectre Checks. If you guys are gonna do a lot of glow um, and you're painting some Necrons or you're painting a lot of gook for your, um, hold on. Dave paints the Nurgles. Um, it's a nice big bottle, really good price, works amazing in an airbrush, works really good when you're pooling and stuff like that, okay, but again, we go back to the little bit of wrestling match, uh, it's a, when you apply neons, understand neons are a little bit thin, uh, as in transparent, that's the word I'm looking for, and they, they always have a little bit of a thing with their movement. Now I'm gonna use the neons by a cephalopod and see if we can get some really good glazing going on because it is playing friendly with other paints. But this is what I wanted to show you.
This is my go-to neon. This is the, this and Createx are the two strongest neon color. I've, I have, I have all of them. I'm, ink is on the way. Let's, let's just take a look at this. Let's put it out on the palette. Okay. Now, here's the interesting thing about, so this neon, when you put them side by side, now I don't know if you guys can see it or not, okay? Ever so slight green compared to the cephalopod is got a really pure, now this over here, this one is ever so slight gold. The cephalopod is holding kind of in the center. Let's get a thing. Oh, look, here's a thing. And it's painted white. So it's going to be like all bled out. Let's take a look at putting some of it like this is not necessarily the way you're going to do it. But if you're making a glow, right, what do we do? White in the background. So let's get um, do your paints dry matte cuttlefish. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Let's see. Are we are they all matte paints? Oh, wait, that's the one that's great. Got a little bit of wait. No, this is white knife. This is this is pure white. OK, good. So another thing now, right? Hello, Midnight Terror. How are you? We're doing a really big box opening. We're playing with paints today. All right. We are playing with paints today. Let's let's do some things that we do with neon yellow. All right. So one of the things we're going to do first is uh, we're going to pretend that we're making. Um, I'm going to paint this and let it dry because remember when you're making. Um, oops, I've got a little yellow on that. Let's let's not do that. Hold on. Didn't rinse that very good, did I? Hang on. Take that off. It would be unfair. Okay. So we're going to take the white. Uh, very matte. So now matte, remember when we're making a glow, right? We like matte. Matte is our friend. Bob and John are our friends too, but you know, we especially like matte. All right. So we're going to take, and this, so that means that this paint, um, you know, I always use primer in my underglows, but um, not everybody has a bucket of white primer on their desk. So if these dry nice and matte, you should just be able to use these to create your 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 underglow, okay? So we'll just kind of come in here and just cover this area, and and then we'll just make some some glowy shoulder pads here. We're just gonna let him dry for a minute. We'll just let him dry for a minute while we go through a few more colors. Oh my gosh! You know what? I put a post out there, Dragonheart, that said, that said we were doing a box opening and playing in paint, not actually painting. All right, let's see, blue. We're gonna set this aside because we are waiting for that to dry. And then uh, we've got some, oh, oh. Now see, this one does not like a very wet palette, by the way, the, 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 the Spectre Text, uh, it really, it really does prefer to be kept um, like in a little container or something. But if I don't put it on the wet palette, you know what? Uh, I I thought about it, but I, I thought maybe th 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 that that might be against TOS. Painting off, exactly, exactly. Well, you know, when I got this many paints and you guys like, maybe you don't want them all. Maybe you do, maybe you want to see. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit more of that over, over, over there, over there. And a little bit more of the uh, Neon Yellow by Reaper over here. Now, this is the one that's got the weird beaker on it, by the way. The neon yellow of Reaper, it always, the cap fill, the, it's like the beaker is too short. It's so weird. I think I got a weird one. I think I got a weird one. Okay, so we're, so we got them all three out there, and we're just going to let those guys for a minute while we look at a couple of other things. So I got another green to add to the green collection that is so good. This is the one, this is the one really, oh, yeah, um, where is that bronze? Is she still out there? Oh, um, cephalopod, I have a question. Really quick. Oh, I know, right? It, 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 to, for me, I feel like um, that's like almost necessary. Okay, so I, I need to I need to know if this uh, this is um 
Afterlife Green. Now, I want to make sure, because as I'm teaching to use the paints, right, I want to be on track. This paint, this particular bottle, is easily, without exaggeration, 50% thinner than any of the others I've opened so far. It's almost like it's thinned to... Uh, an airbrush or even thinner consistency. And I'm wondering if maybe I just got a bottle that is, because sometimes I get off bottles, maybe a bottle that's uh, not quite right. It's super duper duper thin. Um, when I, it almost pours out of the bottle rather than drops. And if it is that way, if that's, hello Pascal, welcome. Everybody Pascal is in the house. And I just want to make sure, because it could be the way this paint is designed. Okay, um, I've got a couple couple more. Oh, you were, are you, what are you working on? <laughs> really? You, are you working on some commissions? It wouldn't happen to be anybody I know, would it? Hello, Horde Fitch. We are playing with Cuttlefish Paint today. I'm assuming it's possible. Afterlife is, oh, it is a very thin paint. It is a glaze consistency. Okay, so, um, okay, so this, this one, you guys, uh, the Afterlife Green, you can't type it. Okay, the Afterlife Green is a glaze paint specific. I'm letting you know, um, I put some out, and um, this paint does not have the power to use when you're doing like a base situation. So if you were gonna paint something lime green I, with these paints, um, I would recommend taking their neon yellow and then mixing their neon yellow into a, a neon like green, maybe with one of the greens. And we can give that a try. We can give that a try because we got a beautiful base green and beautiful base greens make great neon green if you have a good neon yellow, right? Uh, or a good neon green. So um, I would not get the paint Afterlife Green as your replacement for um, the bright yellow green by Pro Prill, if that's, you know, if that's the thing you're after. The bright yellow green by Pro Prill, base paint, totally. Like you can be use that as the blocking color, right? This one is designed for glazing, and so what we're gonna do now that I have all these glaze paints is probably some sessions on glazing. Um, I will help you guys learn that in as we move forward. It took you three, really? Okay, so I wanted to show these to Bronze Archer. We are looking at mystic, mystic waters, but it's like mystic waters, okay? Now remember you guys, I recommend taking the rings off so that you can keep the caps on tight over your little beakers. Sometimes those rings will make your uh, cap fit wrong and your little beaker will spit, the little dropper will spit all into the cap and make a big old mess. Okay, over here, this is more in the green family bronze and um, a little smidgen of gray. You thought they were nipples. Well, they could be nipples. Okay, over, over here, here we go. Little, a little smidgen of gray. It's nice to see you in here, Midnight Terror. Um, very, very, oh. Pascal, thank you so much for popping in, my dear. It was nice to chat with you two online. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, it's a lot of good stuff. You like to glaze. Um, I'm feeling pretty positive about it. Uh, I'll let you know what the outcome is and how I feel about um, so far. I feel like definitely you should, pr the neons, I mean, if you have a inkling to use a neon, I'm feeling pretty good about the neons. Now I've only touched the yellow, but the yellow is always the crankiest. Yellow is always the crankiest. Uh, generally speaking, there's there's a few. Uh, generally speaking, the um, pink has like no power. We will see. We're gonna do some testing. We're gonna do, we're gonna do some testing. But they all sound really good too. Hello, hello Omni. Hi hi hi. 
we're playing with um uh we're playing with the uh, cuttlefish paint today so uh hang on just a second i don't want to lose track of my bronze bronze mystic waters elven gray yum wait hold on where did you go where did it go here we go Cyrene. It gives a little bit of green love to, so, uh, tripod, you guys, tripod. We're talking tripod. All right. So these are not all in the cool family. This one leans ever so, ever so slightly towards being warm. By doing this, mixing these, we create a sense of complementary within a group of colors that like one another, okay? So these all guys all like each other, see, right? And by, by doing this, we can create gradients and glazes um, more readily and easily. Uh, we can bring it up to like what you do over here, right? Is you just do this, okay? So that you can bring that up. And then over here on this end, you know, that's gonna depend, like, do you wanna go more to green? Do you wanna go more to blue? So, um, <clears throat> They've got a really, like, this one's just tripping me out. Uh, that one might be a little too cold. Uh, I do think you could probably get away with the uh, gunpowder gin if you want to go towards blue. Definitely, if you really, really, I mean, this is how I would do it. I would use uh, trilobite green. And that's where I would go with it. And then, of course, you know, we talk shadows differently. But that's just getting your, your gradients. <clears throat> You know, so what I did, what I did, Omni, was um, I bought the set, the whole set of 97. And I'll be honest with you, I was very, I was very happy with what I paid for that many paints. Um, there was another company that recently, um, somebody said, have you tried these? And I went to, um, to look it up and they were like $5.50 a bottle. And I was like, um, well, now, wait a minute now. I would pay that for Camara. I would right now. I would. I would. But because there's a difference, okay? This is where life with acrylic paint starts. I'll just be honest with you. This is where it starts. Um, there's a learning curve, though. What I'm trying to do is find paints for people to resolve problems in miniature painting and make it easier for them to learn to paint to mix all of it. Thank you, Dragon. Hey, Apex, how you doing? How you doing? We are playing with cuttlefish paint. Uh, right now I'm sharing uh, the teal aspect of things with my friend Bronze out there. She's working on some commission art. So that elven gray, so I've got this, I'm gonna put um, uh, a uh, little topper on that baby. So the elven gray bronze, the waste management monkey ball pink. These, I feel, kind of like they have a place like they're really unusual very unusual um not something that you see you might find one here or there but i usually mix these colors you use watercolors and they are beautiful and cheap like to uh, but oh so omni you use watercolors on your miniatures holy wow You know what? <laughs> Dave taught me that bronze because I was digging through my paints all the time. Yeah. So each time I open one, I try to, oh, yeah, I try to, um, oh, watercolors, it's a brand. Oh, watercolors. That's the one Omni that somebody sent me recently. They sent me, and I was like, wow, it's $5.50. And, and they don't even have, there's, I feel like there should be a breaking point. You know, like if you spend over X, like I have a place I order stuff from in Europe and is if I spend uh, 250 euro did I get that right guys um then uh my shipping is free and we actually are collaborators with them for it's, it's a brand right this is the brand someone recently recommended to me um well they actually were asking me if I if I tried why is that not clicking not linky click why are you not clicky why are you not linky linky oh it doesn't want to play with me Wait, 
Oh, okay. It's ch wait. Hold on. Really? It's being it's being a butt. Hold on. Oh no, it's totally. Be it must be at Geek's desk. I'll I'll have him transfer that over in a minute. Okay, so I'm really I don't know though. I don't know. I I'm not really fond of it, Omni. I, I don't. I, I I just I don't know. The 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 gel thing is not my favorite. It really isn't, I'll be honest with you guys. Okay. Oh look. Oh every, oh the, the, the green and yellows are getting crazy. They're having babies over here. Okay. So that teal, we will set that aside. Um over here. I'm gonna need a second box now. Hang on. We're gonna put one on top and then we're gonna start loading that one. Let's get that out of there. Here's some more colors we haven't touched. And I wanna put all the greens, I wanna show you all the greens separately, okay? Because I, oh, you guys, everybody wants to know about this one. Light leather. Mm, I love to use this on skin. Ishin, you, I know we've already opened half of the paints already. So the, uh, the light leather's delicious caramel skin. Highlights, oh, I do love some caramel skin. Yeah, I know, right? Omni, let's uh, let's give it a little mix and then take a look on the palette over here. Uh, my girl Bronze is out there um, building some... Oh, my God, have you guys been to her Instagram and seen that shit? Seriously. Bronze, you've put some pictures of what you're working on from your Instagram in the chat, girl, and share that. I am serious, you guys. I am like, whoa. I think I'm going to commission her to freaking... Oh, it re it's... You know what, you guys? This is amazing skin color. Hold on, we have a wiener. Okay, we're setting this aside. This is called light leather. Okay, we are setting this aside, you guys. We have a skin winner. And you know, it doesn't matter to me what, what the bottle says. I'm not gonna listen to the bottle. Sorry, cephalopod, I don't listen to the bottle. I go with the eyeball. It's amazing. It's, it's a uh, abs absolute winner. I don't want Wavy's guy to end up with paint, so I'm moving him over here. I don't want him to get paint on him. Now, this little little guy, he can get paint on him because he doesn't have any paint. You want to come play in the paint? Yes. Yo, you guys, go look at that. The, go look at her. Um, She's doing some conversions. These little ladies. Oh, my God. They're amazing. Um, You know what? So I don't. Omni, I don't go by, um, I, I'm hoping, I don't go by what the bottle tells me it is. I go by what color I see. So right here, we are looking at a very, very good um, tan skin, Caucasian tan skin, or highlights on some uh, very, very deep skin, okay? So depending on, on which way you, you want to do that. Now, warm situation. So a warm environment, this of course, is not for deep skin in a cold environment with cold highlights. Okay, we, we, we got to keep that in mind. This is a this would be for a warm environment. It has a very very good um, also uh, desert. If you were doing terrain or basing in desert, really good um, dry dry grass color um, highlights on some darker uh, leathers. So it is it is light leather. I, I, it's, it's, I like it. I'm going to set it aside so we can take a look at um, what we may be able to do involving skin with that. Okay. I'm going to leave the teals out. You did, um, you did take some notes, Miss Bronze, right? You got a yellow. Yeah, it, yes, exactly. It's got some warm undertones. It does, and a little bit of that, um, a little bit of, let me, let me go get my, uh, wait, it's hard to do on a, you did, okay, because I have another green coming up that's looking pretty promising, um, let's get a little bit of that, uh, light leather, but I just want you to see, um, what a beautiful caramel skin color, oh my gosh. This would make, we have to put coats, okay? Glazing, glazing. So, uh, your base, you have options. You can tint your primer, okay? Or you can buy tinted primer from Badger. So, this is white primer. I'm gonna show you guys something. You wanna, you wanna see something? Omni, I'm gonna show you something really cool. 
Check this shit out. I am gonna blow your mind, mate. Let me find the... Here we go. Let's see, we got red. Where is it? There we go. There is... You are gonna love this. Okay. You have options here, okay? I'm gonna show you something, Omni. Pretty crazy. Okay. Ugh, this one's really gonna require a minute. I've had it sitting for a minute. Now, mind you, you they, they, these also come in smaller bottles. Paul John, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for the lurk, lurk, lurk my friend. This is so we don't have to spend so much time. Oh, okay, excellent. I'll see you in a bit then, Paul. So just so you guys know too, I should probably let you know that um, one of the things that a lot of people end up asking me is about not having an affiliate. If you guys come in here and you like being in here and you're learning things from being in here, and like what it is that we put out there and you'd like to help support our project, uh, I am supported through Patreon. And you guys can go there and I have different levels. Um, there's a general membership level. All of the levels come with different um, amenities. So you can, you, uh, on my Patreon is a general, uh, like, a, like a Twitch replacement where you can go and become part of our Patreon. And we have the most amazing thing taking place on our Patreon. We actually are building, uh, we have a monthly newsletter and a couple of blogs. And we are actually building a story about our ship. And every month in the newsletter, it goes out, a piece of it, to be continued. Did I just lose my glasses? What, 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 what? Did you guys see what I did with them? Oh. I also have a Kofi account, you guys, but I don't think it's active. You know, for people that just want to float through. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry, guys. For people that just want to float through. And I'm also getting a, um, an account for buy me a cup of coffee. I do drink a lot of coffee, but my doctor says it's within the proximity of what he recommends. All right. So first, we're going to take care of our Miss Bronze. Miss Bronze, this color is called Castaway Green. Now, unlike Elven Gray, Castaway Green, we're going to put... <laughs> Castaway Green, my dear. Putting it over here by the Elven Green. Castaway Green is... Uh, what we might refer to you know i'm going to tell you that it's weird it's dry this color elven gray is a cool sage it is a cool sage oh my god that is amazing that color is going to get used so much by me okay so castaway green is seafoam green guys for people who've been in the navy uh they're like yeah no don't want to have anything to do with that, okay? But uh, in pairing this up, it is um, a little warmer. Yes, uh, that I'm going to use so much of it. So I want to talk to you. I'm going to do a little painting, you know. Um, tomorrow is a partial studio day. And then I'd like to talk to you about uh, maybe what it will take to do some uh, bulk orders of certain colors that I'm fond of that uh, are unusual colors that people don't have in order to do some giveaways over here because I'm feeling pretty good so far like about your tones I'm feeling pretty good about the mixture um this castaway green is uh, definitely more green than teal bronze but I'm um, definitely in that family uh with the really really having fun with the teal there the 
the, I can actually, so the, something I want to tell you guys really weird about this um, Elven Gray. Oh, I'm really excited about this. So the other thing, I mean, there's so much I have to tell you guys. So we can't like do it all in one stream, but the, this Elven Gray is going to be amazing for non, uh, Elven, Elven Gray is going to be amazing for non-metallic metal. I'm dead serious. You guys, this is going to be amazing for non-metallic metal. I'm excited about that color. Okay, this one's a, a definite keeper in the olive, uh, olive, uh, not a mint green. So for those of you who know what seafoam green, green is, okay, not a mint green. This is a, a little bit more, um, it's a little warmer and a little less uh, ice creamy. You know, it has a little bit of, it's, it's sage. It's like, um, seafoam green is kind of like sage. So it's a warmer sage than this one would be, okay? I don't know if you can see with my lights. Let me see. Can you kind of see? How one leans, uh, just, it's so slight, you guys. One leans tiny, tiny bit towards yellow. The other leans tiny, tiny bit towards blue. Uh, you know what? I am really excited, really excited about those because I bought a whole set of Camaros just specifically for painting. Very good, Dragon. Very good. I love when somebody sees that, that you can see it. Okay, so that's why this one is cool and this one is warm, okay? So, but I'm keeping track of all of the teals so that I can help bronze expand. Yeah, well, I know you, you, I know you would. I'm, I'm very excited about those colors. And I feel like this color, the elven green is gray, the elven gray, I'm sorry, is gonna be a real dead ringer when it comes to doing non-metallic metal, but that's another day, another time. I'm still working on perfecting that. Now, back to Omni for just a second. I'm excited about those minty shades. So let's see. Uh, we've got a sun, kind of a uh, peachy. It's called No Sunscreen. Um, this is uh, like, a, like a peach, really peach, if it were flesh tone. More like a peach rose. Like, as in like a rose, a physical rose. This, I'm gonna paint some flowers with. Okay, let's see, we have, oh yeah. It's called Infected Yellow. This, you need this. Bronze, you so, you, I hope on your desk you have a, a lot of people might call it mustard. It's not quite yellow enough to really be mustard to me, but it is in the mustard family, okay. Um, the other thing is that I like to refer to it as yellow ochre. It is not specifically. So I wanna show you. So yellow ochre is an interesting color. Let us get a, like a plain, hang on, is it on my desk? There's yellow, there's the oxide. There's the gold, what, really? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, oh, okay. So wait, I really don't have an, I, I didn't know I didn't have an ochre in there. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm, the, your ochre is um, is specific to me. Let me see. Oh, I do. I was gonna say, I know I've got, okay. This is um, pure, pure pigment. So for those of you, when you get ready to do all the mixing, nobody's gonna mix your colors for you, okay? And you just wanna do all the mixing, as in you're gonna make all your own colors yourself, okay? or you're gonna fortify existing colors. So one thing I can say and one thing I'm gonna do with these colors, these, these uh, cuttlefish colors, is I'm gonna fortify them with the heavy, I mean, so much pigment. This is like a bottle of pigment, Chimera is. So I really am kind of digging the medium that they used in the, um, in the cuttlefish. Very inspiring to me. This is yellow ochre. This is like, there you go. It's a little bit more yellow in my light because mind you, it adds a little more white, my light does, okay? But people refer to it as mustard when it's in fashion. People um, sometimes call it like a golden yellow, brown yellow, it has a lot of names. Now, this one here is in this family, okay? A tiny bit more cream in it, definitely definitely a warm color and a good additive to make colors warm, okay? This is a really 
as, as strange as this may seem, bronze. It's a really good color to have if you want to warm up a subject. Okay? So when, when, you, when you take these colors and you mix them together, uh, maybe at the base where you're making something darker, more in the shadows, that you could create some warmth. Um, the tiniest bit of it will lean your color, will pull it towards warm. Uh, it's it's kind of safe because it's not as bright as yellow, so you don't end up with, uh, like, you know, bright. If, if that's not what you want, if you want to bring it kind of into a little bit of a, a pastel area, this does not make baby yellow when you mix it with white. It's, um, it's, I don't know, it's almost more of a, almost more of a tan. Let's go over here. Uh, I, I shall take a little white. Let me, uh, make sure we're there, right there. Okay. And we'll take a little bit of this. Okay, so this is one of the primary colors that I like to use in flesh. Okay, so you can get an antique. Look, you can warm this white up and you can get almost an antique as you come towards the highlight. Let's move back towards the color. Okay, so Let's pull that in for a minute and give you a focus. Really, really good color for base blonde hair, you guys. Super good color. Oni, was it Oni? Um, highlights on, again, on that really dark skin. If you're in a warm area and if it's not blue dark skin, what I want to show you let that focus back in. So it is. Uh, that's going to be like uh, definitely used up a lot. And we got some more reds. Now we're, we're lining up our reds. Uh, kiss and tell. Um, let's see. I'm thinking. Looks a little bit magenta, uh, leaning way heavily towards the red end of magenta. Uh, coral. Really, really deep pigmented coral. Very nice, very nice. Um, those Onis, the pictures you sent me, yes. Yes. Let us uh, do that for just a minute. Oh, I got to put a drop on. Hold on. We're going to go over here. And that's a really, because it's not baby pink. Like I, what the pictures, I didn't see like, you know, a baby pink. Let us take a look at, uh, let me, um, this is a, yeah, it's a, it's a really super deep. So coral was my grandmother's favorite color. That is as dark. That is a beautiful color. That's a really good color. Hey, good job on that, cephalopod. That is very unusual. I do not have a color. I do not have a color in my arsenal that is this color, you guys. I mix this color. So it is a pinkish red with the slightest kiss of orange. It is really beautiful. Let's go over here where we've got this pink and that color, um, bronze, and we're gonna mix those. Oh my gosh, look at this in-between color that this makes. So these, I'm seeing, you know, that project and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking pink. You know, we don't want it to be the, just the same old static, unattractive pink. And it's, there is ever so, oh my gosh, it's really good, it's really good. Oh, uh, let's make an orange out of that really quick, you guys. I have a feeling, let us get, um, Oh, you don't have their yellow out. Where is, here we go. Let's get uh, sunflower yellow. Hold on, bright yellow. Let's get bright yellow. Isn't that lovely? That is, it is lovely. And it is not, um, it's not like what you see everything as being pink, you know? Let, but I, I, I think I wanna try a little experiment here. Let's get some of this bright yellow over here. I wanna see, now the bright yellow is a smidgen, has a smidgen um, of white in you guys. So um, 
again, a bright yellow. Remember when I talked to you, light yellow. When I talk about light yellow, I do mean the yellows that have a smidgen of white in them. Bright yellow is when it is neon, okay? Or just a vibrant bright yellow. When we go golden yellows, that's when they've got just the smidgen, that kiss of orange in them. I don't know if I've been raided by this person before. Welcome the raiders, you guys. Pass out the rum. Pass out the rum. Sharing, sharing. Oh, Viva Mexico. Oh, I, uh, no, uh, no, no habla espanol. Muy poquito. Uh, como esta? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Viva Mexico. And welcome aboard. Do you speak English? We are taking the... Oh, muchas gracias. Okay, I am going... I mean, you know what? I'm not... I'm going to go with sunflower yellow, you guys. And here's the reason why. It is It is the warmer. It is the warmer color. I need... I want a lot... Oh, muchas gracias. I need to know, I need to learn how to say thank you for the follow, right? Habla English. Jello shots. Jello. They don't want jello shots. They want uh, cer cerveza, uh, tequila. Now that's what they want. They don't even want rum. They want cerveza or tequila. Los equis? Los Equis. That's my dad's favorite. We are, oh, we are painting myself. Well, I throw that all over myself. We are, oh, muchas gracias. We are playing with these paints today. Over on the palette here, I'm going to take this beautiful yellow. That's the sunflower yellow. Okay, so the sunflower yellow being a little warmer. Yeah, there we go. See, so those light oranges can oftentimes be a little cooler as if there's such thing as cool yellow. Yes, there is. Okay, and we will, over here, we're gonna mix that kind of coral color. I'm gonna move these guys here so that this one, right? And we're gonna, this is gonna be really interesting, you guys. So watch this really interesting color this will make. So, <clears throat> There's a color that roses are, and this is the one with the white, right? Um, but peach, just the color peach, like really like, you know, you know the color that is the red part on the peach? Thank you so much for that raid. There's your peach. Yes, okay, so we were talking about, right, so light yellow versus bright yellow. I will be ordering the AK, um, let me see, say this name, um, hmm, uh, Beast Follow? Vice, oh, oh, I'm gonna need phonetics. I'm gonna need phonetics. Okay, so we get a peach here. We're gonna take that same corally rose and we're gonna mix it with a little bit of um, that warmer. And look, you know that color that is on the peach? It's not the um, the light part, but the darker part. Is it, Alan is okay. Okay, Alan, Alan works. So we can get that, hold on, where did that, where did that baby go? Here she is. Yeah, so the AKs uh, are, are on my list for probably number next. Uh, definitely AK has some whites that I will be... Oh, look at that. Yeah. So this is a really... It's a different orange, you guys. So this is... This color, being as it is coral, the other thing is probably... Oh, let me see. We might... I don't, we may, we may just have, a, oh, we may have stumbled upon 
I don't know, but it looks like it could happen. We may have stumbled upon melon. Hold on, I'm gonna see. Oh, that's a little bit pink. Let me drag a little more yellow into it. Oh my god, you guys. Okay. There's one. Let us, let us both. We're gonna do both, okay? It's so nice to see everybody. Oh, I am Captain Mad Love, by the way. We are playing with paints. Um, lots of, uh, mucho paint. Hold on. Yeah, so oh, these are the boxes we've opened so far. We're refilling them, and I've got two more boxes on the floor. Uh, we are about to test the uh, blue-purple theory. Uh, you know, mixing the red and the blue, they don't ever make purple. So I do that with all the paints. That's an important ordeal. Right now, we actually are, um, I am making melon. And I'm pretty sure I'm about to get it over here. Um, I think it really depends on, that is with the, the bright white, the one that has a little bit of, um, Yep, there it is, there it is. This one has a little bit of white in it so you can get that melon, really good melon color. This one over here is a little bit too pink, but when you mix it with the um, the bright white, it's 100% melon. This one over here, you can get like a, a really nice coral actually by mixing the uh, yellow, that, that um, golden yellow into it. You get a really, a really good, like a really good coral. A uh, the yellow depend. I think depending on like how much pink you put in, versus how much yellow you put in, you can lean more towards that orangey coral or more towards that pinky coral. So that's that's a that's a nice family also. That that is really good. That is going to make also fantastic lipstick. You guys add a little bit of brown to that and um, to take the shock away from it. Fantastic lip tone. It's gonna be a great lip tone. That is Kiss and Tell. Be really good for lips. Really, really good for lips. Yes, you'll see I have like a lot of paint going on. Now, is Oni still out there? I wanna make sure to address this because Oni is painting dark skin. I wanna show you something that Badger makes, Oni. This is primer. This is primer. This is primer. This is the best color under yellow. So you guys like, for reals. Um, I don't like to paint yellow over black. I don't like to paint it over gray. I don't like to paint it over white. And then they came out with this. Oh, there's another one. <clears throat> Hold on. Even better if you're painting yellow. It's a primer, you guys. This is primer. So say you have like an army and you're painting them yellow. I really like the neutral for under skin in general. So this one is, oh, what is the color? This one called, this is pale mustard. Now, this, there's one more. Let me see. This is a uh, red, brown, okay, there we go. Okay, so in, in priming for your flesh, Oni, is it Oni, is it Omni or Oni? Darn it, um, so red-brown, neutral, uh, pale mustard, ebony. So these are all primers that I have that are the best under skin. So the ebony, if you're painting really, really deep, skin with a lot of browns in it, the ebony is like really your friend and you can adjust it to the tone or the depth that you want. What I like is that I don't have to fight with a whole lot of layers of um, paint because check this. So when you have a nice dark layer like this, much like, you know, black is too dark, but when you have a really good shadow, that's a nice deep brown and if you're using these colors that we are talking about right now uh, for glazing, this is really super helpful. So see, we've got that like that um, that light leather that we were using. We we're gonna build it up for like a light flesh tone. Well, you know, you don't have to spend that much time doing it. If instead, and 
and you take your guys to so see how the white shows through right if that was black it would show through if it was gray you'd have a lot of layers to go so not only blocking in your base colors but also thank you very much for that follow uh not just a base color but what if your primer was a color okay now if your primer is a color now that whole area being covered watch what happens when i bring that leather after that dries we'll bring that leather back and we'll go over that this is a really nice start to a dark complexion and it's not black in the background it's not gray in the background and it's not white you have to build a lot on those colors or block a base color well why block a base color if your primer is already a base color right and that's one of the ways i was tinting my primer for a long time before i started uh using these i would t i and i still to this day i will tint primer i do i just i get i am a huge fan of the steinal res primer i swear by it i scrub every miniature before i paint it with alcohol and then primer it but it gets a really it gets a it gets the first bath in the dawn dish soap it dries overnight and then it gets another bath in at least 70 percent alcohol so that removes a lot of the problem all right so in doing that um and you're doing a dark complexion oni you can take colors like that light leather and paint over this and mind you because this paint is designed for glazing it creates a filter and so one layer here is what i'm looking at we're already a kind of caramel skin or a tan skin you can mix it different colors however you like the point is is that we're not fighting right so here being we based it with the same color when you start going over a skin tone sometimes it gets a little bit peach now here is it dry yep we've got that neutral color and watch what happens like the neutral is one of my favorites to work with on caucasian skin even some of the darker complexions i'm a big fan of uh, caramel skin for real baby d will tell you all about that okay now the difference between the two when i'm looking at it is with the glazed paint you still are going to need to get some more layers of that in there to get it where you want it whereas when you base it with a primer that is in the family you end up with a completely different experience notice how yellow that looks and how this does not and this is the base oh uh, so we'll come back over here and go over this uh darker complexion but we're just going to go over one side like maybe we're highlighting okay and you just build that highlight and you just take a little bit of now bone a bone color is a good color to mix with your skin tones when you're bringing highlights up um i mix a lot of mine from scratch with the chimeras oh you you go right ahead miss bronze you go i mean go right ahead but you'll notice that the watch this so we have the two layers but then we have primer and one layer but now let's come in here and glaze on another layer on that and you are you will see i'm going to bring it right up to the camera for you this is just talking about the primer now we've glazed a couple of layers of that on there on the bottom and you are going to see how much smoother the bottom one is than the one above it and then we're working on the layers on the dark one the other thing you can do is prime with the neutral mix it with the dark the tone you want it and then come in with the 100 percent dark and put it in your shadows save yourself a whole lot of time so this guy was going to get some glow on his shoulders we had to address that but we still have but i really am just dying to see what color this is now this is in my family of favorites oh yeah oh yeah 
Well, because we've got a magenta going on over here. Let's see. Let's see. It is definitely mauve. Oh, it's deliciously good. It's a good mauve. It's not too brown. That's always a plus. So this is Slanesh skin, guys. So we got some goodies for Slanesh skin. Bruised Ego, this is called. Let's focus in for you guys so you guys can see too. There we go. There we go. Bruised Ego. This is a, a kind of an egg. What, you know, painting a wall. Going into Lowe's, they'd refer to this as, a, as an eggplant. Uh, my experience with eggplants is they're a little bit more purple, but it's kind of in the eggplant family. Okay, uh, definitely a deep mauve when we're talking like mixing your oil paints or, or mixing your colors. Definitely a deep mauve. And you could probably cool it off with a little blue or warm it up with a little um, uh, brown. I, I, I don't know what would happen if we mixed yellow in that. That might be really interesting. But we still got two more boxes to go. What have we got in them? We've got... Some pinks. Oop, we've got a red. A red in this one. And there, Nightingale Purple. Uh, if that color is true, then that's going to be another one of the paints we got to order and get on some desks. I can see that's, that's one of my favorites. I'm a pretty big fan of some specific weird colors that I use a lot. With the Necrons, you know, a lot of greens. Um, and I'm always using a lot of yellows to mix. Uh, let's uh, back that up a little bit for you guys so you can see the whole palette. Hold on. Here we go. All right. It's looking good. Oh, there we go. This is what we were looking for, our bone to put in our highlights. Now, that's a light leather I was using for skin there a little little bit. So this is a, a, a moon glow, a bone, ivory white. Um, not, not, not vanilla. Doesn't have the yellow that vanilla has. More along the tone of ivory um definitely warm definitely in the warm family okay good really deliciously good okay notice some um, right cool warm and uh the third one that i've got where, 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 where did you go well i had the third one um this is the uh oh this is white knight no this is the um the white knight is oh and the cap is painted uh, I can't see that my white cap is painted. Okay, so you can see those guys. This got a little bit of like a tan to it, okay? But not that creamy yellow kind of like vanilla has, but really, really, really good. Warm white. It's definitely, um, now that's the moon glow. It's definitely antique white. I'm going to say, um, let's see, this is Milk Bottle Cream. We do need to give them a really good mix, okay, guys? A really good mix. Um, uh, like I said, I don't keep the, the, the little... I'm going to put these side by side, and I'm going to tell you what's up. Ever. Ever so slightly. It is so it's so slight so milk bottle cream has the smallest amount of peach in it I want to say it's really pretty it is yeah it is it is it almost has, it's, uh, it's like it's not vanilla, but and it's not antique white. It's really a beautiful color. The um, Moon Glow, everybody knows bone really well, and the Moon Glow definitely has that kind of um, bone white feel to it. Ever so slightly, gosh, I want to say, is, is Cephalopod still out there? Yeah, it is, God, it is so slight. This, would, this one, Milk Bottle Cream, really good skin highlight for, like, for all skin types. I mean, well, unless they're blue. You are. Okay, so I know you know, I, I know, except so the moon glow ever, and I do mean like the tiniest, tiniest bit green and um, milk bottle cream, so slight. Peach? Am I on? 
My lighting is a little off in my studio, so I'm trying to see how on I'm. I'm on, yes! Good, okay. So there you go. So for like doing old skeletons, bones, things like that, moon glow, right? Highlights on, on things like that. This milk bottle cream, you guys, super nice highlight for flesh tones, uh, Caucasian flesh tones, even some of your brown tones, highlights on leather. Um, uh, oh, doing a white army, either one of these, doing a white army. You mix a wee bit of white into this, okay? Tiny, just to make it a little more white. And you use some of this in the shadows with a, with a wee bit of whatever color you're going into the shadows with, right? And then bring it up to that bright, crisp white highlight. Simplify white, okay? Yeah, I can, oh, they're really, though they're, they are worlds apart, but ever so similar. But really, um, the Moon Glow would definitely be your colder off-white, and the Milk Bottle Cream would definitely be your um, warmer off-white. Okay, and then you can take a white. So like, let's say you wanted to make Moon Glow more white. I would recommend the one, oof, the white that has the little tiny, tiny bit of gray in it. What was that one, Cephalopod? I think that Moon Glow would mix well with that to um, bring it up. I forgot which one that was. Hold on, you guys. I have, now I have so many pins, so many pins. <gasps> It's too good to be true. Oh, and then there's Colonial White. Yeah, and that's so good. It's so good. For, it's really, really good to have, you guys, warm white and cool white. It, re it really is. And you can cool colors off and warm them up, but sometimes they don't always do what you want. This is excellent. Okay. Then we have Colonial White. Here's our Vanilla yeah here's our vanilla okay yeah they do i mean really it's it's for a lot of people colonial has a touch of yep yep so the colonial mm, it's 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 amazing the colonial is um let me see about that for a second so the colonial wow Wow, 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 wow. It's really great. You guys, oh, I, oh, I'm so happy there's so many whites in here. Okay, you guys, the Colonial is, yeah, it, it would, it, it does. I can see that. I can see that. But what I really see in it is the Colonial is really a good vanilla. For real, Cephalopod, the, the Colonial is a, a, that, um, yeah, it's it's got a really good vanilla balance. It's not too yellow, which I really like about it. So that vanilla might be the colonial, you guys. And the um, that milk bottle cream, that's the one uh, to use if, like, I mean, any one of them would work. But I, that milk bottle cream right there is that would be in my um, skin family right there all the time. And that moon glow, like, if you're doing. Um, paler skins maybe you're going with a blue skin but i will tell you right now that the um the moon glow is definitely going to be mixed in the green for my orc skin my 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 uh my orky boys up chuck green mm, that one needs a good mix those pigments are thick in that one that's good yeehaw rawhide another mustard kind of kind of like a mustardy like color, right? Really good. Um, infected yellow was the other one. Uh, this one's a little cooler. You can kind of see it, a little cooler. The variances of the uh, the variables in the paint and the variances in them are really nice, you guys. Like, I think that they make, it makes a lot, a lot of sense. Let me get that little neck brace off there. Yeah, this one. Yeah, and then when they dry, yeehaw! It's yeehaw rawhide. Yeah, that's what it's called, yeehaw rawhide. That's what it said. Now let us. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look at them while they are. Well, yep, yeah. So, the yeehaw rawhide, ever so slightly. 
to the eye to me a little bit of a green a little bit of green and you be sure cephalopod that you correct me if i am wrong because it will also help me if my lighting is wrong here you have a friend named chuck i love it i love it yeah that's what we're doing too we're compiling the names for the paints from the community i love it i love it and yeah it ever and it's slight it's slight the rawhide is slight and a little golden yellow for the infected yellow is a little little uh little golden it's a little golden this one's slightly this would be really really good ooky gooky in your nurgles it's has just you wouldn't even have to mix that touch of green into it all right and another green this is called elder druid green and it is wonderful hunter green for anybody who uh knows um you know like decorating etc of the home yep uh although although uh also could yeah very very hunter forest forest it's forest sorry forest green yeah mm -hmm. so good for with, with a slight olive twist on it so really really good for um the you know if you're doing an all something olive um maybe painting a tank would be really good for the darker portions i like that uh valley girl pink oh don't get me started every once in a while i break into valley talk and geek laughs his ass off at me every once in a while lived out there for a while okay let's see and put this box out all right so we've got another orange uh kind of in the um orange brown family which is which is which is really good we we like that let's see is this this is okay we do have the copper i haven't found the silver yet so the lovely demon that is looking like a color that is probably going to be in that family of mine of the odd this is similar but darker than arctic the arctic uh arctic white hey drax uh, no i there it uh this is um uh, the cuttlefish the uh, you know i should put a one of the boxes there wait well you can't hold on let me take the, uh, this is the Cuttlefish Paint Drax, and they did, I bought the Fuller Monty, so it did come with metallics, it did. And uh, we are opening all the colors, we're testing a few for some uh, uh, some ideas, and um, we did a tiny, tiny bit of painting, but mostly we've been playing with the paint today, as you can see over there on my palette. Let me take this off. And then that way we can use the box as a background and then people can see what it is i well see damn it it still does it darn it hold on there we go i am lining up so it does have metallics and yes i am 100 percent 100 percent going to test them to see if they will hold up to the metallic rubbing test so let us pull all these out because we got a, a spare box here and then that way that box can kind of Oh, look, I got a bunch of brown. Oh, brown, 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 brown. Yes, and also we have to do the um, the blue and red trick to see if, because most paints don't, most all paints won't, won't do purple. So we're going to see if these do. There we go. Oh, and we can, there we go. Now you guys can see what it is. Okay. So we've got another green to put in our green family. We are collecting the greens so we can look at all the greens. And... Ooh, what is this? Mummy dust. Everybody wants to know what that is. What is that? Bullet Betty. I want to know what that is. Mmm, dead scale. That's another olive. Okay, the green. Remember, lean on green. How are you doing, Drax? How are you doing? We were on Valley Girl Pink. Oh, and then look at all these browns. You guys, there's so many good um, peachy flesh colors and browns and brown oranges a uh, leather colors yeah totally oh this looks like a the crash is the crash metallic it is isn't it it's it's a uh, red red bronze and there's the okay and 
A uh, Five Sisters Radiant Platinum, is that the silver or is that a metallic medium? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Oh, this one? The Crash is named after Dr. Rhino. Aw. Let's see. And these are, okay. This is, so yeah, so we've got like Peachy Keen. And uh, this is called Fried, Ad Fried Adventurer. A little bit of sunburn there. Toasty skin. A little bit of tan there. Uh, mostly, um, mostly colors that you would use uh, for highlights for darker skin or for medium to Caucasian skin. Buckskin is a nice uh, red-orange leather color. Let's see. The deep. That looks like a good one. Let's take a look at that. Let's flip the palette, guys. Let's flip the palette so we got a clean area. Let's also put the... I want to take your neck ring off. Oh, wait. Wait, are you open? Did I open one already? Oh, no. Okay. Hmm. Well, these go on really good. Okay, there we go. Got to pull up. I'm going to take the neck ring off to make sure that my beakers... I don't like my beakers to dry out. Okay, this is the black, right? I'm going to probably have to order another black if that black works out. And the Warlock Purple, we put that out. That was a pretty good purple. Uh, like I said, along the lines of um, Royal Purple by Vallejo, for folks who know that one. Uh, but not quite as much red in it. All right, let's see. Mummy Dust. We're going to mix up Mummy Dust and uh, Valley Girl Pink. And wait, I think that this Nightingale Purple might be a thing. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. So yeah, we are playing, we are down to the last of it. We've done pretty, pretty good. I actually found a minty green, it's actually called Minty Shake. There it is. Bronze, we actually do have a mint in here. Upchuck green, you guys, is a pretty nice, slightly pastel green. Looks pretty promising. We need a lot of green. Oh, yeah, I probably should leave that one out. Oh, we need more people. We need more green and more purple. There's the gold. How many metallic paints am I looking for, Cephalopod? Oh, there's gunmetal. What's the total number of metallics in the set? There's the mummy. Safety caps. Oh, safety caps. Yeah. That, no, that's good, though. You got to pull up on them. On, on the medium, you guys, you have to pull up on the cap and then twist. Okay, let's see. And then the nightingale purple. I'm interested in that. Looks like we could have a magenta on our hands. Oh, wait, what is this? Oh, that looks good, too. That one's been sitting for a minute, my friend. I can't quite get it to shake. Even on that powerful mixer. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So, um, there's the harlot red. Uh, let's see. I shall tell you which ones I have. I have plumbers. Oh, wait. Nope. Never mind. One fell off the back. Okay. I missed the part where uh, the Five Sisters Radiant Platinum, that is the silver. Or is that because I noticed so we have we have copper, we have bronze, we have gold, we have a reddish cop a reddish copper, a gunmetal, and then I would assume that this would be silver, but it's looking very white. And usually the mediums. Give them a good shake, guys. Okay, that harlot, I don't think Harlot Red is going to be the one that makes the purple at all. Uh, harlot Red is uh, magenta. 
Oh, are we going to flip the palette? Sorry, guys. Scarlet Red is in the magenta family, everybody. Let's see. We're going to put it right here. Yep. Um. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Oh, it's good. So Harlot Red is a... Uh, it, it, it definitely is magenta. It is is it is the red spec the the red spectrum of magenta and 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 really bright. Think of it as a super right. Okay, right. So mixing that with the gunmetal, I am assuming will then make the steel color. That's it. That's a guess. Okay. Yeah, harlot red, amazing. Definitely magenta. Definitely a cool color. Let's see. We have the um, Valley Girl Pink. Or just use Dwarven Steel. Wait. Oh, that's... Okay. Well, that's because that was... Oh, okay. So that's the one that I'm missing then. Yep. Uh, somebody else snuck in there and tried to be a... Um... Ha! Your mixer... Your mixer balls are metal, aren't they? My uh, magnetic, <laughs> my magnetic handle is sticking to your bottle. Okay, Valley Girl Pink, you guys, Barbie Pink. Yep, Barbie Pink. Great highlight for the magenta. Um, way to the pink, the pink, and but will I? I guarantee you, right there, that. Uh, let's uh, pull a little of that this way. Uh, I think that this is something that um, Bronze would like for her collection. Yep, there we go. Mm, that's that's really good. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's delicious. Very delicious. That's beautiful. Yep. But it's not pasty Barbie pink. So because the colors I think are designed for glazing, there's not a whole lot of even pasty going on anywhere. Which is really nice. Oh, you guys wanted to see mummy dust. Everybody wants to see mummy dust. Let's see. Ooh. Okay, so a white, um, a, a tan, tacky. Uh, mm -hmm. Not technically khaki. Definitely a bone color. Yeah, definitely a bone color, you guys. Uh, definitely, yeah, it's, uh, so got a little excited here. We might have to paint that on something. Uh, definitely suited for skeletons, dry grass, uh, highlights on, um, uh, so, it has a little bit of green in it. And that for sure gonna mix really well with like hold the Nurgle idea, gonna mix really well when you're making, um, when you are making highlights and you have olive complexion. So really, uh, oh, I think you could probably use this very well as highlights on orc skin. Definitely mixing with green to create, you know me, I like the albino orc. Uh, per, a really good albino orc skin. This this one, that's mummy dust, by the way. Uh, mixing with an olive green. So it is uh, definitely, if you were to just really elevate olive green using a very proper uh, off-white in a warm family. Yeah. Really, really good. I, I can see that making, um, can you see the little bit of green in it? You guys can see that green right here, hold on. Let's put, um, one of the ways to really be able to see that is to put like blue up next to it, or actually, let's try red. Oh, go, oh, wait, wait a minute. Okay, so um, also, some colors have this, that's trippy. Uh, so this color, this is gonna be one I need more bottles of. So this color, is a, a chameleon, meaning not meaning that it has color shift. Some colors are a chameleon. Nice mix. Nice, really nice mix, cephalopod. That's really nice. Okay, so 
it's not going to go all the way over to cold, but there we go. It doesn't, it, it's not going to go all the way over to cold, but anything that is even any color that was slightly in a warm family, it can, and I don't mean complimentary like they don't get along. I mean complimentary like it likes it. it yeah, that's very interesting. That's really cool. That's really cool. So as long as whatever color it is, is even slightly leaning towards warm. Wow, this would be a good color to put, um, I'll paint something this color. That's trippy. See that? Okay, so <laughs> you can paint this color. Some of these have this interesting neutral effect. So it's a very, it's a very neutral color. And but it, neutral, but leaning towards warm. Now there are some blacks that are like this. And so you can take a color and put it up next to that black and it will tell you, see how they just, oh, my lights are killing it. It will tell you, that black will tell you like if the black were neutral black, it would tell on whatever color was confusing you. So say you like couldn't tell if a lighter color was cold or warm, uh, you can use neutral black if you have one and it will it will tell on the color because suddenly it just won't look good together interesting oh here's that bone color i was talking about so the bone white um uh, it was really close to because you guys have bone white everybody goes through a lot of bone white so uh bone white is a little bit darker that colonial white and bone white although colonial has a, is, is a little bit colder well let's try um no nope. bone has an ever so slight more tan in it than a lot of other whites but this is a this is going to be a really solid color for painting a lot of stuff you guys you're gonna this this is like a, a need a need uh that would be the mummy dust so, um, Bullet Betty, I was going to take a look at that. I got this high powered mixer and I'm still forgetting. And, and then we've got these two kind of mint greens, uh, Upchuck Green and uh, Minty Shake. I'm really excited about the Minty Shake. Minty Shake is super cool, as in a cool color, really good. And um, Upchuck Green is a little bit more towards the warm family. So it seems like the balance is really good, you guys. Um, the variety is really strong. This is the upchuck green, right? Yeah, upchuck green. So upchuck green is um, kind of sort of a, a mint green, a little more in the warm family. So it's more along a pastel, um, I'd like to say a pastel lime green almost. It's uh, very vibrant, really vibrant. So this is not like the more the more muted colors that I have in the green family, but a very vibrant green. It's very beautiful. I like that one, Upchuck Green. It doesn't sound very good, but it really is quite pretty. Now we're gonna take a look at the, uh, the mint shake. Oh yes, oh, she will be thrilled. This is true, truly wonderful mint, you guys. Now, the thing with the mint, uh-oh, uh-oh, hold on. Oh, that's how I took the, um, the, uh, thumb out on my glove. I was wondering what I had done today. Hang on, guys. One of the lids is, uh, trying to keep its neck ring. There we go. Okay. So one of the things I really enjoy about a minty green when I get a good one is uh okay hold on i didn't mix that good enough that's all my bad let's just pick that up and you really want to give these a good mix you guys the um the medium in them especially if they've been sitting it tends to separate and so you want to make sure you get a really good mix on so that you're not squirting all of your clear medium out of your paint and then keeping all of the um the pigment behind so that your paint has the proper consistency that you need for painting 
So somehow I missed the silver. What did he call the silver? Um, dwarven something. Bull flesh, teddy bear blue, lily. I literally, wait a minute. I went through every paint. Is there any more in here? Nope, that's all the blue. Sunset ghoul, teddy, lily. These are the last out of that box. I already did that one. Raw meat. Um, yeah. It's a dwarven something. Dwarven steel. Oh, it should, it should have been in set one. Right, well, hold on. 51st shade. Got it. And I was like, how did I miss one? I thought it was a gray. We were putting the grays, we were putting the grays away. Wool flesh is gonna go in the greens. And we're gonna put that one in there. That's like a nice, they got a nice brick red. I guess I shouldn't skip any of those because you know, you wanna know that. All right, so back to this minty shade. Into a cauldron. What'd you say? I was talking to the crazy lady in the box. The other crazy lady. Oh, the other crazy lady, okay. All right, so make some really, really good, you guys. Okay, there you go. So when, when, you, when you put your paint out, start squirting the paint out and you see clear, little clear striations, stop, mix more, okay? When the paint comes out, it should look smooth. Your color should look smooth. Uh, otherwise, you will be squirting out your medium. And if you're glazing, that's really important uh, to get it really mixed in good because otherwise what you end up with is, is, is not a happy place. Uh, because glazing becomes a difficult world. This mint is delicious. I like, let me see. I'm gonna make a comparison because does anybody else have uh, mint by any other company? I want all the mints by all the company companies. I tire of mixing it. If anybody has mint by any companies, please private message me who makes a mint. And I mean, I really mean mint now. I don't, don't mean like, you know, I mean mint this. So it looks somewhere in the area of, uh... okay, you win. You win, okay? So that having been said, I absolutely love bright pale green, otherwise known as mint. I bought the entire set just for this color when this came out. This one and uh, um, uh, something plum, something, hang on, hang on. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, it was, it was the mint green and this. Okay. And we're going to go, we're, and we're going to backtrack on this. So, um, although that's going to make a really good base because it's more of a, uh, a really thick paint, not a, not a, not a glazing paint at all. Okay. Um, I mean, yes, you, it's, what I mean is, okay, take that back, you guys. I don't mean you can't glaze with Procryl. What I mean is, is that in the bottle, when you just put it right out on the on the palette and then you start painting with it, um, you, you, you need to thin it for, for glazing, add some medium of, of some sort. I didn't mean you couldn't glaze with it. Okay, but um, that having been said, what Procryl does that I love, not only is the airbrush action that I get from it, but uh, when I put the color on, it's like, it's just got this amazing coverage. And so I really like to use it a lot for, for base, base colors, okay? But now what I'm gonna do, because mint green and periwinkle are my two most sought after colors, all right? So that is, um, they are not labeled these colors. This is faded ultramarine, okay? But periwinkle is one of those colors that I am just constantly seeking. I mix it. Uh, when we get our paints designed, I will have proper periwinkle. <laughs> and I will tell you, so it's such a difficult, okay, so uh, waste management is a lighter periwinkle. The 
Faded Ultramarine is a dark, you see them over there? There they are. Now, my camera really does make the um, Pro Krill look, that is not what you guys see, that is so not Periwinkle. Don't even think that. That is not the color that is. I mean, I mean, my lights are messing that color up, totally. They're not so much messing this one up, but yeah, it's, a it's way more gray. However, what I'm going to test, is that maybe in a perfect world? Oh my God! In this, oh yeah. So now that makes me very happy. Now on the subject of the mint green, what I am pleased about is that yours has so much green to it. So here we have different d different mint greens, um, and my my camera is doing pretty good with those greens. So you can see this one over here has a little bit more blue in it and this one over here has a little bit leans a little bit more towards the yellow and I really like that mint color so I'm pleased with that now let's see let's uh and and and, and, and the mixture when it plays very very well with other paints and look and you can get this really nice color in between right they play well together we'll just leave them set there for a second just to see if there's any separation or anything like that I don't think there will be. We haven't had any problems. We'll see. And then uh, we shook up the Nightingale Purple. Uh, oh, some more Slanesh tones. You guys are going to be happy about that. Yep, that's another good Slanesh tone. Hopefully for those of you guys that are like into the Slanesh or keeping notes on that. I do want to be famous. Right now. Give me the money. Let me be famous. I'm going to be famous. Famous painter. Okay. So, um... A, uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, I want to say puce, but I know it's not puce. Okay, so this here, it's like lavender, but more pink. So it's, 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 it's a really good solid slanesh color. In fact, I'm going to put that in the pile for the Oni colors, um, for Miss Bronze, just in case. Bullet Betty. Also, there's this one here, you guys, called Raw Meat. No, I kid you not. It's called Raw Meat. You gotta love it. It is... Looks like coral, um... Orange, more of an orange coral. There's one here called Lily Dragon Purple. Orangish pink. Yes, a coral which is really cool. Now we don't, you know this color isn't that easy to find, by the way, cephalopod. Uh, my grandmother's, and, and I, I just have a feeling that if we put this on the palette and we add the tiniest, tiniest bit of a white, we're gonna get a beautiful melon from it. So it's, it's, um, it is, it's an orangish pink. It can, it can lean into the coral family, but also you guys, definitely the, uh... oh, it's a metallic, okay. Well, yeah, that one, okay, so you guys, the um, the metallics definitely need some really super good mixing time, which is good, which is really, really good. When you gotta mix your metallics a lot, that generally means there's a lot of metallic in it, and I like a lot of metallic. Metallics will not rub without a lot of metallic in them. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is the raw meat. I'm very curious about this. Yes, so raw meat is either, I got a couple of these lids that are a little bit finicky. Hang on, not the lids, but the collars. They don't want to give up the collar. Oops. Okay, the raw meat is actually so beautiful. One would think that name, um, very coral, but no, more towards melon, more towards melon even. Look at that. It's a very... It is like a pinkish, really pretty. My grandma loved this color. So, um, on the orange side of coral, definitely a deep melon. So, like, let's uh, let's find our white. We were using white night. That was the um, cooler of the whites. Now, what we could do we could do in a perfect world so we could like come over here and see um not the colonial um the milk bottle green 
Let's put a little of that out because it's um, it's a really warm off-white. And we could take that. Let's move that over here right by that um, raw meat. And let's just make us a beautiful, beautiful melon. Yeah, look at that. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's going to make it. That is really, really nice, you guys. Yep. A uh, good sunset color, by the way. Uh, there is vermilion in that. Um, I am certain of it. Vermilion being literally my, literally my single favorite. I think above all colors, I worship vermilion. I mean, really magenta is like my favorite to work with and purple, um, but vermilion is, I don't know, I have a thing for vermilion. So there's actually, wait a minute now, wouldn't that mean that Lily, wait, what did you say was, was a uh, dark, oh, wait, wait, what did you say? Oh, then, oh, there we go. Okay, so that's the eight metallics. Okay, there we go. Now I've, I had opened, this is similar to Arctic White by, um, Vallejo, you guys, but not exactly. Um, more pigment of the lavender in it. Uh, wait, she has a little little thing, a little little problem with her nipple. I'm just gonna cut the end off there. Oh, that sounded terrible. I'm sorry, you guys. But the, I meant dropper. I meant dropper. Okay, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna. Yep. That. Okay. So uh, these two babies, uh, nightingale purple and lovely demon, uh, nightingale purple, more red, lavender, lovely demon, very pastel lavender, okay? Uh, these two, waste management and lovely demon are beautiful friends, absolutely. They love to go together, they date regularly, it's amazing. These two, Elven Gray and Lovely Demon. Mm. Solid pastel. Um, complimentary. Powerful right there. And they're and they're actually pastels. So here we have a, this is very, very slaneshi. Got a very you know, uh, it's uh, ever ever so slightly on the upside of your lavender. So like uh, in this hair here. That, that's gonna make like a really a really good highlight in, in this plum-like hair, make really good highlight. Uh, also giving a cool feel, when you've got a little bit of a warm, so there's a little bit of cool feel, let's see. This, the, what have we got here? A white knight, I'm so, yeah, I'm gonna need to order, let me see, um, I'm gonna need to order uh, more white knight, for sure, I will definitely send you. And um, I'm looking, honestly, the colors I think I might like to buy in bulk and be, uh, giving away to people are these really odd pastel colors because these are very powerful. I don't know that enough people um, can uh, really appreciate the power of some of the um, what what may be referred to as 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 pastel colors. I mean, I do. I'm 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 a huge fan. And this brick and red is looking pretty good. Has a little bit of an iron oxide sort of a feel to it. Teddy bear blue is a really, really good ultramarine blue. The lighter of the ultramarine blues. There we go, I can hear the ball moving. So good news, you guys, is that um, there's a lot of pigment in these paints because, um, you know, the balls are sticking. Wait, well, wouldn't, wait a minute, then wouldn't that make nine, nine, um, Metallics. So I've got Dwarven Steel, Bullet Betty, uh, Five Sisters, Gun Metal, Genie Gold, Plumber's Copper, Third Place Bronze, Shipwreck, and The Crash. Is Shipwreck Metallic? Yeah, did I? So that's nine. That's actually nine. Oh yeah. Very, very slaneshy, you guys. So we're another one here. Here we go. Okay. Um, 
a lavender magenta. Otherwise uh, referred to by many people as a violet, that would be sunset violet. Oh, look at that. Even the word violet is on it. Okay. Um, yeah, so this guy and this guy like each other a lot. Nightingale purple, sunset violet, very slaneshy, super good mixy. Uh, no. Uh, Genie Gold. I have Genie Gold. <gasps> uh, yeah, no. There's no, no, nope. Eldorado Gold. <gasps> you missed one. No. Yeah, no, it's, and it's not. It's actually not here. That one, that one. Um, now I will, I of course will go back through, go back to the, the base box. Yeah, and I know we dumped out a bunch of browns, but the metallic, uh, that's light leather. Hold on. Nope, to the toasty skin. Yep. And those are all the greens there and the ghoul flesh. <gasps> oh, whatever shall I do with you? Okay, so, yeah, we liked those. Those were very slaneshy feeling. And then let's see, we've got, um, and these are, let's just move all these over and then that way too I can take a count. Just to make sure. And I'm gonna put all these little pastel -y guys Right here, these are pretty trippy. I'm really digging those, okay. Set four, Eldorado's and set... Wait, did I go through all the sets? Okay, hold on. Two, three, six, five. One two, and four, yes. Okay, so I have MPT'd. Hold on, let me check and, and just make sure any of these browns, I see Kevin. Because a brown could have got mistaken. Soft serve brown. I stepped in it brown. That's all the browns. I want to put the. That's okay. I'll spank you later. All right. Let's see. Um... Oh, you know what? They fit so nicely in nice rows in these little boxes. And I didn't notice that before. Here's how we can tell. Hang on, guys. Gotta, gotta, gotta do a head count just to make sure. Okay, and then we've got so we've got all. No, put the whites there. I don't want to lose track of these pastels because I just know that this is going to be cool for that Oni project that Bronze is working on. So I want to keep track of those colors. Ninety-six. <laughs> okay. So, I make sure. Oh wait. But there's four ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. So there's one hundred models here. Okay. And make sure I didn't paint. I, I don't think I counted any extra um, bottles that weren't these. Okay. So we were, wait, we were keeping, keeping the metallics because we're going to do just do some metallic rubbing. Right. And we're going to try. Um, so some of these are like really powerfully pigmented. 
a uh, lily dragon purple and chromancer purple are just packed and also the i'm a brick i'm brick and red like really packed Wow. So what you guys are gonna need to do definitely is um, get out your mixer and or invite some folks over, buy some beer and then sit around and do some uh, mixing. I'm reminding you, take out the dog. Did she get some chow? Not yet. Oh, I'm reminding you. Okay, I'm gonna take, take a look at them. I'm brick and red. Then we are, I'm gonna take a quick bio, you guys, and I am 100% coming back here to uh, slap some paint around, I think. Like, mix some painty paint. Inky wants to be our test subject, he said. But I'm thinking that this might be, um, A good deal if we can do like a bulk thing and give some of these away would you guys be interested in that I mean everybody's always interested in paint right Tammy. I'm gonna talk to uh... Wow this one is just like not cooperating let's see that is a dry lily dragon purple hold on let me strap the Lily Dragon Purple on my other... Wait a minute. My Weird Sideways Mixer? Oh, no. Not hooked up anymore. Okay, well. Uh, Weird Sideways Mixer. I put it over somewhere. I put it in the place and the thing. I don't remember what I did with it. I think it was falling all over the place. And I didn't know. Oh, it was here then. And what is in this box? Uh, and then Heroes. Oh. Through protein and stuff. I, wait. Oh, okay. I'm like, what? The, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. These are our trophies and, 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 and things. Okay. Yeah, this one's uh, really got some stuff going on here. Really, really good. Nope, that's not, not the bottle. I don't get excited. I wasn't offering to give away any of these paints. I'm just saying. Okay. So, this Dragon Lily Purple. Oh, okay, so, wait a minute. Now, we had uh, over here, right over there by Inky, um, we had a, uh, so, yeah, this is this is more of a, okay, so, uh, mauve is, uh, the, the, the mauve is an interesting color. So, mauve comes in like a, a more lavender. It's a, like a sage lavender. Uh, mauve comes in more lavender hues it comes in more red hues it comes in more brown hues so this is more of what we would what we would call um a a lavender dragon lily purple is like a lavender mauve now here's the really amazing thing about this okay especially you guys that this is a glaze a glazing styled paint okay this is amazing for skin lily dragon purple in your shot glazed into your shadows uh, makes this this color and um, uh, uh, I'll see if we, we find a blue but really great veins um, in in the in the recesses and up in the cracks by where there might be veins bruises these two colors over here really important for bruising okay so that and now wait now that other one is hold on hold on the other one actually I did not put it on the top or I did actually it's called bruised ego you guys can remember that, right? Let me make sure. Yeah, so Bruised Ego and Lily Dragon Purple are primary bruise colors. I'm, I'm letting you guys know uh, because you never know. You might need to make a bruise. Okay, oh, good. Okay, so we need another box. All right. Um, let's see. We're looking at the um, Romancer Purple now. 
We're also gonna look at this teddy bear blue, and then we are gonna try the purple routine. No, first we're gonna look at all the greens, right? Okay, and pull all these guys forward here. We're gonna look at all of our greens, because remember, lean on green, we need a lot of green. Uh, people need more green than they think they do. Green is uh, underappreciated when it comes to all the things that it does. But we're gonna kind of start focusing a little bit more uh, here. Oh, I knew it. Okay, this one's going on a list. Yeah. Oh, baby, I had a feeling about you. Mm mm. <gasps> Woo! You guys. Sex appeal. Mm. Oh, I gotta get some of that freaking. I'm gonna write him about getting that. Okay. Um, this one truly, uh, you know, maybe a little bit red to technically be called eggplant, but I'm gonna go with, with you know, really strong eggplant vibe. Okay. Also, could be in the bruising family. Beautiful uh, purple lifted a little bit more towards um, red. As in, uh, red being the cool red, not the orange warm red. Okay, very, very delicious. Yes. So let's see. Um, the purples. So we can um, kind of get. Remember, we're, we were talking about using more purples here recently. Let's just kind of pull what might be the purple and or slanesh family from the paints here for just a moment. Um, we did put some princess purple out. I thought, did we not put princess purple? Oh, come on. For real? Did I not put any Princess Purple out? Do you remember it? Let's put it on the top. Okay, there's too much medium. I didn't put out any Princess Purple for you guys. Let's see if there's any more purple. Okay, I am, yep. Uh, Femme Fatale Violet. And I think that wraps it for the purples. Um, I guess we could go as far as it being magenta pink what do you guys think like the pink and the purple is that a family to you guys i guess if you're doing slanesh it probably is i know people like to okay so i guess we'll go ahead and plop the pinks in there as well for you guys here is the princess purple it is an upscale, a really upscale lavender. Okay, meaning it's an ele it's an elevated lavender. I don't know if you're talking about. It is a lavender towards blue. Okay, lavender towards blue. Let's see. Um, we had the harlot red. That was more of a magenta. Hello, Hammy. Are you over here to help us out or what? It's probably party time. Is it time for you to go out? We had, okay, so this one, I don't remember because it's got like a weird lid thing going on. What is that? The Femme Fatale Violet. I don't remember getting into that. It still has its collar on it. Uh, Femme Fatale Violet being. Okay, so what I'm gonna say about this um, paint is that what I'm gonna tell you about colors is that there is so much strength in what you can do with skin in these colors. Um, for real, they are, let me see. So here we have, um, hold on. Here we have the purples and pinks, okay? Uh, magenta, purple, pink. Let me double check. Okay, so there is this uh, kiss and tell. It, it this kiss and tell is, is is a pink, but it is uh going is going towards red. 
So the way that this kind of would go would be um, more like this, I think. Until we get to the lightest one to shift towards the more pink colors. Okay, so that, although th this one's like really debatable. There's a couple of them that are pretty debatable. That's more towards red. And that's more towards red so then this one and then this one and then that would start leaning towards your reds <clears throat> so there's um 13 that are in i don't know i don't i would I, i'm gonna say 12 that are in the magenta purple and mauve family um lifting towards red we will start to go to pink i do believe that there are a, a a number of reds in here so let me make sure i did not miss any i see one called aged bone i bet you guys would be interested in that um let us take a look at that um and let's also see uh how many total oops sorry guys i'm so sorry And this would actually be a green, but it is a glaze. So we're going to put it out there to take a look at the greens. This also, Wisp, uh, Will o Wisp Blue is very borderline. It is like almost a green. That's a green. We want to, we want to, and that's a green. And this is like that elven gray is really kind of green. This is sort of green. Mystic Waters is, is close. It's very borderline. That's a green. Okay. So we're going to look at all the greens. Now, what I am going to say, you guys, that you might, wait, that you might want to know, so there are, wow, some of these got to shake by hand a little to get the pigment moving, you guys. Okay, so... I'm just going to double check before I speak on this. I am going to say that one thing you may want to know. There is, whoop, wait, let me see. Okay. There is only five yellows. So that is something to think about in reference to like, you know, your your yellow collection. What I will tell you is that I have a pretty good number of yellows. Um, it's another, I, I like to have all the variables. Um, these are a little different than some of them that I have. Most, most especially, I like their lighter yellows. There's, a, there's something to be said about the, the white, the white, uh, light yellow. So the yellow that is um, muted by way of a little bit of white being added. Very, very nice. Um, happy accident is going to be considered an orange. Let me see. I think Royal Chambers might be a red. Let us uh, take a look at the. No, it is, it is, is a brown. It's a brick red. Okay, I was gonna. Oh, well, might as well. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, wait, that could be pigment, though. Hold on. That's another thing. Okay, you guys, seriously, mix these bad boys. Um, if you're not careful, some of your pigment could have come to the top, and you might end up just squirting your pigment out, and then you will have your color will not be the color it's supposed to be if you squirt your pigment out. Now, there's something to be said about paint that uh, has these characteristics because that usually usually means that there's quite a bit in there so don't be shy about that let's see this says crimson so you can't also looking through the side of the bottle it's really hard to see um what the actual color is so like i have seriously mixed a lot of bottles today let's put the whites over here and then i'm going to check in on like how many of these uh flesh colors we have or that look like flesh colors. 
as in, um, I'm sorry, as in Caucasian flesh colors. Well, orange is definitely not a flesh color. I don't know though, it could be. A mummy dust is like almost a green. It is amazing. That is an amazing color. Okay, let's see. What do we got? All right, so this one is uh, Royal Chambers, and it, it came out like, like, I think that was a pigment. Oh, no, it really is a magenta. Okay. It's, it's mixed now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Royal Chambers is in the red family. I, it's, a, it's a magenta, so that adds another one to this league of colors that's in here. It's kind of between those two. There we go. So that's 14 in the, the um, magenta and purple, lavender. Um, Kiss and Tell is more in the red, so that's where the, those will go next. Battlefield Crimson could be a magenta. It could be a red. Let us find out. Um, I don't think the labels, you guys, I don't think the labels are sealed. I'm going to recommend right now, we're going to do a really quick de demo to help you guys out with something. We like to keep on top of these sort of things. All right, let's see. Hold on. I shall find the proper foam lamp we have, or an ugly brush. Ugly brush, good. Big ugly brush. Big ugly brush. Okay. Um... Hold on, I have it here on my desk. So you can use varnish. You can use Mod Podge. In my case, you know, I really think that, oh, if you have an airbrush booth, slap it in the airbrush booth. If you got some old spray can varnish, uh, you wanna be careful. You wanna make sure whatever you use is um, friendly. Here we go, Mod Podge, not now. Uh, you wanna make sure it's friendly with um, ink. It looks like these were uh, printed out probably in his studio. So Mod Podge, right? Okay. Um, it looks to me like us. Wait, oh, it's brand new. Awesome. I wonder what happened when it was on my desk though. Um, it looks to me like these were uh, printed out and do not have sealer on them. Oh no! It is Studio J, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome the man, the myth, the legend. Are we up that late? It's only six. Jenny? Well, good evening, Ravens Hobbies. Welcome aboard just in time for Studio J. Hello, Vex. That is Juju. That is hello, my family. How are you guys? I've been thinking so much about you. How are things going? Things over here have been a little bit crazy. We are um we are currently making a mess of my desk. Hold on, look at this mess. You gotta love it. Uh, Geek got me the full set of the cephalopod paints. The Fuller Monty. The Fuller Monty. I'm telling you, this is early for you, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought. I was looking at my clock going, hmm. So are you cutting back your time a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not I only had a few people in here, but we're playing in paints, uh, Jay, and um, we're, we're about ready to get testing some mixing, and we've been doing a little bit of, uh, uh, we, we're kind of like testing the different colors, and I'm letting everybody know what color the colors are, because sometimes, you know, when you buy paint, it looks like one color online, it looks like another color in the bottle, but when you actually see it, getting it explained, the color it is, really helps. Yeah. Yes, um, they are for glazing primarily. Um, so they are designed uh, like that's the technique that I use a lot. So I thought that it would be something that would really, um, you know, enhance the studio. And I'm always, I'm loving the medium that they used for the paints. Uh, I feel like, <clears throat> you know, you get something, you get good colors all blocked in and they mix very nicely with other paints. I've actually left them sitting you'll see them mixed with um, Procryl right there and they've just been sitting 
I've mixed them with some other cotton and they seem to do fine. They don't curdle or break and that's really important. They seem to like a medium wet palette. So it's, 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 um, it's working out. I was actually just telling people that um, the label, I've been handling them and it looks to me like the label doesn't have a sealer on it. So I was telling everybody that I thought that taking a little bit of Mod Podge and sealing their labels, they, the, um, the colors will stay on there because otherwise, you know, your colors will rub off. So I was going to see what happened if I uh, seal the label. Like, you know, would it peel off or would it stay on? Could it handle it? Whatever. So I was using a little Mod Podge, doing a little bit of decoupage right now. Everybody who came in, thank you so much for raiding. I am Captain Mad Love. And we are here playing with the Cephalopod paints today. Cuttlefish paints. I'm sorry. Cuttlefish paints by Cephalopod Studios. And we are going through a whole box of 97. Uh, we are done. We're down to looking at all of the green. I have a saying, if you don't know what color to paint it, choose green. And if you think you can't figure out what's going on and it needs improvement, lean on green. I believe that green is uh, underused. Yes, yes, they are, Studio J. They are. Um, I actually thought that uh, the gentleman that made them might be... Um, uh, British or Irish or something because he, he has an accent. So I just painted this with Mod Podge, you guys, and it looks like it's okay. It goes over the ink. And this uh, will make it pretty much waterproof for you guys um, so that your name, because when you want to reorder, right, you don't want to have to try to go online and look at the color. You want to know what color you need to do, you need to order. And I don't know, let me see, uh, yeah, see? Um, I don't know if there's color numbers either, but by doing this, we will uh, secure the name getting rubbed off and that will save you some time in the future, especially when you get ready to order those more paints. Right? Were you, were you working on a marble effect? Oh, you, Jay, if you, if you have pictures and you want to put it in the, um, uh, in the chat, Scenery Sunday. Ooh, yeah, right on, right on. I'm going to do Terrain Tuesday. <laughs> oh, you'll grab, yeah, and throw them in the love gallery, definitely. Thank you guys so much for coming in with the raid. We are just really experimenting with some, some new paints that are just really actually working out. There's some really good colors that aren't on that I actually don't have in my studio. And I have a lot of paint. I have a lot of paint. Someone is already doing that. Oh, really? Who does that? Well, that's okay. I got my technical Tuesday, so that's, that's good enough. We can always, we can always do a uh, technical terrain on, on one of the technical Tuesdays. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do, Jay. I do. <laughs> so, yeah. Um I'm kind of in, I'm kind of in, I'm in, I'm enjoying this. Oh, I can see where um so, yeah, be careful how much you, liquid you add to your Mod Podge when you, when you thin it. But um Mod Podge is uh semi waterproof, you guys. But like I said, you can just take it out and do a rattle can. Just make sure that the, the, the ink can handle the rattle, whatever's in, whatever uh, catalyst is in the rattle can. So how are you guys over there? And how, how was the stream? Did it go well? Did you get, did you get your marble done? Was it wonderful? Now I got to find out who's doing Terrain Tuesdays. So yeah, that worked out really good, you guys. That was that was oh, I was I was keeping that one out because it was one of the greens. Okay, we're right on. Good. That's that's really good. I'm. Oh, there you are. There you are. Uh, so yeah. So that color. Uh, so the the total number of paints here, not including the medium, but including the four, um, including these four. Uh, the total number of paints was one hundred. Okay, and I cannot find 
that last color that you mentioned. Yes, and Jay, they are paint. Yeah, oh, you like the, oh, that's good to know. Uh, they are, they seem to be quite front. Oh, okay, then it's my bad. Okay, I counted 100 paints, including these. So I will go back and I will find that color. I will go back and find it. Yes, yeah, so Jay, uh, that was one of the things that we were trying was these, uh, these neons. And um, so I started with the yellow. I just wanna show you something. The, so they're very friendly. So this, um, this company, which uh, is Cephalopod, these are the cuttlefish, right? Hey, Joe, I know, I know. So, Joe, I was thinking about you. This is really exciting. So these, these, the, the medium in them, Jay and Joe, um, and everybody, uh, the, they're not sticky. So a lot of the neons you use, they're really sticky. These are not sticky. They mix comfortably without curdling with other paints. But what I wanted to show you was a neon color that is um, by another company, and then this neon color, okay? Hold on. Let me block some of the light for you, there. But here's what I really wanted to show you, Jay. So you know, a lot of people ask me about my Necrons because they have such this intense, intense glow. Um, so I use this product, Spectratex. And um, it's, it's a little sticky when you're using a brush. Yes, 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 they all have agitators. Um, and this is, so this is great in an airbrush, but it's also very thin if you're using a brush. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot. It, it doesn't really like to mix with other paints, but it's because there's not the proper balance of mixing medium and um, retarder in it. Uh, metal metal because um the reason i know that is because my 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 uh magneted jay did you go to the kickstarter and check this out please tell me you did it's amazing this new uh mini holder the man that designed this designed this to help with my back oh you, you gotta check it out it's insanity it's insanity did you actually make the video where it would work keith no. Oh. Yeah, it's really, it's really something special. Oh, yeah, I, I totally understand. I, I know, Joe, I know I got you on my mind. I'll figure, I'll, fi I'll figure it out because I know you're, you're in an odd area and we'll see what can be worked out in the future. There's the Kickstarter so you can see. I really, like I, I played the video, but it's not the right size, but it's it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Plus, you know, we're always doing that. Um, uh, you know where you go into the, hold on. Let me see if I can find my my, my guy. You, so you go into the, the booth and you've got your holder and you got to do a little something. Where'd it go? Oh, I don't know where it went, my cover. Well, damn it. Well, one thing was that one, but I really wanted to show you this idea I came up with where it has the frigging, um, it's so silly because I was trying to find something, uh, to, there it is. I like to try to save on, um, supplies. So here's the cool part. So <clears throat> you magnet the mini to it. Let me see if I've got one here with a magnet on it, right? So. And there's, 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 is, is he mad? Yeah, okay. So you put the mini on it, right? And then sometimes you find that you gotta go back in to your airbrush booth and you wanna do a little spritz on this mini. Oh, Cephalopod, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. It has been amazing. We're gonna look at your greens and then we're gonna play with some paint here in a, in a little bit. I think I might do a little bit, of, do, do a little bit of, of painting with them. But definitely I'm coming back to my studio tomorrow to play with them, so. And I will get a hold of you about some uh, giveaway paints, you know, if this turns out to be a thing. I mean, I'm loving the colors, so. So, um, thank you though. Oh, well, I, 
it was it was it was a, it's a lot of pain to go through but it really was fun to like help people get a feel for the um colors you know it really was i and i'm in, i'm in, enjoying it i'm enjoying it so this is this is the kickstarter you guys right so you put the um the link is in the chat and and and, and, and instead of having a static holder you're able to you're able to turn your miniature you're also able to turn your miniature at angles like upside down so you can like get in the groin and paint it right and then and then just turn it and 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 paint it right you it, it also can be used for larger miniatures because you just you put a washer on the bottom of your large mini you pull this off and you can put a large mini on the top but the part that was really exciting to me is when you have to go back into your airbrush booth to have to yeah i don't want it on my glove i don't want it on on this so you take the the ball off jay and I put a sandwich bag over my hand and over this. Then I put the ball back on and the mini back on the ball. And then I could go back in my airbrush booth and I could do my little spritzy spritzy that I need to do. And I don't get it on my hand. I don't get it because sometimes I have to go back into the airbrush booth. And that's always something that is such a pain in my butt. Thank you very much, Creepy. I appreciate it. Robosh, welcome, welcome. I hope I didn't miss greeting anybody. Thank you for the shout outs for cephalopod paints, you guys. And so a friend of mine designed this because um, it goes with my posture ball because I gave up all of my mini holders when I started using my posture ball and I was holding all of my minis in my hand. Now this is not even the revised version. Then what he did is he went in and he fine tuned it so this was the prototype now he's fine-tuned it i might be able to let me just you can kind of see the idea let me go really quick and show you this you can kind of see the idea this is the new one now it's already launched by the way I love the end. Look at the little mini taking it. Oh, you can't see it. It cut it off. That's such a bummer. The other thing really cool about it is I can magnet it to an old metal plate. And <clears throat> if I've got parts and pieces, I can go hands free and I can position this little guy. So they make, there's a hat made for it now that's an accessory. It's really cool. So it'll hold him from moving anywhere so that I can glue parts on him while he is attached to the top of it. So all the, the other thing too is that if you have extra parts that you're working on, right, um, you can attach the extra parts and you can work on the miniature. Like you just, this is a little piece of cork with a um, washer on the bottom. And so if you had multiple parts that you needed to paint, the other thing too is that um, the magnet is strong enough that if you have little parts that you don't want to lose as well, or that you, <clears throat> when you're gluing him together, I put all my parts down here like that. This, this is a bad one. That's a bad metal. Um, I put my little parts down here like that. So hold on. I'm going to show you something. You can take this ball off because you may not need rotating. Hold on, my ball likes to get away from me. <clears throat> you put the miniature on, and then while the miniature is on there, I have the ability to hold him static because he's magnet on, and I can come in here and I can pin and glue all of his little parts, and they're all held around the bottom of the um, <clears throat> the mini. So, so I don't, also I can keep all one project in something like this. Um, the hats that are being designed for it, you will be able to take the miniature off the ball and store it so that you just have to have one holder and you don't have to have a bunch of 
holders for all of your miniatures. Oh, do they have a new one out? That's the, that's the uh, that's the one that I have, Raven. They have a new Kickstarter out. I didn't know that. Hello, Dark Virtue. Yes, this. So this is. Um, I have a. Uh, I'm a collaborator. It it is. It's 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 really really amazing. I'm I'm super pleased with it. Uh, one of the things that was really enlightening to me is to be able to put the larger minis on it. So to still be able to have where they're not tackied, but they're magneted. And the magnet is so powerful that I don't have to worry about, I, I actually have one, I actually broke one. Rough handling, I was rough handling my big mini. Oh, I broke him, look, hold on. This one has one on him. So like, this one has actually a really heavy base on it, but uh, I can take this guy, right? And put the magnet in the bottom and he goes on it. And then I can also set him there and then the new ones actually come with a skate bearing in the top, so I will be able to pivot. So right now he's magnet and he's static. On the new ones, there's a skate bearing in there, and so I'm gonna be able to turn him. And then my larger minis can stand up and come up off of things. Yeah, I didn't know that Redgrass had um, um, a, new, a new Kickstarter, and Raven, <clears throat> If you are in the UK, they are part of the team, so you you did it right. Ordering from them is the right way is the right way to go. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. Actually, my hair is not doing anything it's supposed to today, creepy. Um, I've been at my dad's in California, and I went in the pool. My hair doesn't like it, so it took all the color out of it and made it all beach hair, and I'm all like, ah. Oh. So I'm having like a really bad hair day. I appreciate the compliment. Let's see, who did I miss? Did I miss anybody? Yes, that, that's right though, Raven. There, so the UK has the UK, and I believe that there's one, a Grim Grip also that started in Australia. Oh, the kids are hungry. I missed that part. Yes, I, I most most certainly I will let I will let you know. So these are the cephalopod again again. Yes, and, and Jay, um <clears throat> I do want you to reach out to me in um Discord. I do, I do. Uh <clears throat> it's important. Yeah, if there's, there may be UK people out there. Go right ahead, Raven. Yes, because there could be people. If you guys are in the UK, then you want to go to the UK uh, Kickstarter for this project. But just to let you know, okay, they are not all identical. But um, <clears throat> the UK does not sell to the United States. <clears throat> neither does Australia. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Raven. Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is uh, this has been my my latest toy. I'm and I'm 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 pleased. I'm pleased. Yeah, that is a magnet for your ass right there, huh? Excellent. Okay. So back to our cephalopod colors. Yes, uh, we have. Um, yes, I I believe so. I. I believe so. Now, um, uh, did you see the video that we just had up? Hold on, I'm just gonna put it right over here. So, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about that one because I've been busy over on this end. Does it look like this? We're launched already, you guys. So. Because that is the prototype base. This is the new one, the the the, the base. Watch it. Um, it uh it has a uh, a a a stand thing going on. There you go. So I wasn't sure if um if the base was uh the same or not. Sorry, guys. 
All right. Now we're going back to these cephalopod paints here. All right, we've got like all these colors here. This is Inky. He, uh, he came from the cephalopod studio. And um, so what I was gonna tell Jay about the neons was that I was feeling really positive about these, Jay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I didn't know if, if, the, if the actual uh, stand was the same. The, but these neons, uh, we're gonna put a little area here for Jay, right there where we're gonna put some neons. Um, I'm feeling really good about the colors, but what I liked the best about them, Jay, was how friendly they were with um, other families of colors. Also, that they weren't sticky. And here was what pleased me the most. This is the one I use for all my Necrons. Um, it's the brightest, the brightest yellow you can get. The, there's another one. There's one other. There's one other. So Createx, uh, Createx is the other one. Um, uh, I believe now one of these, uh, I have to, I have to double check on my, on my colors. Let me, let me put a little bit of this out. I want to say that the Createx is the brightest like that you can get your hands on because it has an element to it that is like white ink. So it, it lifts it a level. The Spectratech is um, ever, ever so slightly, and I do mean slightly, there is like a hint of green to it. So um, if you were to look at them side by side, let me, uh, I don't think that, Spectratex is properly mixed there. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Okay. So the Spectratex, if you if you look at them closely, you can kind of see how the Spectratex has a very slight. This is the Spectratex is the best for um, making glowy, gooey crap for Nurgles. Oh, I hope so, Juju. I hope everybody does. I really do, you guys. I really appreciate, by the way, I want you guys, I want you guys to, I appreciate from the bottom of my heart all of the positive input we are getting and all of the backers we are getting for this project. So Geek and I are working eventually. Uh, the, the whole project is is to have a proper retirement plan. Now don't 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 panic and think I'm leaving you. It's just that there's only so many hours in a day and so much that a person can do. So we have to look into other avenues of um, uh, product. So uh, what I wanted to say, Jay, was that what was cool about the cuttlefish one was how it, it matched up in that family. It's, it's literally, and these are, are really, really intense. Um, some of the best. Oh, have you? Okay, well, I got to tell you that, I you know, that's a thing that I did a lot of prior. And um, I'm learning about the acrylic ones because I would mix the pigments myself. They did a really good job with this, Jay. They really did. Now, as with any acrylic, uh, as with any uh, neon color, one of the disadvantages, of course, is that um, they are thin. And that is, that is just something that, you know, you gotta put multiple layers. But now, um, the, he had mentioned that these were friendly for the airbrush too. When I'm doing larger areas, I usually use um, the Createx or the Spectratech because it comes in such, you know, big containers. It's just very convenient. And if I want it to be a specific color on top, then I can just like layer over that. Now, what we were discussing, um, uh, oh, I sorry, that's the, we were discussing the um, greens, but before we did the greens, one of the things we were gonna look at was, did red and blue make purple? Um, because it's one of the weird things I do is um, find out if I can find a red and a purple that are in the same family as in the same family of paints. Now, looking at the different colors of blue, when you, when you do this, when you do this routine, you do want to find a blue that's cool. Okay, so it needs to be a, a cool blue. Um, 
We have all the greens out here because we're going to look at... So you guys, the selection of green is amazing. It's like, oh my gosh. What color did we decide brick and red was? Did we ever put that one out? Oh, I don't, uh, did we? Is it, no. Okay, brick and red is actually true mauve towards the brown side. Over there. It's it's towards it's mauve towards brown. Hey Misco. So let's see. This one is definitely cool. And looks really good for clarity. The other thing that you want to check is um, how much opacity is in the paint when you're trying to make purple. If the blue has a lot of opacity or the red has a lot of opacity, you're going to get mauve. Um, if the red is too tomatoey, it uh, makes like brownie mauve, sort of. So uh, let's pull the blues out of the green pile over here and get these guys all together and see what we've got. Because we're going to take a look at the greens in a minute. Like, and I really, I believe, I believe strongly in greens. You guys got to have a lot of greens in your studio. Um, green is just way too overlooked. So, um, 15, 15 in the green family. That doesn't include the neon green. Oh, I have been. I totally have been. Let's give these two. This is going to be, uh, the crawdaddy red is going to be the only red I feel like might do this. Battlefield Crimson, I actually didn't open that one to see where it goes. I see it still has its neck ring on it. So let's see about that purple. We're probably going to need to peel back some palette here so that we can get at it. So we will peel this back. So we have this out here for you guys and we can take a look at it. Let's see now, is this open? This is open. Okay, so um, kind of in the more, even more towards brown. So uh, Battlefield Crimson is actually kind of like a dry blood looking color. Hello, Neko, how you doing? How you doing? Let's see, Aged Bone was a color everybody was interested in Aged Bone. We wanted to compare that to potentially, um, let me see, in the green family, did we get the, the whitish green out here? Oh, this one, right? This is a, uh, this is actually kind of in the green family, uh, mummy dust. So aged bone is, um, I think guys that you would, the aged bone is uh, gray. It's got more gray in it. Definitely not green like um, the mummy dust. Mummy, mummy, mummy dust, right. Um, it is, it, aged bone is definitely has that cooler, grimy bone color to it uh, in, the, in the beige family. Uh, mummy dust more in the olive family. I would say that the aged bone definitely definitely falls into the white and beige criteria. Uh, definitely darker though. Like it's it's not really an off white, but it's not a tan because it has no warmth to it really. It's a little bit of a cold brown even. It's a really amazing color. Like I'm I'm happy with that one too. So I'll we'll have to take a look at those primary colors that really worked out. Five Sisters Platinum. That was supposed to be with all of the metallics. Oh, and the plumber's copper. I missed, I missed one. There's a gold that I missed. Um, okay, so let's see. We also have this sacrificial red. Uh, hmm, it's looking a little bit, kind of a little leaning into the orange family. So like the tomato is what we sort of say, you know, the warm reds, basically the warm red. Let's see. So this is a sacrificial red. Yeah, it's definitely a warm red. Oh, actually, a sacrificial red is a very respectable, brighter, brighter, okay, but a respectable brick red. 
in order to get the terracotta feel to it, I think you would probably have to add a little bit of cream, uh, maybe a little bit of tan would, would work um, to get that. Let's take a look at that over here on the palette. Actually, we have that aged bone out. Let's uh, put this down there. That Wait, let me, let me feel that. Some of these are a little thinner. Hmm. Did I not get... I might not... No, no, that one's a little... This one's a glaze, really. I mean, they all glaze, but that one's definitely um, a little thinner and glazier. Okay, so let's put that in here because it's gonna be as they start to turn brown. Mind you now, that was the sacrificial red. Over here on the palette, I'm gonna see if we can get a terracotta from this by mixing a little bit of that bone. Because I feel like that may be what happens? There you go. There you go. So, just like that. Terracotta. Uh, if you want it to be a little warmer, then, you know, you could put just a touch of yellow. Or even just a little touch of orange, whichever suits your fancy. Let's see. This is, um... Okay, this is, like, really tomato red. Well, this is a, like... Yeah, this is... Look at this one. It's almost, you know what, that, you know how I'm always picking out the vermilion in all the different companies? This is vermilion, this is their vermilion. It is called Comrade Red. See it there? This is their vermilion, so really the deepest, darkest of their oranges. We'll put that down with the oranges, just before orange turns red. Let's see, so this is the one I'm expecting if one were to mix with the blues, this is the crawdaddy red. I feel like this cold red that they have here would be the one that did it. Now let me get the collar off. So I take all the collars off of these because you don't want, you want the paint to stay in the bottle. And a lot of times if you don't take the collars off, it won't, they'll, uh, peg in there it won't get it down low enough that sometimes those collars get like cockeyed and stuff and so then you end up shaking all the paint up into your lid and and the paint dries in the nipple and all of the beaker but as ah, dropper so let's take a look at that okay that is the coolest of their reds that i have found now this is one of those things so technically right blue and red are supposed to make purple and so with every company and all the paints that i paint with i always like to test does your blue and red when you mix it together make purple it's just something that i do because uh when it comes to paint it's not the same as i mean you know color theory goes out the window when you start using physical paint you know i mean not all of it of course but a lot of it People are like, but I mixed blue with red and it made brown. I'm like, well, yeah, that that is a thing. Now, this is the blue, Lullaby Lavender. So the blue we just put down there is called Gunpowder Gin Blue. Okay? Um, it is not quite cobalt. Let's see. There's this bright troll blue. I am looking for that solid color crayon cobalt blue that everybody likes to have on their desk. Um, I'm thinking maybe this might be it. Uh, let's take a look. I don't know. It's a little bit light. We're gonna... Interesting. What happened there? Okay. Um, no, it's, uh, not. Yeah. It's close. Um, not quite dark enough to be the color crown. This is, a. Uh, Surreal, it's so it's cerulean blue, but it's actually cerulean blue. So let's take a look at that. Uh, of the blues, these are the blues that I was lining up. Um, to get now, this one says it is lullaby lavender, but I'm telling you what, it's blue. So I don't listen to the colors, I only, um, I don't listen to the names, I only just look at the colors just to let you guys know. Okay, that's the surreal in this, hmm? 
Sir Raleen Blue. Okay. So I've got a couple others here. I have got the deep. Um, this is like a like a shadow on ultramarine blue. It's uh, a black blue. Um, but it is definitely leaning into gray. And just to let you know, interestingly enough, if this color were ever so slightly more black, so if you were to mix a very small amount of black with this, you would get a shade of acrylic Payne's Gray, which I thought was very interesting about it. Um, it also would make a really great shadow on uh, the color ultramarine blue, as in the Smurfs. All right, so that, now that's not gonna work because there's too much green in it. So you're definitely not gonna get what you want out of that. <clears throat> now we have this, <clears throat> <clears throat> there is a, <clears throat> sorry guys, pigment in some of these. You wanna make sure you get that pigment mixed in so you get a really good, solid, smooth color. <clears throat> of course, they all have pigment. What I meant is there's a lot of pigment in some of them, a lot of pigment in most of them actually, <clears throat> from what I can tell. But it's, it separates when they sit. That is not uncommon with paints. And so you just wanna make sure that you get a really good mix on them um, so that you're not spitting out the pigment that you need, you know, to make it the color it's supposed to be. Okay, so this is a member of the Periwinkle family. So it is not, it is a blue, it is a blue, okay. But it is, um, it's on the verge of being a purple. It's like right in the middle. Uh, it is more of a periwinkle. I actually would add this to the league uh, going the other direction with our purples. So we are counting the purples and the magentas here. And if I were lining these up, so blue is gonna come the other way, right? Um, and the, the pink is gonna start back onto the magenta, but in this case, <clears throat> what I would do, because I'm counting like, see, it is it is in the bluer family, but still having some characteristics of the purple to it. So it will be in the line of blues as they gradually come over to being pure blue. It's just, it. it's very borderline. You could refer to that as a purple, you could refer to that as a blue just because of where it falls. And there are some colors that are just right in the middle like that. Let's see. Now this is the one that I was looking at to mix with the red that I thought may potentially make the purple if any of them were. There's this teddy bear one too. Let's let's give the teddy bear an op the opportunity. Teddy bear blue, just to see what happens. <clears throat> We want everybody to have their chance. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's pretty much all of the blues that are not like baby blue is not gonna do it, dusky sky blue, all those guys aren't gonna, they're not gonna do it. This and this are friends. There's a lot of mixing when you... Oh, good night, Scooter. I'll see you then. Thank you so much for joining us, my friend. It was nice to see you out there. I got all my new paints. It was nice to have my friends out there. Okay, so... Oh, Hello, Dave. Oh, this one's not going to work, you guys. Because... Um, it's uh, more of a uh, a little bit grayish, a little bit uh, yeah, a little bit more of an oops, sorry, a little bit more of an industrial color of the blues. So it's it's not it's not going to work. There's there's too much <clears throat> there's too much uh, opacity in it, and it's too off blue. Oh. 
How many messages did I miss? Oh God, you guys, I hope that that wasn't not scrolling and I'm, okay, good. I didn't miss a whole lot. I, I did, I did. We've gone through them all today, Dave, and we are about to do that great experiment of, can we make purple? This one, I need to give it a mix that's like too thin and I did. So we got them all, all 100 paints. And we are, we have, I was counting all the greens because I believe people should have more green in their studio, more purple and more green. And we actually came out with a pretty good number. So of the colors that are of the purple family, there was, um, that would be going all the way up to the brightest red magenta, okay, is um, 15, 15. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm really grooving on some of these are really, are really working for me. So let's see. Okay, there it is. So my theory is uh, probably not. This is the one that I suspected, but really when I first put it out, I didn't have it mixed enough, you guys. And um, so, you know, I got a little bit more of the pure pigment <clears throat> I could be wrong. Um, I have been wrong many, 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 many times before in my life. So I could be wrong. Let's take that pigment up off the palette. All right. And I'm going to go over here where we're going to mix the purple and bring it on in for you guys. There we go. All right. So we are going to try this one that I suspect. I don't know though. See, it looks, it looks to me like it has gray in it. So I don't feel very confident about that. And it's definitely not going to work with the vermilion color. It's, it's, it's going to have to be um, this cool red. If it were to do it, it would have to be the cool red. And like I said, I'm looking for purple, not for mauve, okay? The object is to get actually... Okay, I cannot deny that it is not purple, but it is in the mauve family. Okay? Let us try the, let's see. So that was the, the deep. Was that the deep? No, the deep is that really gray one. That was the lullaby lavender otherwise. That, that was the lullaby lavender right there. That's lullaby lavender. Okay, so that it is. <clears throat> so technically, this is a purple. Okay, it is. Okay, and let's see. So then we're gonna try the um, gunpowder gin blue. That'll be this one here. Yep. Okay. So the gunpowder gin blue, I mean, if you were going to make purple, um, the gunpowder gin blue is a pretty good solid uh, leaning, leaning in the direction I think that we would want it to go. Uh, we could try adding more blue to this one, but I feel like um, that particular blue could be a dominant factor and, and lean a little bit more towards... Uh, a grayish purple. So there we add a little bit more blue to that and we kind of get a smoky gray purple. Yeah, that one's I think as close as we're gonna as we're gonna get. That's a that's a that's definitely um a purple though. Right here. This is a little cloudy, like um a storm. Right here. <clears throat> now let's see. So here we have the um the bridge, the bridge troll blue. Um it's a kind of, a, it really is rather clear and may potentially, may potentially do what we want it to do. It, it, it definitely has a lot of blue clarity, but, 
um, it really kind of leans a little bit more towards uh, periwinkle. Yeah, it, uh, and this is not necessarily equal parts. Yeah, it's a little bit foggy. Um, very, very good. This color, so this is a gray purple. What we've got here is, is a gray purple. I feel like it has its place definitely in the Slanesh realm for you guys. Um, what I'd like to do is put a little bit more of that, um, the gun, the gunpowder gin out because um, I feel like that. And then of course we were using the, the now, <clears throat> There is a little trick we can do here. This is the crawdaddy red. Yeah, I, I, I agree. This is the crawdaddy red, but now um, something, so if you were trying to make your own purple, say, you know, there wasn't the one that you wanted here. This is that, yeah, I, I do. I think that this, let's, let's just build this in a little pile here so we don't have to see through it. Hang on. We're almost there. We gotta get just that right amount of the mixed EK. So yeah. So yes. <clears throat> um. Yep. Uh, uh. You definitely have. This is for sure. <clears throat> the best of all the that are not clear, right? Remember, we are ixnaying inks, and we are ixnaying the clears because. Those are pure pigment colors, and so it wouldn't be the same, right? So of all of them that we've tried here in the studio, this one definitely provides us with the best look of red and blue. Now, that was the Gunpowder Gin Blue and the... Whoops, 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 whoops. Crawdaddy Red. But now, here's... Let's just take a little trip here. So... <clears throat> Over here, we have Surrealian, Surrealian blue. Over here. Okay, now that blue is not, if you painted it on something, it wouldn't be blue to you. But it is, um, it is already in the, in the purple family. And uh, we're going to take some of that red and we're going to see what we get if we mix it with that in reference to purple and if we can lift it with that very very good slanesh color right there yep that one works now that blue of course yeah so that now that blue th that is okay so that blue that we just used there yeah it created kind of a deep lavender um, we may be able to bring that back around by adding a little more blue, but I think what would interest me would be, let us take one of these, um, really cold, they're technically magenta in the red family. What about Harlot Red? Harlot Red, okay? Now, Harlot Red is a very powerful. Magenta color. Let's see if we're going to use the gin blue because the gin blue mixed the best with the red to create the purple. Right? So let's put some of that over here and see if we can really, you know, slap out a super, super solid or will it make a super mauve? Okay, now we're talking, wait, hold on. Oh yeah, now see? Look at those two colors there. This, this one here, you got a really good purple. So you could take one of the magentas that they have, a little, that lean towards the magenta, mix it with a blue and get yourself, um, <clears throat> I can't say something similar. Hold on, let's just see. Let's just see if something similar is in there personal because they may have already done it right let's see 
That is uh, the Femme Fatale Violet. Too light. Chromancer Purple. There we have it. So it's already been done. They know the science. There it is. This one might have a tad more blue to it than their Chromancer, but really close. This one here is too pink, really close. That was the um, Royal Chambers, right? Yeah, or was it, no, it was Harlot. I'm sorry, it was Harlot Red. It was the Harlot Red. So being as that one's got a little bit more, that's probably what was done here. Let's do that. And I'm gonna say probably a tad of the pink magenta. Yeah, to just, and that's a lifting color. There you go. So it looks like we got a winner on that. Um, now, mind you, it's not purple with, you know, crawdaddy red. And definitely wouldn't make purple with the other red because that's just too, that's too corn red. And the corn red is going to become something completely different. And we, we, we already know that though. Those are kind of brown. So we probably put those at the opposite spectrum of red. And the crawdaddy red, right? No, not sacrificial. That's sacrificial. Wait, where is the, um, is that, that's not sacrificial. Is that sacrificial? Hold on, we're missing one. Oh, it got stuck in the orange family. Oh, sacrificial was the kind of brickish red that we made terracotta out of. Okay, there we go. And so your reds are a little limited, okay? Depending on if you want to include magenta as a red or not. So the, uh, the reds are a little bit, um, these are reds that range into brown. So you're what you might consider or we look at you know sitting at the desk and, and doing the painting i think your reds total about um five because um royal chambers is really more towards magenta and harlot red is towards magenta now you could you could put those in the red instead of in the pink or purple because they are and then you would get a total of uh seven seven reds which is really not which is really not bad at all really not bad at all now for the greens look at look at look look at the greens did i get them all i think i might have missed one. Oh, here's one this this i this no, yeah it says it's blue but it really really it really is green Okay, I think I, I think I got them all. Everything that looks green to the eye except the neon green, right? And we did all these, right? And then we have all these. So, there's, oh, that's a blue. That's the gunpowder blue, right? Okay. So you have a total of... Seventeen. Nope. Yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen greens. All of which have a little bit different personality. Like you have a couple of sages and one sage has a little bit more blue gray. One sage has a little bit more yellow green. You've got, um, now mind you, this one is called uh, mummy dust and it has a definite green appearance to it. Uh, this um, this one has kind of a, uh, this is uh, the guac green. So it's got kind of like a yellow to it. I don't, th these two are like one a little bit more towards the uh, 
minty green that actually is the upchuck green there is one that is a mint green here we have the minty shake so you have some variants this is more like a in the lime green family i guess more yellow though bye dave bye dave actually i'm about ready to do the same thing myself what time is it we are at 7 30 and it has been longer than usual oh ghoul flesh ghoul flesh And ghoul flesh probably is a friend of, um, hold on, we gotta shake it a little more, uh, mummy dust. Because um, it looks to me like uh, mummy dust is kind of in the warm family. Oh, right on. Okay. I have not caught one stream, Dave. Of course, I was um, out of town in California. Yep. So this is the colder one. This is the warmer one. Uh, ghoul flesh is a little bit more greeny blue, whereas mummy dust is a little bit more dead grass. Thank you for popping in, Dave. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next week. And then these, uh, these also are like not just a, a regular green, but like we've got our teals in this family. The ones that are more green than blue. If uh, if they are a um, blue-green, then I put them in the blue family. So we've got a... Um, actually, that's a, that it really is a very good hunter green. I said it was forest green, but forest green or hunter green, once it dries, um, that's another thing, too, is like to let them dry to see what we get. Okay. I appreciate that, Dave. Thank you. Uh, Trilbo Bite Green looks like it might be a forest green. This is like a color frown green. You can just see that from the outside of the bottle. That is a Lush Valley. Yep, 100%. There's your color frown when you were a kid. It was green right there. Also, you can tell by the pigment in this that mixed with uh, the lemon yellow, it will make a really good um, bright, bright green right let's see um this is uh so the od green i think was one of my favorites right out of the box i was tripping on the od and then i found dead scale so we've already done these these were the like the pastel variations and the jaded also is probably another teal color looks like it leans a little bit more towards the green which um uh my girl bronze uh she is digging on the um yeah definitely a not teal really at all definitely holding a nice solid green blue not blue green so let's see this is the od od oh yeah so the od is just i i love true gnarly olive green it's almost a little bit brown uh it, it but but it really has a, this one is going to take some shaking might be sitting for a minute that's goblin skin we have so many beautiful orc colors here look at all these beautiful orc colors we make some seriously beautiful skin here okay so this is in that olive family that is dead scale it is um a lighter version, sort of, of the OD green. And you could definitely get some smashing highlights in there, either with a guac green or with the mummy dust. Either way, the guac green could add like a little warmth, but you, the, you can see that the mummy dust is definitely the triad right there, right? The little tripod that we do. The three colors. So, like this one here, I can see this is like the forest green. And that one's got a bit too much blue in it. And so like you've got several of them that you can work with. Here we go. I think that. This one is. Um, that one. And this one. Yeah. So it looks like they've got like a really good pairing also lined up here. 
this one, that one, this one. This one, this one. Might be this one. Hmm? Hmm. There we go. So this one kind of gets left a little bit out on his own. Um, that's the ghoul flesh. The ghoul flesh has like a little bit less green in it, it leans a little bit, but also uh, would like could go here. I mean, it could go anywhere because of what color it is. It mix it down at the end of the line. Well, that'd be a little debatable right there, but the rest of them uh, as a highlight, 100% as the top highlight. And then going down, you could use the same shadow on all of them. Here we go. This is actually uh, probably the middle one in the um, in the olives. Yep, I'm seeing this as being. I'm seeing this as being that needs to be plucked out. That color crayon green is always the one that gets plucked out. There we go. All right, so that's looking pretty strong there. That's like in the yellow family. It's a little bit. That's a cool shadow right there. But hold on. And then we've got color crayon green, which is, you know, one of our base greens. And then this ghoul flesh, which has a little bit of gray in it. So it could work as a highlight. You can mix it in and, and tone things down. But it's a very, it's, they're very, it's, it's a good, strong presence. And, and of course you can swap for your own personal needs. But they, um, they look like they line up really good. Um, I'm not sure that this one and this one aren't the opposite let me take a look at that yep that's right okay so because th the, the reason is because this one has a little bit more blue and this one has a little bit more yellow so these three are more of a family than the other way around this one has a touch of blue in it and so do these so that really works across the board these will also work like that whole family right there all works really well together so we have actually managed to mix purple out of a couple of the colors, which worked out really good, actually more than a couple. We ended up with kind of like some uh, deeper bluey purples over here, but uh, we did what we here is what we didn't get. We did not get a awful like mauve brown color like people send me all the time. This this first one here might have been the closest, but it was a uh, a little bit more towards like a gray color. You know, one of the ways that you can test to see what color you got. Like what? What? What ended up happening in the in the end is white, because it it will tell. Like the white will tell you that one. That one was this one. So this should technically make um, a lavender, right? When you mix it together. Right. White likes to. To tell on things and then like over here um, when you mix these together it, it's highly possible that this will become more of a gray because of the amount of gray that's in it I mean it's still it's still a okay lavender it's definitely a better lavender than it was purple but it uh, is a little bit more gray than the other one Leaning a little towards a purple periwinkle combination right there. And then probably this other one right there, you'll probably get periwinkle from that. And uh, we don't want to add too much white because it already kind of had a little bit of smoke going on in it. Yep. I think a really good periwinkle actually. Maybe just a wee bit too purple for the perfect periwinkle, but you know, it's on the verge of it. All right. And that wraps up. Oh, Inky. Inky's like, we gotta we got we gotta give Inky some um primer. He needs some primer, but before he can have his primer, he's gotta have a little bath. He's gotta have a good I gotta give the octopus a bath tonight. So that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up 97 paints opened, not to mention, I, I didn't get any chibi painting done, not to mention 
Uh, we got a box from a friend opened. We got a fantastic raid from Studio J. Um, the dog got to open her gift. Wavy got to make me cry. <laughs> So I think it has been quite an eventful stream. I hope you guys enjoyed all the explanation, playing in the paints, all the, the colors. And then this way, what I am hoping is that this will help you if you decide you want to go buy this paint. That this And no, we are, we are not sponsored by them. So just to let you know that I just did this because I bought the paint and I wanted to share with you what was going on um, with me involving the paint. And so... Um, uh, yeah, this is this is what I this is what I did, and I'm I'm really happy with this little cache right here because of the fact that um, it's I I really like these shades and I don't get enough of them. I don't think there. Um, so I I felt really good about uh the uh the the red pink purple and then as we go of course into the blue good night creepy thank you for popping in maybe yeah that's a little bit less purple i don't know though that's kind of got like a purple thing going on but i guess it's not Anyway, I was really feeling good about this because of the number of paints in this family. I, I felt like it just had a really good effect going on. And then, um, and then there's more blue in here, of course. Uh, actually, this is a is, so this is called Cyrene Green. We missed it in the greens. Um, it's a very much a teal. Uh, oh yeah, this definitely would be. I mean, you know, it, it kind of fluxes right on that borderline, but it's it's definitely a green. It is, it is a blue. It's yeah, it's one of those borderline babies. You know, one of those little borderline babies. But I can pull all the blues out of here. Um, we have like, they have some of the some of the colors that I'm gonna be. Um, I'll let you know. Um, on. Uh, Instagram, the ones you know, I'll put, I'll put them out there. Put them out there. Maybe on my on my on my uh, on my YouTube. I think we might have missed a uh, interesting blue here. Uh, kind of a periwinkle. There seems to be a really respectable number of um, the periwinkle-like families. Uh, I think for people that are painting uh, marines, that they would uh, be pretty impressed. I gotta not say uh so much. I say uh a lot. I apologize, you guys. Oh, I was gonna do some uh, metallic brushing. Shoot. Okay, I can't leave without doing that. Uh oh. Hold on. I I got I got I gotta I gotta. Whoops, sorry. I. I got I gotta test the the metallic. I, I gotta test the metallic. It's gotta happen. I mean, how will we know? How will we know? If it doesn't, if it if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, okay. Let me see if I got all the blues really quick. Yeah, yeah. That that one right there, that is like borderline, right between blue and green. I think for those of us that love the color um, aqua and teal and that sort of, we we totally consider that teal. What is this? Dusk Sky. That's a really good color there. See? There's going to be some of these that are really come... Let me see if I got all the blue. I think I got all the blue. So your blues, uh, if do you want to include the gray or not, is going to be a little bit debatable. Okay? So if you include the gray blues in your blue family, okay, then you have... Uh, and of course, include where the transition is. One, two, three, eleven. Eleven that are in the blue family. Five, five, six, seven of those that are one hundred percent like blue. So yeah. And then I think we did really good on the brown and the and the and the and the flesh tone, even gray. 
and definitely the whites. It's got a very good variety of whites. I planned on putting the whites in here with these. So the metallics. Let's set this aside. And all these wonderful greens. We did really good on the green haul. So your lean on green thing is going to work out really good. More green. More green is needed. All right. Let me take a really quick bio, you guys. You hang tight. You can jump into a game of race cars with Geek, okay? And I'm going to go take a really quick bio. Before we do a little metallic rubbing, I'm going to also peel the palette off here and flip it. And also, metallics are finicky. Don't want anything on here. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I did not know those went through palette paper. That would be the Createx, I'm guessing, because I don't usually work with that on a palette. Okay. There we go. All right. You guys. Hey, look at that. The captain pushed the button. Now I gotta find chat. Where'd chat go? Hello, chat! Y'all already exclamation point racing and shit. Who told you to do that? I didn't tell you to do that. Tell me what you do, rabbit. Exclamation point race, exclamation point race. While we're... What the shit balls was that? Captain's tearing up her glasses. All right, we've got a Kickstarter going on. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you go check that out. We also have our Captain's Champion Challenge. which is a chibi uh, challenge. You go over there, and it got all the instructions, the entry form. When you uh, set up the entry form, Geek did a really cool thing and set up uh, automatic email. It'll give you a discount. Uh, I think it's 25% off, so it's a pretty decent discount. Uh, yeah, so all the, rules and all the rules and everything are on the website, captainmadlove.com, and all that link will take you right there. We've got over $1,000 in prizes from um, Midnight Heroes, from Pop Goes the Monkey. Who else we got, Captain? Elric's Hobbies. A little Badger stuff. You know, all sorts of cool shit. And some trial tufts for basing materials that we're working on. Yeah, I'm sure Dragonheart can tell everybody all about the booty. Da, 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 da. Awfully quiet out there, nerds. Da, 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 da. Fine. You don't want to talk to me? I don't want to talk to you. I'm not talking to you anymore. Because reasons. Blade Mark. Pa 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 pa. Blade Mark Cookie Mandias Brogami Juju Pons and Mecha Form. Ooh. That's a uh, that's that's pretty cool. Blade Mark, Cookie Man DS, going roundy, roundy, roundy. What do you all want to talk about? Can't be that quiet out there. <laughs> Cookie Man, oh wait. Blade Mark's still out front, taking his sweet time. Blade Mark, Cookie Man Diaz, Juju pa Wait, Blade Mark. Dude, you were winning. What'd you do? Why'd you do this? Why for you do this? 
No, she's on the couch. Cookie Mandias taking advantage of Blade Mark's inability to drive in a straight line. Cookie Mandius and Juju Pons. Come on, Juju Pons, you can do it. Oh, right in the trunk. How is Hammy upstairs? I saw her on the couch and. Doggo escaped upstairs. Whoa, Juju Pons. That's why. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Juju Pons out front now, followed by Mechaform. Oh, that was all Juju Pons. You almost got somebody in the side. Juju Pons, Mecha Forms, Cookie Mandy, yes. Blade Mark. Oh, the humanity. Oh, you actually didn't hit a single person, Juju Pons. That's what Cookie Mandy is. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Holy shit. Blade Mark, the only person taking out anybody in the crowd Cookie Mandy's Juju Pons Mecha Form Blade Mark Cookie Mandy's Juju Pons it's awfully quiet in here Oh. Dun 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 dun. Okay, Juju Pons, since you're the only one talking, what do you want to talk about? Because we're just watching five cars go around in circles. Let's see if I can make everybody sick. Woo! Cookie Mandius in first place. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Man, it is fucking hot in this basement. I got to cool it down to a nice balmy 50 degrees. I love roller coasters. The only, okay, so I can ride all the, the spinnies and the up and downs and the lefty rights and the roundy rounds. The only one I get nauseous on is the merry-go-round. Don't know why. Nobody wants to race? This place quite a ride. Uh, not how that works, Bronze Archer. X place point race. Well, welcome back, Brogami. Shall we have a three-person race?
Looks like we've got a three-person race. I am Bronze Archer. Not 100%, but I'm getting there. Whee! Oh, Bronze Archer, you almost held it. But Juju Pons, in typical Juju Pons fashion, rammed the trunk and knocked you off. But then, in also typical fashion, Juju Pons loses the first place by pulling off a stunt. Bom, bom, bom. Bronze Archer has managed to pluck their way into the first place. And there's Brugami Juju Pons. Oh, Juju Pons. Get back on the track. Whee! Bronze Archer, Brogami, Brogami making a little bit. Oh. Nice landing, Juju. Oh, Archer! You spun it out. Brogami, you have a chance. You have one chance. All right. Yeah, that, that shit always bothers me. If I ever write a book or make a movie, I'm going to have one of the characters say, we, we've only got one shot at this. And then the other guy going, bullshit. We could do it this way. We could do it that way. We could do it this way. We could do it that way. And if none of that works, we can try it over again. Brogami nails it. You know, dead last out of three. There's not a lot of people racing. We got 30 people on the channel, but it's just Bronze Archer, Brogami, Juju Pons, and me. Oh, everybody's all into that, but nobody wants to talk to the geek other than the three gentle souls who are talking to the geek right now. can't hear you because we're doing <laughs> you don't really care I'm going to go fire up the grill and cook some burgers I am starving because I'm back on the diet and whenever I get on the diet I am starving holy bronze archer you holy crap Jesus That was an impressive boost bronze that's probably the best boost I think I've ever seen like round the corner 
Oh, God, Captain. I mean, granted, you lose. They'll never take me alive. <laughs> we ride for the hills. We ride at dawn, bitches. <laughs> Brogami, the Bronze Archer, and Juju Pons. I still can't hear you, Captain. Juju Pons, the Bronze Archer, and Brogami, because those are the only three on the track. Juju Pons out front. Bronze Archer boosting all over the place, but all in the wrong directions. Now well, Juju's going in the wrong. Ooh, bro got me in first place now. Juju Pond's trying to get through the underbrush, but Bro got me over the top onto the roof. Usually the commentary is a little bit more engaging, but usually I have more things to work with than just three to five people. And the captain pushed the button. And push. And push. Oh, oh, what? How did you get stuck to my scissors? I don't know. He's a little weirdo. So cute. I am so thrilled. Like, seriously? <laughs> Nine, 100 paints. And I like this little plastic octopus. Okay, now that we know how simple a captain's brain is, we are going to really get crazy. We are going to do a little bit of metallic rubbing. Are you guys ready for this? So this is like really totally my part. For those of you guys who have stayed for this, I appreciate you. Uh, and hey, for everybody who backed the uh, Kickstarter, who is backing the Kickstarter, the, um, the mini holder, um, I, oh God, we had a whole future ahead of us with that mini holder and what is coming after that, you guys. I am so happy. You guys, seriously, I want you to know, really. In fact, this evening, let us just take a look at something. I'm gonna take a look at something really quick. I'm gonna refresh that. Let's see what a refresh. Okay, not bad, not bad. So we got a couple of backers tonight that weren't already backing. And and um, Raven, um, I'm r really thank you, thank you. Um, so just to let you know, Raven, um, we will be producing the accessories for that. So you know, in the future. All right. So we have these metallics here. We are going to choose some. Let's see. We've got this. We're going to choose silver because um, our object is, is silver. Not last. Woo. Oh, you're not last. Okay. Juju Pond's like, oh, last. Okay, let's see. I left my glasses over here while I was standing in front of the fan. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There they are. Okay. My googly eyes. Oh, I didn't get to talk to my wifey when um, Jay came in. That's okay. I'll put a shout out out there for her. Let her know I'm always thinking about her. I think she knows I always think about her. Okay, so we've got a couple of different styles of brushes that we can do this with. Um, some ugly brushes. Let's see if my... Um, the one I really like is my goat hair brush, but you know what? That's so much maintenance for somebody. Uh, I was going to have that designed for everybody. And then um, that didn't happen because, uh, yeah. It, I decided after using it that it was just a lot of maintenance for folks. Uh, where is my, oh, let's choose this one. Look at all this area we have to cover. Oh my gosh, I can use my big one. I can use my big one today. Big one. Okay, so we are going to see. And cephalopod's going to turn in for this. T tune in for this. Oh, there, there she is. There she is. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do some metallic rubbing. First things first, are you ready? So we are gonna clip this and throw this out there on YouTube as well. I'm gonna try to figure out how to do this. I'm gonna try to figure this out. Okay, 
So, um, let me just kind of, hold on. Let me just kind of get the paints. Wait, we're going to take the metallics out. All right. Um, I hope I have something black somewhere that's, I don't know if I have anything primered black uh, right now that I can use for this. So hopefully, um, I'm going to go to the whites, right? We're going to put the whites in here and that one white out of my desk. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh no, there's, there's two whites. Hold on. Oh, uh, there's the five sisters. No, that's platinum. That's platinum. Hold on, guys. New paints, lots of them. There's a black. There's a gold. Okay, here's black. But I need the plain, plain white. I'm sure I had it on my desk. Really? Yeah, this happens to me all the time. All right. Too many paints. Too much fun. So, bronze, I got a collective. Um, I'm going to go through and make a little list of these very extraordinary and unusual colors that they have that I feel will be truly fantabulous additions. Oh, there is another white, 51st shade. Okay, so that having been said, we would have to move that over to the browns so that we can really get the, okay. Uh, let's see, and this, so this way we can just have one of those. And then let's see with this green, with the green, not a yellow, that's a yellow. And all the greens, a lot of good greens. A lot of good greens. So also, I think that there's a very nice selection in here of pinks if you are lacking pink for your project. You know, pinks that aren't just like, say, you know, that traditional pink. And I, I do feel like um, there's uh, the teals has, has a good variety, or a really good variety. Um, I was uh, pleased. These are all the metallics. We're going to put those in the other one. Okay. So then that would mean that the... Neons are going to go in here, and we are missing one neon. What is that? Nope. Um, nope, that's the medium. I will let you guys know. Like, we'll come back. We'll come back uh, with more of this, or I'll throw it out on, on YouTube or something. But I am definitely missing a neon color. And that would be the yellow, actually. There's those two. Okay, well, I got that. Oh, yeah, that's a metallic. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So, we'll close this guy up. Got all the reds, purples, and whites all fit into one. Oh, that's why. He's, they don't fit. Okay. Well, then that, that makes a little bit more sense. So, we can just kind of like stack them like this. That yellow will turn up. It will be fine. I'm going to break another one of these. Oh, that's Turbo Dork. I'm like, wait, wait, there's more. All right, that gets those out of the way. And this guy, we'll get him out of the way before it ends up. Oh, there's the yellow. I just found the yellow, excellent. Okay, yellow. Okay, boom. And really, oh, you guys, I got a good vermilion. I'm, 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 I'm pleased, okay. Let us back up just a little bit. Uh, there we go. And let's try to get a little bit better camera view. Mm -hmm. Get you guys in nice and focused. Okay, so it's a little bit harder to see um, silver on silver, but, uh, and then we've got this side with the glow. But what we're gonna do is we're just really gonna focus like on this part. So you can do black. I am going to take one section really quick. And um, did you wanna warm the grill up right now, Geek? What's that? Do you wanna warm the grill up right now as I do this? Sure. And then you can get it cleaned and let me know when it's fired up. And then you can come back down here so it'll be nice and warm. You can, uh, if you, you want to make the burgers. Do you need to put down the right? Uh, 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 no, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. <laughs> when I get off, when I, I get off work. ready for you when you get off work, babe. Okay, yeah, that's great. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, and um, we will figure it out. We'll figure it out, won't we? It's not we. We don't have a whole lot of people left. I'm just these are just the people that are into this metallic rubbing routine. So um, yeah, that'll be great. Um, and uh, the dog was actually locked upstairs. Uh, did you take her out after dinner? She snuck. Under, I think snuck under the bed. I don't think so. But but you know what? We'll keep an eye on that. Wait, listen. Um, did you take her out after dinner? This is how I know she was downstairs. Okay. 
I was just curious because she would not potty. She she took a little tinkle, but she was really not interested. Because I took her. Okay, good. This and, and this and is I good. Locked her downstairs. Okay. Okay. Well, in the meantime, um, apparently the dog snuck under the gate. She's never done that before, but you know what? Stranger things have happened, right? Okay, let's get this nice big ugly brush. Now, you don't need this big of an area. The reason I'm doing it in this really big area for you guys is so you guys can see. Like, it's, 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 a, good, it's a good visual. And uh, this, this particular um, miniature is actually going to be a completely different color. <laughs> uh, I can just go over it. So I, I was thinking about actually doing it a rainbow for uh, uh, Pride. You know, like, it has all these nice sections. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a section of it, right? And I'm going to paint it black just so that I can show you guys metallic rubbing with bronze um, colors. All right. Now, mind you, it's already got a little bit of something going on. So it's going to be a little bit strange, but I do want to be able to show you with the darker colors, the gold, the bronze, um, just so you can kind of see how this idea works it's pretty crazy um i've been doing this for a minute it's one of my favorite ways to apply metallics this is not the smoothest way to apply your primer but it is not going to hurt the project that we are working on okay uh when doing big areas i don't use a brush for primer generally you know um yeah but I can dry it with the blow dryer to get it done really quick. Hold your ears. Okay. Now, of course, you can see streaks in the primer. So what I usually do is I come back another layer once we get that one nice and dry primer dries pretty quickly um, then I'll usually go the opposite direction of whatever the brush strokes are if I had to paint something with primer that was large like this okay like I said I usually use my airbrush but you never know somebody else may not you know they may not want to use it or may not be able to use the rattle can maybe it's it's winter out or something and um, so just to let you know, though, that uh, I do find that Steinle Res applies really good by hand. We're going to let that black set up. And while we do, we shall have a, a little bit of a moment with the other side. All right. Yeah. So, uh, I have various different brushes. And because I have specialty brushes, some of these being designed by a company and whatnot, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my age-old ugly brush okay because everybody's got one of these actually this is one of the better ones here where is that real i've one that's been around doing metallic rubbing for about a couple years this is another one that i was having formulated we're trying the different textures to see what will do this technique the very best and make it the easiest on people i did not get to the glow shoulders on that guy okay let's see uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. No, none of those. None of those. All right. Apparently, Mr. Super Ugly Brush is missing from the desk. This one is a little small for what we're working on. This one probably is a good choice. This one's a really good choice uh, once you get this system down. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we can do is uh, what's a two tone? Let me see. I just saw a turbo dork. Turbo dorks are not the best uh, at metallic rubbing. Um, but there is a, a place for them in it. We can get some tint from it. So I'm going to put a little turbo dork out to uh, work with on this. Just so I can show you guys a... Uh, I'm going to use a colored turbo dork. So I can show you guys a tinted version. All right. Uh, we can also, you know, tint with ink. So that, that's an object. Let's, let's uh, get a little bit of ink here. I've got a little ink pot. We'll even use the vermilion. Okay. All right. Now, we're letting that dry. I'm going to come over here. We're going to use silver um, 
to do this. I'm going to leave a section. This section up here is going to stay the same color. Hey, Bitter, what's up, man? We are just finishing up here, doing a little bit of metallic rubbing. You might want to hang out for that. How are you doing? We uh, uh, we did a box opening, nine, 100, 100 paints. Hello, Ioko, how are you doing? All right. The color I am using right now, and this is this is gonna be an experiment, so I do not know if these colors. Uh, oh, were you? I do not know if these, this is the gunmetal. I do not know if these colors are going to metallic rub or not. We are actually about to experiment with some new colors that I got. Um, you know what? I so far, like I'm, I'm pretty encouraged. I'm pretty encouraged, bitter brush. I really am. Definitely, there's some colors that I think uh, people need in their studio because I have a lot of colors. I do, and I will tell you that I actually found colors in here that I do not have. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, this was my bottle of water that I didn't drink. This one. Oh, I must have drank the other one. Mm hmm That's what I did, bitter. That's what I did. We are, oh, you guys, I have to take my vitamins. It's no wonder I feel like crap. I didn't take my medication either. Hang on just a second, you guys. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, I should say, oh, do you like this hair? Look, this is a bad hair day. Oh, my God. I've been in my dad's pool. It's stripped all the color out of my hair and left my hair like limp noodles. No curl, no nothing. My hair is just like, it hated the pool. Yeah, so a uh, geek got, I actually asked him if he would go get me some cephalopod paints because I want to try them. And yeah, he got them all. So it's a long stream. It's a long stream bitter brush, but because you got them all, if you don't want to have to go through them all and determine like all the color families and everything. <laughs> Thank you, Aoko. Uh, you might want to just play it in the background and and listen to the because there's like a, I did a lot of explanation on a lot of colors as to what family they go in, whether they are warm or cold, um, like all that. So it's long. I think we've been streaming almost six hours now. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you first, first. I'm gonna see if these will if these will do what I want them to do. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Because if they don't, then we have to shift to a different product that uh, I know works to do this and try that, okay? I'm gonna use a slightly darker silver so that um, we uh, can get the difference showing there so you guys are able to see it, okay? First things first. When working with metallics, okay? Use a separate bucket for rinsing your brush. I saved a bucket here just for my metallics, okay? Uh, a, a metallic rubbing. Wet your brush and then uh, get as much of the water out of your brush as if you were dry brushing because you don't really want the water uh, in the brush. It will cause the metallic particles to smear around. Okay, so you're gonna get as much out of it as you possibly can. Actually, I'm gonna use a smaller one because I'm used to using a smaller one. Smaller brush, sorry. I'm gonna downsize for this, this, this part. Okay, that is not a clean brush, so we are going to give the brush a clean. That's another thing too, is I clean my metallics on a different side of my uh, cleaning soap uh, than I do my other brushes. There's a divider. One side is metallic, it's the back side. The front side is regular, so. Uh, this is my ugly brush, that's how I treat it. Ugly brushes have to be treated ugly. If they're not treated ugly, then they won't turn ugly, okay? I usually keep a bucket that I can also clean my brushes in. Okay, there's nothing coming off of it now. I wanna make sure I get the majority of the moisture out of the back end of the brush, all right? 
I am hoping that these will work for this. And if they don't, like I said, we'll just change, we'll just shift to a different uh, product and um, we'll still do metallic rubbing because there's a lot of people that actually have been waiting for this. I will uh, see if I can clip this and put it on YouTube for you guys. Okay, so first, get your brush wet, okay? Then take as much moisture out of that brush as you possibly can on a paper towel as if you were going to dry brush, okay? Now, when you go into not maybe just a little bit less. So you want a very, very small amount of moisture in that brush, okay? When you go in, we are, put this over here, oh, there we go, okay? We're, we are here, we are using the silver, okay? When you go into the metallic, you wanna go in as if you're stippling and pull it around on the palette, okay? So we're gonna pull like a thin layer of it around like that and we're just gonna kinda of dance the brush around in it and pull it out. I am actually going off camera with that, there you go, there you go. Okay, and pull it out. So I'm, so I'm thinning it, right? Getting less and less and less on the brush. All right, once I've done that, then I'm gonna come back over here to the paper towel, which is here. And I'm going to, like your dry brushing, I'm gonna take a lot of the, of the uh, carrier, hopefully leaving metallic behind. Now, if it's a gel-based paint, you, this won't work, okay? Then you wanna see how much you have on there. You don't want it to be too moist, but you don't want a dry brush, okay? When you get like what you would consider a medium amount of paint left, I use black gloves just for that reason. You're gonna go onto your subject and you're gonna start to do little circles and you're gonna rub that metallic around in little circles. And you're, as it dries, you just continue to rub it like it, basically what you're gonna end up doing is buffing. But also what this is gonna do is this is gonna lay down all of your particles, I go directions, okay, and circles, okay? You'll feel it when it starts to dry, you'll feel it when it dries, and then once it dries, you're gonna allow it to completely dry. Now, when you come back for more, I don't rinse the brush and go through that whole process again. I just come back over here, and I pick up some of this part that I've drug out onto the, onto the palette, and I twist the brush around like this in it, and then I come back and I do this again. This is not as dark as I would have liked it to have been for this project. We may have to actually change to another color. Is the platinum. Okay, so this is not, oh, oh. Wait, wait, the one I'm using or the one I'm painting on is actually silver primer that is made specifically by air, by a Badger airbrush that is just primer. Okay, so what I'm gonna try to do here is put on several layers and then hopefully, even though it's the same color, I'm gonna be able to show you guys the difference up next to the prime. Sorry about the camera freaking out there. Oh, there we go. The platinum cuttlefish paint. Oh, this is the. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, no. This is the um, the one I'm using right now is their gunmetal. The platinum. Uh, it's pearl. It's pearl. Uh, not, uh, yes. I, yes. Like, uh, like silver makeup. Like, uh, not like silver makeup. Like pearl, mother of pearl. That's the word I'm looking for. So what I have used, I have used a um, a silver to basically prime the ship with, so that I'm able to show you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's really pretty. Maybe we'll put some of that on here too. So again, I am not going back into the bucket of water. It's, uh, it's like a really super intense metallic, uh, but more of a, more of, 
It doesn't have the colors in it like Mother of Pearl would. It sort of does. It sort of does. Um, it's really... Really hard to see. Okay. Now, this is, uh, to me, this is all a nice big area to work on, too. So to me, when I do this, all right, we're going to try to focus in on this with this color. I may not be able to with this color, but I think I can show you the difference in the way it reflects here, okay, and the way it looks maybe there. And if not, because they are the same color, when you are looking at it up close like I am, there is, there it is, there it is. You see it? There it is. Right here. Okay, now let's, let's try to get that on the other side. I'm not even going to be able to get that on the other side. Like, that's a white reflection, but not, not that. What I'm talking about is that. How it moves around the metal. Oh, you can see it on my face cam? Awesome. Yep, so, but you can see how the light, like, it, how it looks as, like, not there. Notice it's not the same there. You'll just see light reflected, right? Like, just, there it is, light. Okay, but now watch. Now you see the striations of light. You see them? So they're stronger in that area. Now let me, let me take that area and use a different color, okay? Something darker, let's see. He said that um, black bullet, we have black knight, black, no, black knight is, is black. He said black bullet. Was a metallic, so let's give that a wing. It might be easier for you guys to see, but now I can totally see it when I'm looking at it like right now. I can see where there's reflections in this one that depict metal. But when I look at these, it's just like white reflections. Just, you know, I mean, they're there. It's it's silver, but notice how they're not holographic like this. See? Okay, so what does that is the metallic rubbing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put out a really nice deep color here. And this, this is like a, a really super dark bronze, okay? And again, I am not gonna take this brush and be like all, oh, I don't need to rinse it. It's got silver on it, that's fine. It, it, it's gonna mix right in with that and it's just it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna mix it. I'm gonna take the majority of it off the brush and I'm gonna do another section over here. Oh, sorry, let's, let's, let's come in. I'm gonna do another section over here and uh, we wanna test it so that we don't have too much. And uh, it's a little bit awkward. When you first start doing this, it's a little bit awkward. Darker colors go really quickly. That's one of the things I really like about working with the darker colors. Silver's a little bit harder to build than darker colors are. Uh, darker colors also, I'm gonna show you something on the black that's gonna just really like blow your mind. This is a lot easier to work actually on a bigger space. Oh, okay, it's, it's doing it. This is my favorite way to apply metallic. Uh, it takes a very uh, slight hand and very, very tiny motions when you are doing this on your miniatures. If you're working in a small space, you gotta be able to make these little strokes. Now, what I can tell you is you can change the direction, okay? So like, uh, you wanna lay the metallic down. So you can go to the right, you can go to the left. Wherever that area is that it opens up for you to be able to make the stroke if you're working on something smaller, just use it. Now, I, I'm gonna make a mistake here so I can show you. Hold on, because you wanna see it so that you know what to do when it happens. Now, some people say, oh, battle damage. All right, here we go. You're gonna see the mistake. It's a nice, nice hole in it. There you go. I'm 
right? The whole. So that's over rubbing. You didn't allow the paint. I had to go over it before it dried, basically. Uh, I call it feather stippling. You want to let it dry. Let it dry. Now what you're going to do is uh, that that just those slight feathers, right? You get that area. Look, you can see kind of where it's not done yet, right? Okay. I'm going to catch the other areas up with that for color. I still got a little bit there, so I might have to do it like another time. But basically, this is what happens. Now I'm going to show you something really cool. Black, right? And you want to get this done. You don't want to spend a whole lot of time, right? Okay. Same concept on the brush here. Then as you start to buff the areas, once you know you've got that metallic laid down, lighten up your brush strokes. Pull back, pull back. Lighten up those brush strokes because you need to get the top buffed, okay? You want it all even, you gotta come in and put a second coat. But basically you can primer it in black and then get bronze or gold gold will do that too also gold is a good highlight for bronze uh, you can always mix a color in the gold to get a better effect from your bronze you'll notice this area over here i'm going to come back in i'm going to fix it again with a really light touch because I don't want to rub away any of that. Sometimes you can never fix that once you've done it, unless you just start from scratch. Right? Okay. Now over here, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna grab a little bit of gold and I'm gonna dance the gold off the brush like we did before, I'm dragging it out on the palette. Okay, hold on. My, uh, I brought my palette cam in a little bit too close. There we go. We're dragging it out on the palette and the gold is gonna mix with a little bit of the bronze that's on the brush already. Okay. And I'm gonna take the excess off and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna The object is to move quickly um, and get all those little particles to lay down. Uh, 
Uh, if you're going to put any glow or anything like that, it's a good idea to do this first because a lot, some of this is going to get into your little recesses. And you don't want to ruin your glow effects by, you know, all these little striations that it's got. So that's black, bronze, a really dark bronze, goes over the black, creating the metallic background, gold, and then you get a bronzish color. It needs to dry. Oftentimes, when you make a mistake like I did over here, when you come back in with a lighter color, sometimes you can fix it. Sometimes that lighter color will reflect enough light out, but sometimes what it does is it sticks around the ring. Yep, I gotta stick around the ring. However, this is when we call for, see what it did? It's the weirdest thing. So it's like, it, that's a hit and miss. And I fixed a lot of shit like that, but now you just gotta go with it. There's nothing you can do. So it has to become battle damage. We still get a good... Actually, it's a, it's a technique that I'm using with a paint. Vecness, hello and welcome. Okay, so we're gonna go over here on this black part, right? And that's the part we painted black and we want to kind of get in here and I just want to do these little circles and I'm going to get in here and really build some of this up. Okay. And I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to touch super lightly. Like little, little butterfly kisses. Okay. As I do this and I'm going to move so that I don't get those striations on it. Ha! Look at you. Very good. Very good. Okay, we're going to do that same thing to the back. Okay, remember, we're, we're in this case, we're moving in little circles. When we're on equipment, we have enough space to move in the circles. Okay. And you want to just keep going. Okay. Not all metallic paints do this, you guys. So just to let you know, you got to pick and choose your brand when you do this. Not like, okay, so for example... I cannot get the scale 75 standards to do it. Okay, there we go. All right, now we got this going on. Check it out, right? Okay, super, super duper shiny. All right, now we got some battle damage over here that we got to contend with. So best thing you can do for a battle damage. on a, something that's bronze is a little bit of oxidation. We're going to take some of these guys out here. We are going to get a super duper ugly brush. We are going to take a tealish white color. And we're going to create some oxidation over here to cover up our bad problem thing that we did that's bad. Now you're going to need... You're gonna need um, a darker. Actually, I really like, also I, I am gonna use uh, the uh, Miss Tick and the Elven Gray. Told you that Elven Gray was gonna happen for me. Yep, that's the right color. Okay, so right here, we're gonna create some of that uh, battle damage. There, that's a much, much better choice on colors, right? And just, you know, you don't have to get like super uh, amazing with it because it's battle damage. We're going to take a little bit of a darker color of a uh, teal leaning towards green. Okay. All right. And we're going to leave that there. All right. Now we've got this brush. We're going to get a different brush. We're gonna take that color that uh, Bronze was just talking about. So we're gonna take the uh, Five Sisters Platinum. So it's a platinum, uh, not a silver. Put a little bit of that out over there. We are taking um, a large brush, specifically watercolor brush. Okay, you gotta get all or lots of the moisture out, okay? Then 
right? We're gonna we're gonna do um we're gonna do a little highlight. We're gonna pretend like he's like leaning this way um on the beautiful rays of some kind of sunshine stuff are coming that way, okay? I need to pick up a little bit of that platinum. And you're gonna get it on the end of what you it has to be a puffy brush, it has to be a puffy brush. Okay. And then you're gonna rub the excess off on a paper towel. Okay. Uh-oh. I touched that with a wet hand. Hold on. Okay. And we are gonna float the edge. So let me make sure I don't have too much on here. Hold on. Sometimes the ferrules, the handle of the brush will get a little water. Notice that I'm thinning the paint onto the palette. Notice how much space this takes up? A lot of space, okay. So we're gonna make sure we don't have, that's too much. We're gonna make sure we don't have too much on the brush. There we go, we just want like that little bits to show. And then we're gonna catch the edge, okay. He's leaning into the light. And you're gonna keep stroking that. Down, 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 down. Because what you want is you want the metallic to line up and lay down. Once the brush gets a little bit drier, you can kind of wisp the top here. Uh, I have to lay this down for this. So I'm just floating the edge of the brush, which is flat. It's flat on the end, right along that top line. I will go back. By this point, it should be a little bit dry on your palette, so there should be less on the brush. And again, we're gonna float over the top, right along that line. Right along that line. The brush is flat, so it's just, and then I'm gonna get this little line right here. Cause he's leaning in. I'm gonna come from the other side to get a nice crispy little highlight. Don't want too much. Right along there. Right? And then I'm, I'm making it lay down. Keep going, keep going, because we're polishing, polishing, polishing. Buffing, buffing, okay? So what you're gonna end up with. Oh, Aoko, better. She got a, a clean bill of health. There we go. Wanna get those little shiny, shiny areas as it leans into the light. She got a clean bill of health. Finally, she's better. We are so happy. Everything is just so normal. She's being sassy again and everything. Okay, there you go. So as we lean into the light, right, we're going to have that iridescent shine on the edge. Notice it's got all along the top, right? Okay. And then we're going to rinse that. So when you're working with the metallics, rinse your brushes. Clean your brushes while the brush is nice and wet before the brush dries. Get some good old detergenty brush cleaner on it so that you don't end up with metallic stuck up in your brushes and don't use the same brushes for other things that you use for your metallics. Okay, now we got this going on now. Okay, now we're gonna take some white. That's not white, I can hear it. That was totally not white, sorry. Whoa, hey, 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 whoa. I'm gonna take some white, let me see. That one. And uh, we're gonna go with the green. There we go, green. So we're using all the same paints today. We're not veering. We're not veering from, you know, our paint here. We're gonna just go with the same ones. All right. One of the things I do to keep myself out of my metallic pot with my brushes while I'm working is I lay my brushes. So I will put them in soap like that. And then I lay them over the top of the metallic rinsing pot. That way I do not rinse in the metallic pot because it doesn't matter what I put there. That might look different. It has to have something in my way. All right, once we've done that, we're going to put some white out. We got enough room over here to do that. I'm going to take that white and we are going to get a brush with a very nice little liner head to it, okay? And we are going to add a wee bit of, where'd you go? Oh, where's my rinser thing? Hold on, I mean my thinner thing. What? Hmm, what happened? Oh, there you are. All right. Now, in the case of, I'm not gonna use the medium. I've already got some, uh, you know, my usual that I thin with. So I'm gonna go with the usual way that I thin my paints, right? 
which is still a little bit of uh, distilled water and um, retarder medium. Uh, yeah, retarder medium, right? I'm hoping this brush is small enough. Oh, something you want to do? Um, I am lubing a trash. Okay. Uh, this causes, hang on, capillary action. Okay. So, we're going to go in here, taking this white. Actually, um, it's pretty friendly, so it doesn't really need a whole lot of thinning. Looks like uh, you can almost just lube those tracks and then just slap that baby right in there. So that's kind of nice to know. I didn't know that until just this minute. Like I said, uh, these are new to me. Okay. All right. So now, uh, let's see. We want to... I'm going to get these um, with the little white lines in them. And if you get just the right size brush, I do believe this is probably the one I work with regularly on the Necrons. Uh, if you get the right brush and you keep the tip in really good condition, it will just fill the gap, but it will also just get a small line around the outside of it. I will show this to you. Uh, I will bring it up to the camera in just a minute. So you will get a little bit of... Um, extra glow. Now sometimes it might be a little bit more in one area than another and you want to go back and fix that. You don't it doesn't matter if there's more if the line is straight. It only matters if there's more if your line isn't straight. Weird, right? Because uh, you know the light is going to be, it's not going to be wobbly. I probably should have left that the bronze because I was actually going to use a darker green on that. I didn't think about that first. Hold on. Gotta be fast. That that won't work if you're not fast. It'll it'll just smear it all over all, all over your place. Okay. So once you've got like a nice white there and a nice white there, and then you've got all these little lines done in white, right? Okay. Hmm? Okay. Remember, I was going to use a little ink, but then I put vermilion out, and I'm like, yeah, that's just not working. Okay, so let's get a little bit of green ink. Move it a little bit of green ink. All right. Oof. Hello. All right. Got to let these guys dry. Oh, you know what? Actually, while we're doing this, let's let's try this. Uh, I'm not going to lose the tracks. I'm gonna I'm gonna just try uh, without it and see what happens. Um, may or may not cooperate but those are very large so it's a little bit different when you're painting the area is a little bit large so it works a lot better when you start painting these little skinny areas um that's when lubing the tracks becomes so important but uh, it's very smooth paint is the answer now mind you i've done this on a lot of little necron pieces so uh But, um, yeah, it's it's very smooth. It goes in really nicely. Um, that's a, that's not a, one of the easier things to do. I recommend as you are, if you're going to do pin lining, whether it be shadowing or whether it be backlighting, either way, uh, that you lube your tracks. It will help the movement of the brush. 
uh, make sure that your brush has at least a big enough belly on it that it will release paint for a little bit longer than just, you know, a second when you first get in there. Uh, that's, that's super helpful too. Okay. All right. There we are. Now, we got both sides with the white. Um, let me give it a blow dryer zap. Okay. This uh, Necron is going to end up looking like it's made from the spare pieces of Orc Orcville. Okay, let's get the, the lime green out. We're going to use some of that. That's looking like a really good lime green. All right. Um, we're going to get a little bit of... Uh, I'm going to get the... Eh, hmm, brush. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The goat brush. I, I got to figure something out about this. This is the goat brush because it is what it is. All right, so... Uh, they're nice. The paints are uh, semi-transparent. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. First, we get the brush wet. First, we get the brush wet. Semi-transparent paint, okay? So, with semi-transparent paints, you are going to have a, lot, a little more freedom. Um, hang on, guys. It's deep. Hmm. Why aren't you answering me? Can you hear me? Uh, hang on. Say, say it again. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. So we have a brush that's just this size. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna do this, right? There you go. This is stippling. Okay, so the paints, great. You guys, paints are really, really great. All right, um, they have a really good uh, semi-transparent. The, these are the glows. A really good semi-transparency to them. Yes, yes, this is working. Notice we're getting a really nice glow and we're not getting a weird or awkward buildup, right? It's really good, right? That's what you want, right? That's what you want. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that same thing over here on this side. Hmm, pretty good, pretty good, you guys. Here we go. Okay, this is the um, the broad glow. Okay, and we're gonna bring it on home. You ready? Okay. So that brush gets a, gets a rinse. Oh, thank you, Aoko. <laughs> then it did the pizza delivery guy. Okay, I. I appreciate that. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay. Now, you're going to take out another brush. You want a fairly large brush, brush, big belly. All right. We're going to come in here. We're going to grab some of this green. And we're going to um, kind of go around the area that you're creating the glow uh, a little bit um and you're gonna get it right inside the um, runners too, as you do this. Those little, those little areas that you backlit. Like I said, you want to try to keep um, some lines here, okay? Not like be all over the place uh, because you know the light's gonna kind of do a uh, a glow thing around these areas here that have the runners in them, all right? I'm gonna take a little bit more on the brush and get in the runners. You can make that glow as big as your eyeball wants it, okay?
I go back before the paint is completely dry and stipple that area with that same brush. And that is going to give you um, a, uh, a like an inconsistency in your lines. You do have to be quick to do that. You could do that from the very beginning if you feel better about it. Let's let's do that. A less on the brush, okay? So we're gonna come in and we're just gonna paint the areas that are the lines. All right, get this one. Get this one, okay? And then we're gonna use the tip of that brush and you're just gonna dance it right around there. What I find easier about it, uh, tracing it and then going back for it is that it does actually add a little bit extra paint when you wait for those to dry which I really like, uh, the effect of that. I just kind of go straight across these here. And then again, I will just come back and uh, I'm using an ugly brush, so look out for that. Okay, and then I stipple. That stipple creates almost like a sort of glow, like a, like a, like a vibration of the, uh, of the light. Okay. So you're gonna get a little something like this. Now, once you've got that all going on, we are going to grab the uh, yellow. Yes, neon yellow, neon yellow. It says channel six, that's the neon yellow, it's gotta be. No, is channel six the neon yellow? Is uh, our man still out there? It's gotta be, it's with the neons. Okay, that's it, yep. All right, we're gonna take the yellow Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, <clears throat> we, we, we lost a little something in the valley. Okay, so then we're gonna take the yellow, right? And uh, you're gonna come in here and let's, we're, we're, what we're doing is we're really making this glow pop, okay? So you're gonna get in here and you're gonna paint these areas with this, right? And uh, what I'm going to do here, too, is I'm going to paint some of the intersections like this, right? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Mmm, delicious, right? Burgers are on the grill, and this girl is hungry. All right, so we are down to the last... The look, 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 look. Oh, wait, I gotta bring this up here. Look, 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 look. At my booty full. There. Mm-hmm. Look at the glow. See, glow. Okay, hang on, because I wanna show you some really cool tricks. Ready? Okay. So now that's amazing. Oh, you guys, it's so good. It's so good. Okay, so first, we wanna take, get, go back to that white, and, uh, and let's just paint right there a little white, right there. And a little white right there. Okay. Uh, take a little white right here at a couple of intersections, a little bit, a little bit like that. Um, uh, you're you're breaking up the monotony. Okay. Maybe right there. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna hit this with a blow dryer. I'm not gonna do this side because uh, when burgers start calling me, I get frantic. Oh, that reminds me. Hang on just a minute. Yeah, because I am hungry. Hold on. I gotta tell Geek that there's buns in the thing. Yeah, that. I didn't even know how he called me. Did he call? Did he call me on the phone? Nah. Is it? Nah. Hold on. Maybe it's Facebook. Shit. I I don't know. Hang on. I'm just gonna I'm gonna call him straight up. Uh, no. No. Oh my god. Okay, there he is. Sorry, guys. I have, I have to tell him he does he doesn't know that we have a yeah it's 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 gonna be it's 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 almost there it's almost there so once you paint that white in there you're gonna come back with some thinned yellow you want to thin it like a like a really thin glaze yes I'm telling geek to grab my buns right really thin glaze whoop 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 over the yellow I mean over the white okay. Take a little excess off and, and, and go ahead and, and grab a little glow along the edge with that yellow while you're in there. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? Okay. And those areas that you got the little hot white spots, go in there and, and, and touch those up with the yellow. 
Okay. All right. Now we're going to, um, there's a couple things we got to do. One is we got to find that Christmas tree green uh, or a blue green. Let's see. We've got, uh, what is this? This is a uh, lush Valley. That's too dark. Um, let's go with, uh, at, no, afterlife green is too thin. Okay. So we're going to go with, uh, upchuck. We're going to go with upchuck. Upchuck is not dark. I need dark. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking there. Dark. Uh, with a little blue? Jaded. That'll work. Nope. Wait, hold on. We gotta get, we gotta get it chicken. Chicken. Okay. Okay. Jaded. Ink. Okay, so we are aiming. For two layers, kind of giving it a little bit of a stained glass look. Hold on a minute. Now, sometimes when you add a little ink to your paint, you might have to go back and move your paints. Notice how it sort of uh, moves around. So sometimes when you add a little ink, you got to go back, especially in a big area, and move the paint around. Don't be afraid to do it. Okay? Just don't. Don't. Just do it. Just do it. Generally, once you've moved it around a couple of times, it'll settle where you want it. It changes the performance of your paint. Not all paints like ink. It looks like we got lucky here today. Because I actually didn't ask that before I decided to plunge into this. Okay. Okay. We got a good back on that, right? Now, you rinse that brush and we're going to go straight for ink, ink. We need a liner, liner, wet liner, okay, and an ink. And ink and remember those places that you kind of got in the um corners yeah so go back in for those areas that you were breaking up the monotony of things and they, they they should not be lined up or the same they should be a little bit different what this does is it breaks up like a pulse like a pulse Underneath of it is that beautiful neon paint, okay? And now we are getting, uh, hold on, I'm going to bring this down in front, of, sorry guys, in front of my face because I want you guys to be able to see better. There we go. Uh, the lights tend to wash out a lot of the really super bright colors. Actually, let me turn this off for you. There we go. That's going to make you be able to actually see what is going on. So I like to get these little corners here. There's one that I put a little white in, but I'm gonna leave some of them. 
there but when you get up close to it it gives it a like a pulsing kind of a look okay now we're going to come back and uh this one's not let me run this through the blow dryer let me run it through the blow dryer Okay, we're going to come back for that dark green cover up. The second coat, you're glazing. So the second coat, third coat's going to be your bust coat. I'm just saying, generally speaking, when you're glazing, if you can paint it once, you can paint it twice. If you can paint it twice, you can paint it three times and it'll probably turn out way better. Once you've come in here and brought this all the way to the edge and covered it a couple of times what looks like sloppy paint out of the lines will then clean up into a glow Now, I do not have the time to finish the swirls in this, okay? But what we do want to do is get that liner again, get back into that ink, and get a really nice, clean, dark line along our edge here where it's glowing in these spaces. Otherwise, that's going to look sloppy. Um, it breaks up. When, when you're doing it and it looks okay, I think on the round part, but when you get into these parts here, it actually kind of looks like maybe we missed something. Now, if you go back with white, it'll be fine. Like if you wanna give it that broke up look, but I don't recommend just leaving the yellow laying under it broken. Okay, and then we get Oh, see, I stuck it in there, in that, in the way. All right. And almost dry. Hold on. I'll show you something. I'll show you something. All right, varnish. And now we're about to find out. I do not know. I do not know, but we're about to find out. All right, first the varnish. I hear my burgers getting ready. Oh, my burgers are ready. I just, I didn't get the part. Okay, ready? Varnish. We want a, a, a nice a nice layer of it. Uh, you've got a protective area that's kind of keeping it from getting on your metallics. I'm going to go directly into the yellow. Varnish. Get 
directly into the yellow. The good news is they do not, they do not like, they, they don't want to be mixed. They, and that's good. That's good. You, you want them. So I actually didn't know what I was getting in for. Right. Okay. And there you go. All right. Now I'm going to go get a hamburger. I hope that that has been entertaining. You can add white in there. Uh, I don't want to because the white is really matte. So, um, you can put gloss over it. I usually put three layers of gloss over my shiny spots, but let's bring that right up to the camera for you guys and focus in so you can kind of see what you got. Okay, it is not as tidy as you think it is. But when you pull it back and you're looking at it at that about, we're talking 12 inches right now. You can come back if you want to, and you can put in more of the white, I mean, of the yellow. But the metallic rubbing is ultimately what gives you the ability to get a little bit better glow on a metallic surface. Because, and, and then of course using a clear, now what we will do is we can come back with varnish and go over the uh, these areas, a thin layer of very shiny varnish. Look, hold on, I shall just, Grab a little bit of that while we've got it here. And your machinery will be like top notch beautiful. Uh, we, when we first took these out in the field, um, the very, very first competition that I ever entered was these super hyper glowy uh, Necrons with a lot of shiny going on. You want to try not to leave any texture on your varnish, okay? Uh, when you do, it affects your light. So be sure that once you lay the varnish down, a little bit of brush texture is okay if you're brushing on, but what is not is if you leave it clumpy and separating alrighty and there it is now I can come back if I want yet again and put a very very thin fine layer of metallic over the top of this but truth be known when it gets in the lights and it's oh so we're going this way when it gets in the lights and it is right now wet varnish you can I replace usually I come in and I cover the uh, metal areas with a satin, okay? But what the intensity of the clear varnish and coming over it with the satin, now not these. I leave these with the clear varnish goes over those. Now this is takes a little bit longer to dry. We've mixed it with a little bit of globs of varnish, right? So it takes a little bit longer to dry. Let me see if I've got my, um... no, I've only got the high gloss on my desk, hang on. The satin is, oh wait, here it is. Here's my big bucket, the matte medium. So what I do is um, I use the matte medium and I make my own satin because I don't like how shiny they make satin. Okay, so you can take the matte medium. I would say with, well, if you're using Liquitex high gloss, um, then it's, it's different. You're gonna need a little bit more um, matte just because it's like super duper shiny. And you can just bring the tone down completely. Also, it covers really nicely, like after you have painted it once. I do thin it with that distilled water and a little bit of the medium. Just a little bit of that re, um, paint retarder. Trying not to get it on my glowy spots. There you go. So what that'll do is that'll tame that down. We might need a little bit more yellow over here. It is a semi-transparent paint, so keeping in mind that layering is gonna be important.
Okay. Those are gonna have to dry for a little bit, okay? Because I um I use a lot of paint and I don't, I definitely, definitely do not. Once you get those guys right, you don't want to go in there and pick any of that up. All right, let's see who we're gonna go raid. That's gonna dry, and I will come back. And then what I will do is I will post pictures for you guys. All right, that's what we've got. Let's get that at a really, there we go. There's a really good angle. There you go. It's just a few little touch-ups that it'll need. We might, you might need to build a wee bit more of the yellow light in the swirl, but then you got want to go over that um, oh, welcome back, Valandar. I'm sorry. Uh, you want to go back over the the swirlies four or five times with that uh, nice, really glossy, clear varnish. Let me make sure I rinsed all my brushes. All right, those are going to need rinsing. And we shall see who we are going to go raid. Excellent. All right. It's a wrap, you guys. Let's find out who we're going to go raid. One person well maybe a couple who knows all right let's see and let me put on my googly eyes hopefully this has been informative you guys it's been quite a long stream i'm like starving to death i think for real all right let's see Let's see. You know who's on that hasn't been on in a minute. And I uh, we should go raid him. I hope he's working on like a tank or something, you guys. Is a 40k tank. Oh no, he is streaming in German tonight. Oh, thank you very much, Featherwind. That is so good to hear. Oh, thank you very much, Cephalopod. I actually am really liking them, especially like for these glow effects. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now, I want you guys to notice, I want you guys to notice, oh, sorry, I pushed the camera back. As we pull the camera back, I mean, as, as it dries, notice that the, um, the neon paint fades into the green. Okay, add a little bit of white, all right? Put it back on again, and then go over it again with the neon yellow. Yeah, if you add the white, it will solve the transparency problem of it, okay? So just take a little bit of their white, mix it right in there, put your swirl in there again, come back and paint over it with the bright yellow and you'll get what you want out of it. I'm really glad that you appreciated it, Featherwind. I really enjoyed teaching it. So let's see, I was thinking maybe a little d and I don't know, I don't know. Mm. What do you think about some D&D? &D? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Valandar. I was thinking too. I really end up, when I when I run late on Sundays, I always end up raiding her. Let's go give Polly Monster the love, you guys. She loves us. We love her. So we can totally do that. Raid channel. And there she is. All right. So you guys. Next stream, Technical Tuesday, right? I will see you then. You know the drill between now and then, right? Self-care. If you do not, I, I am so sorry about these cords, you guys. I am so sorry about that when it does that. It's like, I, if I move my camera, my cords collapse. I apologize. Um, it is not my favorite. Uh, we are getting ready to move the studio to the other wall. So yeah, a lot going on over here, a lot going on over here. Okay, so. Well, you know what? This actually looks a lot better in person than it does on the camera, I gotta tell you. But once I finish it though, I get those details in there. I'm really used to doing my glows a lot with an airbrush. So if you're proficient with the airbrush and you just spray over these spots, the real fine mist, it's it's it is smoother. It is smoother than the uh than than the stippling effect. But I'm gonna come back in and fix the stippling effect because I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Oh, good night, Beckness. Oh, Bronze Archer, I am so glad that you did. 
All right, you guys, so between now and then, self-care. If you do not care for yourself, you cannot care for anyone else or anything else for that matter. Also, hopefully between now and Tuesday, you will have time to do a little painting, brushes, paint, minis, get your fucking paint on. Let us, thank you guys for showing up. Thank you for everybody who uh, backed the Kickstarter. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart for everybody who showed up. And thank you for everybody who is a Patreon and supports me on Patreon like they would on Twitch. I want you to know my heart truly appreciates it and it means the world to me. It really does. To be able to not have to answer to Twitch and get half the money taken was a huge thing for us. And I appreciate you guys for supporting. Thank you very much. And I will see you guys on Tuesday. Let's go give it to Holly. Mm. Uh oh, where did you go, Holly? There you are. Oh, boo. Mm. Oh, good night. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Okay. And we're...